All right, everybody. Once again, my name is Hebbings, and it looks like it's about time to throw it over to Leet, I mean, Zero Leet for Final Fantasy 13. Take it away, Zero. Everyone, welcome. This is FF13, and I'm Zero. And today on commentary, I have with me Mr. D Sharper and Mr. Argus Mangit. Hello. Hello. All right. So before we start, I just want to make sure for the bid war, we are doing English or Japanese voices. All right. Well, it was a close bid war, but we're listening to English voices. Awesome. I don't have to reboot the game. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> Saving time already. All right. All right. So I think we are more or less good to go. Uh, we can start timer in on one. Five, four, three, two. Good luck. Thank you. I will need it desperately. <laughs> All right. So off the bat, I should point out that we get cutscene skips. So for the war enjoyers, you will have to make do with our terrible knowledge of the story yep. as we find moments to explain it. Uh, but we're thrown straight into a battle with this big scorpion robot airship chainsaw monster <laughs> machine. I believe he goes by Manasvin. Yeah, that is his name. Yes. It's in the top right corner for anyone yes. that <laughs> out. I like Scorpion Chainsaw Monster. Yeah. It's an, that's actually a terrible fight. <laughs> like so, got thrown, right? <laughs> yeah, she did. But it doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. As long as Shaz doesn't miss any bullets, we're fine. Which can happen, even though it's a gigantic Chainsaw Monster. <laughs> so uh, right off the bat, we don't have too many options. So this is going to be the meme that people make about this game, where you just auto battle to win. There is a little bit of interest, Evo. You can see me mashing auto battle and then backing out and mashing it again. <laughs> That's because um, if I don't, lightning will walk back slowly. So I'm just trying to save the tiny bit of time there. But I don't have too many options at this point. All we have is attack, blitz, and items, which is just potions. So it's just throw attacks until we win. My TV got frozen there. That all happens sometimes throughout the run. We'll have to just quickly enter abilities or like hover a potion and back out to fix that. And first fight of the run's done. Yep. All right, smooth sailing from here on out. Yeah. Oh yeah, most difficult part is definitely done. So, <laughs> welcome to chapter one, guys. For anyone that doesn't watch speed runs of this game actively, chapter one is where you normally reset. Sadly, today I don't have that luxury, so we'll see how this goes. You have been freed right. so <laughs> from the jail. Yes, for now. No, or well, I'm stuck in jail longer. <laughs> <laughs> There's just no escape, it's a matter of perspective. <laughs> So in this game, there aren't random battles. Instead, there are overworld battles, like those two soldiers we just passed by. Uh, we call them dodges if we don't want to fight them. So you can get past enemy groups by just running past them. Sadly, they don't always make it easy on you. They are now, which is nice. Uh, and that's why chapter one is so reset heavy. You have this like tight, narrow area with like, a lot of group soldiers and dogs closely grouped together, and you just have to make sure you don't get caught. Nice thing about this game, though, is if you do get caught, or if you can, even if you die in combat, it's not a game over. Well, technically it does say game over, but you can retry, and it'll just put you back before where you died. So it's not too punishing, and it's very like beginner-friendly in that aspect. If something doesn't work, you just try again, and you try until you succeed. Those soldiers had terrible stamina. <laughs> they ran for like five seconds. Hey, it to be fair, those soldiers are actually faster than you. <laughs> they just can't do it for very long. Yeah. <laughs> They're sprinters. It's funny. The funny thing about a lot of enemies in this game is a lot of them are actually faster than you are. But right before they catch you, they take this, like, lunge animation. It's like, yeah, we got them, and, like, swipe their <laughs> arms or whatever. And when they do that, they stop moving. So you can either dodge it, or for some enemies, you don't even have to move. Like, right there, just slowly go to the right, <laughs> and you're fine. <laughs> All right, guys, welcome to the potion tutorial where I will be using no potions whatsoever. This is a game giving you a quick tutorial on how to use items. I will be using an item in this fight technically. I won't actually be using it, but I will hover a potion here. Actually, no, I lied. <laughs> <laughs> so right there, we staggered that panther on. You can see that chain gauge in the top right corner. When you fill that out, or when you hit the percentage it says, you stagger your enemy. And when you do that, they take two times damage. Or no, you get 100% more damage, I should put it, say. And depending on how much duration you had before that point, their stagger will last that amount. So you just biggest benefit is just more damage overall. But also, it makes other things easier, like you can interrupt them easier, for example. 
Some enemies, they can't be interrupted unless they're staggered, but once they're staggered, they, as long as you hit them, they can't really get much done. Uh, the reason I point that out is because when normally when you stagger an enemy, there is this fairly long animation to it. It takes 0.7 seconds. It's like, oh, cool, you staggered. Here's like a freeze, freeze frame sort of deal. The game wants to make you feel cool about your accomplishment, but that's slow. So we're going to try to skip all those. You won't see an actual stagger animation for a good long while. <laughs> And the way we dodge those is by just targeting something else. So we can just hover different soldier here, for example, and no animation. So this is all chapter one stuff. All the fights here are fairly easy. It's all intro. For the most part, you can just auto battle win. I'll be trying to optimize using Blitz there to hit AoE, take out the other soldiers as we damage this guy. There's only like two fights in this chapter that I need to heal on. There is one fight in particular that um, every runner is incredibly stubborn. You should only ever take one potion. But sometimes you need two or you die. And every runner that's not doing this in a marathon setting, they're never going to burn a second potion. <laughs> <laughs> they will take the death. It's just a matter of honor. <laughs> will not burn four seconds on this, on this fight so early in the run. I'm hoping I don't have to burn that potion. I will feel terrible about myself. All right, so this is a snow section. Uh, something to mention, besides me forgetting to introduce the characters, is that different characters have different run speeds. And, well, no. All but one character have the same run speed. One character has a different run speed. They also have different hitboxes. And Snow is kind of thick. He's a big guy. So his dodges are generally more difficult since he's wider. And here we got our first most likely failed dodge. It's called the Legendary Dodge, and we did not get it. It's basically up to when the enemies run out. If they give you an opportunity, there is a chance you get it, but it's fairly unlikely. So for this one, we are going to kill it, even though it's technically an optional fight. And the uh, retry on this, since you said you could retry all fights, is uh, very impossible to actually get if you try it. So that's why we just kill it. It takes less time than trying yeah. an impossible dodge a second time. It's like 20 seconds lost versus infinite seconds lost. It's an easy decision, really. Yes. <laughs> oh, that soldier almost caught me. They really tried. Yes, they did. Oh, this looks not good. Whoa! <laughs> Bobbing and weaving. All right, so a little bit of a character intro, I guess we could do that. So our party leader at the very start, that was Lightning, Lightning Farron. She is a guardian soldier. Um, with her was Saz Kazaroy. He is like former military, used to be a pilot. And this is Snow Beers, is like leader of like a rebel group called Nora. It's not really a rebel group, but they're rebelling against the government right now, which actually explains the story. Do any of you guys want to do that? So pretty much in the beginning of this, uh, the area called Cocoon that they're on is being uh, purged of certain citizens because they are in an area where uh, an enemy unit is called from Pulse. So pretty much uh, everyone that's in here is people that were too close to that event that happened and they're being sent to Pulse because they don't want them on Cocoon anymore. Yeah. Um, so right now you're fighting through a bunch of the, uh, the Cocoon soldiers to try to get to the enemy unit to, I think, destroy it. Sorry, I was that's, that's a <laughs> yeah. So I totally didn't synopsis. read. Yeah, I totally didn't read the Wikipedia page <laughs> of the story before this. <laughs> so essentially, everybody on Pulse or everybody on Cocoon is afraid of anything from Pulse, government included. So they're just trying to get rid of anything that came in contact with anything from Pulse at all. Right. Where we're at Cocoon is basically like a artificial planet that floats above Pulse. Pulse is like world below, and then Cocoon is the actual like ball or above Pulse. And some people came and contacted some things from Pulse, and the government's using it as an excuse to just like get rid of pretty much anything that's close to it. So uh, that's why Snow's here fighting. Not this moment, but in general, he wants to protect people of Pulse. Lightning, well, he also has a more personal reason, and same with Lightning. Lightning's sister, Sarah, is currently at a Pulse prestige with a Pulse Valsi, and she wants to go rescue her. Um, we should probably explain Palsy. Palsy are kind of like the overseers of like their individual lands. They're, I don't want to call them gods, that's not quite accurate, but they're like a higher bank sort of deal. 
And their purpose is to essentially protect their like areas for the pulse while she gets pulse for Cocoon's Cocoon. They're in charge of like safekeeping, security, making sure things run smooth. Also, unlucky. Food, water, yeah. everything that's necessary necessary to live, really. <laughs> yeah. Every pulse LC has like their own purpose, generally speaking. And to help them with their purposes, they can make humans into a C. The C are like just people that got branded by like um Bal C. And essentially they get powers, like they get magic and stuff like that, they become more powerful. And they get a focus, which is like a goal that they have to complete. Now, if they complete that goal, oh, I did not want to get spotted there. That wasn't good. I, what? <laughs> I was out of the battle zone, and the game decided that I was still in the battle zone. Sir? <laughs> All right. I shouldn't be waiting this long for this. This dodge is very unlikely to work, but I kind of want to try. They did spot you late, which was really good. Yeah, the dogs were like on the other side of the world, so that worked out. Yeah. Nice. That is a really difficult dodge. It didn't look like it there because it was weird. But those aerial guys flying around are incredibly fast, and they just like run you down. And the dogs aren't easy to dodge too from the angle they're at. And that fight takes like 30 seconds, so it's actually a very big time save. Wow, I missed this guy. What are these positions? What is happening? They're very fanned out. They know this guy has like 60 grenades that he's just throwing willy nilly all over the place. Look at that. Oh, and then I kind of improvised a nice fix there. And not supposed to hand grenade there, it's supposed to be two attacks, but I needed a bit more AoE. All right. Okay. Here we're wrapping up chapter one. That bike that we just saw there, Snow's going to take it to uh, the Pulse Vestige that has Anima, where Sarah is. Because there is his fiance. And despite them like being basically brother and sister-in-law very soon, Snow and Lightning do not particularly like each other. In fact, Snow gets punched a lot. <laughs> Quite a few times. <laughs> With a face like that, how could you not? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus. Snow is very much an acquired taste. <laughs> he has like a bunch of hero talk and whatnot. And here we get to play some other characters. This is Anil. Notice that she has free ATB compared to every character we've played with so far, which has two. It's actually a game's like subtle hint about her being different. She uses deer antler wires. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm going to set the battle speed to slow there. Now, you might be asking, Zero, this is a speed run. Why would you set battle speed to slow? What are you doing? Are you like, do you get somebody else playing the game? Uh, so this is where we unlock shroud farming. We haven't talked about shrouds, but there's some, they're essentially a consumable you can use to get you certain effects. And essentially each enemy has a drop rate from this point on of getting a certain uh, shroud. And this fight right here has a 60% chance to give you a deceptive soul, which makes you invisible to enemies. And I need to farm at least two of them. So the way to get that 60% up is to actually get a bad battle rating, specifically two star or lower. Two star lower multiplies it by two. One star brings it down, or it multiplies it by two again, and zero star multiplies it by two again, getting you up to like an eight, text, eight times multiplier. And that makes that 60% 100% if we... Mr. Dog, please no. <laughs> <laughs> as long as we get a two star better, these deceptive soul drops are guaranteed. Now, for the people going for really good times, nowadays we just do these with fast battle speed and hope we get the drops. And there's like one backup fight where we can hope to get one again. But for Marathon, I'm definitely just going to do this the slow way. But the reason we set it to battle speed slow is because even if I do nothing with normal battle speed, Hope will kill them before I can get two stars. So it's specifically so Hope doesn't kill things too fast. Look at him, really thinking. He's really eyeing up that <laughs> next boomerang throw. Yeah, at least it's not stuck turning like certain other characters. <laughs> there you go. And there's a second one. Yeah. You need a 23 second there to get a... Um, Guaranteed one. I went for a bit more just to be safe. Normally you do as a timer to be more precise, but I'm just going off audio cues and they're a little bit iffy at times. So playing get an air of caution. Alright, so this is a fun fight. So at home I run this game on Linux instead of Windows, and for some reason this one fight in particular behaves differently and makes this fight super inconsistent. <laughs> but I am running Windows today, so I get to save five seconds. The goal of this fight is to hit <laughs> both uh, Pantherons with the grenade all three times, and they both die. Yeah. Um, you can do a little bit of a targeting trick that you saw him uh, target the A, then throw it at the B, and that kind of keeps them 
together rather than yeah. get hit with all three of them. The trick is to control Snow's movement. So you can't control your party member's movement directly in this game, but you can kind of influence it with like what you target, positioning, paradigm shifts, which we'll get into once those are unlocked. And uh, for that fight in, in particular, on my PC at home, Snow doesn't walk back at the start and messes everything up. <laughs> it's like a one, two step difference, but it breaks the fight. Linux Snow is about that action. <laughs> he wants to stay close. All right, so this is a fairly recent route change. We would always farm free Decept the Souls before. And to do that, there's this fight right here. We would take with Snow and Lightning. We need to get the Zero Star. Or did I say Snow and Lightning? Lightning and Saz. We would need to get a Zero Star, and that would require a 32 second fight. Overall, it takes like 50 seconds. And you could also pick up a Chester that has a Phoenix down, which is handy. We could sell for money or use it later. But uh, we're doing a newer route where you do two Decepts, and you just hope you get a drop. <laughs> it's, if you get a drop, it's faster. If you don't get a drop, it's slower. Pretty much. Nice, good fight. Uh, you missed? Yeah, I didn't. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's about my impression there, too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, it's fine. This is actually one of the few optional fights we take in the run. This isn't required, but I want the contents of this chest right here. This is a Gladius, it's a weapon for lightning. It has higher physical attack, lower magic attack. But it also sells for good money. So I'll use it as a weapon for a while, and eventually we're just going to sell it. I also picked up a chest in Chapter 1. It was a power circle. It's the exact same kind of weapon, but for snow. But generally, in terms of like optional stuff that we do during the run, there's very little. It's just go for the story, rush everything. But we will be stopping to pick up chests for money here and there, and a few optional fights. There will be exactly one fight done specifically to grind CP which is how you improve your stats in this game. All right, cool. All right. Yeah, <laughs> sometimes you actually miss all the droids of two grenades and you have to do more. I even had three miss once, oh, I, more than once. So you just killed the panther on and then... Yeah, and then you have to kill the <laughs> <laughs> droid after. Ugh. All right, so I haven't talked about bonus shrouds. There are some I farm for intentionally, but pretty much every fight in chapter two and on can drop a shroud. The higher, the, like, the more further we get into the game, the less likely they are. So this is our best chance to get some. Ideally, I would get a bonus Fortizol, which is what you use to give yourself offensive buffs before a fight starts, because I need that for Anima. But since I haven't got one yet, I'm going to go fight the droids right here, because the chest behind them is a Fortizol. And if I get lucky, there is a 12% chance that they also drop a Fortizol, so I can get an extra that I can use later. Before, we used to set battle speed to low for this as well, or slow, and we would do a 32 second fight to guarantee it, or 96% chance. I shouldn't say guarantee. Okay, These, they both trolled a bit, they both jumped back. <laughs> Maybe we get one. All right, no. But we got some thick and hides, those will be useful later. Um, we can't do any kind of weapon upgrading or accessory upgrading link yet, but eventually we'll be able to. And those will be useful for an upgrade in Chapter 4. All right. So dogs aren't too bad to dodge. You generally just have to dodge that swipe attack. They take a slight angle and you're fine. Uh, we haven't mentioned Vanille and Hope yet, really. So Vanille, she's, uh, she kind of got kind of like caught along all this stuff. She has a lot of big background in this, but the game doesn't tell you too much about her yet. But spoiler, the reason that she has free ATB, she's already LSC. Whereas every all our other characters so far are still human. I'd hope he's just like a kid that was like wrong place, wrong time, and his mother died during the battles on the bridge earlier in chapter one, and he blamed Snow for her death, so he's out to get revenge. That's why he's here. But I still like figuring it out. He's still a kid, it's not like combat trained or anything. It's just like a regular kid that got thrown into all this. Doing pretty well, in my opinion, based on that. Yeah. If you like, um, well, he gets a lot of hate normally, but he's like, he behaves appropriate to his character. Right. Maybe the best way to put it. All right. This dodge, we kind of have to manipulate him into swiping at us, and then, oh, and then um, yeah. he will back away from where you are compared to him, yeah. which allows you to run right past him. At least he should. I wasn't confident with that first one yeah. because I've had that happen where if he doesn't want to swipe, if he swipes late, he'll just stand there anyway. 
Fun fact, that is like a newer addition. A newer, I mean like last five years. <laughs> <laughs> like back in uh, older runs, what you would do is you would try to go under the swipe, and if you didn't get it, you would just farm a Deceptisol off him. And then Rusta, shout outs to Rusta, big member of the community. Uh, I'm not sure how to do this one. This is an Eliver. Okay, let's try that. Yeah, that worked. Okay. <laughs> I don't think I've ever done like that before, but I here we are. I don't think I've ever seen that either. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so there on the ground, we found Sarah. And so we haven't mentioned, well, we've mentioned a little bit about like focus of Lissy. It's essentially the job that the Pelsi that turns him into Lissy gives him. And it's really ambiguous. It gives it to you in the form of dream, so you don't actually really know what you are, what you're supposed to do. But um, if you succeed, you're turned into Crystal. And if you fail, you're turned into a Seaf, which is like these kinds of monsters right here that we've been running by. And right there, Sarah turned into Crystal, so she completed her focus. Sarah, Lightning, and Snow are very sad, and they're going to confront Anima, see if he can uh, turn her back. Anima is a pool style C. And we got our first boss fight of the run. So the way that Anima works is basically he counter hits with a swipe. So a little bit further into the fight, I'll be trying to dodge those by timing my attacks to what right after him, like this. But he, like his reaction time can vary. And we also want to kill those two arms because it pushes him to like a recovery phase. And he won't be doing anything, and I like that. I like it when my bosses don't do anything. Alright, so we've done enough damage. We can go for the kill on this one. Snow got stuck turning there a bit. Lightning got stuck turning there a bit. Also, fun fact, Lightning can miss here. To, uh, on this boss, that's just like not moving at all, and it's ginormous. <laughs> you could just whiff. Accuracy isn't like a thing in this game. There's no accuracy stat or anything, but your characters do very much like to miss sometimes. Happens a lot when the enemy's moving when the attack's supposed to go yeah. off, I've noticed. Yeah, but sometimes they're just like immobile and they still whiff, miss. Or if it's like at the wrong angle compared yeah. to where they're standing, they'll just whiff. Sometimes your own characters block your characters too. <laughs> And uh, you get uh, missed that way. So anyway, end of, the, end of the chapter there, we defeat Anima, and he turns our party into a C. So now we're all with C, we're given a focus, it's like a dream sequence. We're trying to like interpret what it means, what we're supposed to do. And after the battle, like the full prestige fell, and we fell down below us to uh, an area called Lake Brescia, which got frozen into ice. So it's very pretty. Uh, but you kind of got stuck. Huh, that's fine. Not bad. Yeah. And this is when we unlock, like, the real combat of the game. So here we're going to unlock Crystarium, which is kind of how we develop our characters. And we're also going to unlock Paradigms, which is, like, each character's role. It's how you control what they do, like, what they're responsible for, essentially. We'll give you a bigger rundown in a second. Many we did there is a little bit funny. We need to remove the power circle off of Snow so we can sell it. But the fastest way to do that is to actually just optimize Lightning and then him instead of just removing it. Optimize and generates in this game tend to be very fast menuing wise, so as much as we can, we're going to be using those. So here, there's a Crystarium, tour, Crystarium tutorial we don't want to watch. We, can worry about uh, we also got our first shop right here. Now, I need to sell some stuff. Credit chip, oh, perfect. Digital, digital circuit, we'll get item to sell. So we never actually buy weapons in this run unless, well, yeah, we never buy weapons in any version of this route. We do buy accessories, though. Accessories, so you have a weapon slot and you have an, one accessory slot at the start, but you can unlock more as the run goes on. And it's a really good way to just increase your stats or get certain effects. We'll generally be buying like big stat boosting accessories. Also, I got a menu here. All right. Uh, would any of you like to give a rundown on paradigms? So. Pretty much the paradigm is a way to set each job. As you can see, um, uh, Snow has access to Ravager, Commando, and Sentinel. So you can select one of those three jobs per paradigm for him. Same thing goes for the other two party members. You can select whichever jobs they have available and set them. Um, then during the fight, you can switch between your three set um, uh, teams pretty much and choose which jobs you want them to do during the fight. Um, so for uh, Paradigms, it's pretty much how you control what your characters are going to be doing during the fights. 
the Crystarium is how you progress the character's stats, abilities in each of those um, uh, set jobs. So you kind of have to um, uh, spend your experience wisely as well as set up for the fights wisely if you want to uh, be able to beat them as fast as possible, which is obviously the goal. <laughs> we were doing that a lot. We can give a brief rundown what each role does. Oh, yeah. So commando is generally how we deal damage. Um, uh, everyone in the final party ends up having that job. Ravager is how we build up the chain bar. So the chain is essentially when it's you start the fight, it's at 100%. As it goes up, you deal um, a damage, more damage as according to how the percent bar goes up. So 100%, you do regular damage. 150, you do 1.5 times damage, 200, two times, and so on. Um, Sentinel is a tank type job. You have provoke, which makes them uh, attack you. You have challenge later on, which does a similar thing. Um, abilities that make so you take less damage, so on. Um, Synergist allows you to buff your party members. So haste, um, uh, bravery, which is a physical damage increase, faith, uh, magic damage increase, and so on. Um, we don't have access to Synergist yet, I don't think. Uh, yeah. That on Ox a little bit later on. Um, what's the other ones? Saboteur, which is the Sab reverse Synergist. You debuff the enemies. Exactly. So that's D-Protect, D-Shell, um, which are the typical for Final Fantasy games. And there's also Imperil and Poison are the big ones that we like. Um, a little bit less so slow and curse. Um, slow slows them down. Curse makes it so they take... Uh, they can be interrupted more easily, I think. Yeah, and they don't interrupt you as much. Right. So this is a, the war mech wants a revenge now, so we're fighting him again. I think this is a different one though. No, I think it's, it's slightly a beat one. up. I mean, we beat up that previous one pretty well. That is true. <laughs> that was actually kind of close. Yeah. No, with twice. <laughs> so that attack right there, Crystal Rain, it's a big attack. If we don't cancel it, it'll probably kill us. It's a like big AOE move. It kind of hits randomly, but it does enough damage to just wipe us. So what we do there is we stagger cancel it. Once he starts, we want to stagger him, and that interrupts the move pretty much. Uh, it's not. It's a mechanic that's really important in certain fights, but it doesn't appear too much past the early game. There'll be one more fight where that's very important. And from here, we just hopefully kill. Yeah, looks good. Nice. 49. Nice. Good time too. And there we go. That was our first like real boss fight with paradigm shifting and whatnot. We didn't really explain too much what we're doing there, but the strat is generally just build up some duration by hitting him with a calm, build up some chain so we get him close to stagger. Time it so our allies stagger him when he's about to do crystal rain so we can cancel that, and then we just DPS him down. We do a one quick switch into solidarity, which has no sentinel, just so he can provoke it so he stops hitting lightning because he knows quite a bit tankier and he has no problem with it, whereas lightning. Yeah, she, she'll die. <laughs> I feel like we haven't explained duration either. So when you do stagger an enemy, if you do it really quick with all Ravagers, the stagger bar will just shoot right down. Um, and you really don't have a lot of opportunity to do a lot of damage during the stagger. Um, if you hit a couple of times with Commando or Saboteur, it actually built. Ooh, they're yeah, acting I should have really warned. weird. Um, yeah. Fine. But if you build up the chain while also doing some attacks in uh, Commando or doing some debuffs in Saboteur, it makes the, the, the stagger at the end last significantly longer. Um, so it gives you more of an opportunity to damage the enemies down, which um, you, we usually want to build up at least a little bit on most fights. Well, some very rare exceptions, that's correct. Ravagers also build up duration, but not that much. Right. Saboteur is actually decent, very surprisingly good at building up the uh, duration, if the debuffs are hitting at least, less so if they aren't. All right, uh, quick menu here. Notice I'm doing generates. I haven't done one manual Crystarium menu yet, it just, or Paradigm menu yet, just because generates are faster. All right, so coming up is a dodge that's affectionately called Brog Fridge. It's a bridge full of frogs, and a runner that now goes by Logic Dolphin. He actually ran this in 2016 here, I believe. Yes, he did. Uh, he was just one day doing a run, and his tongue slipped. They called it Brog Fridge, and it just stuck around ever since. So normally this is decepted. I am going to do it manually once, and hopefully I get it. And if it doesn't work, then we're going to decept it. Uh, that looks good. Looks nice. really good. All right. Yeah, that was a really easy one. 
Fridge brogged. <laughs> <laughs> that makes up for failing a dog dodge. The, uh, the reason I killed that one, by the way, is because that has a decent chance of dropping the Sceptic Soul, and it's a very fast kill, so there just isn't much value in retrying it, especially since you can fail it again. Plus, we get 12 extra CP. Or Crystarium points. All right. So I haven't talked too much about some of the finer techniques with uh, Paradigm Shifting. First of all, your first Paradigm Shift of uh, every fight is what we call an ATV Refresh where essentially the game just refills everyone's ATV to full, regardless of where they were at. And then after your first Paradigm Shift from there, every t after 12 seconds of in battle time, your next refresh will once again refill everyone's ATV. So that's why we're always shifting, even if it's like the same roll. That's why we have these double rolls here. Oh, that was bad. Cut an attack. Uh, a bit of a rough fight. It's because he swiped really late. The HP valleys might look really, really scary to a casual viewer right now, but that's completely safe. Yeah, that fight is not dangerous at all, unless you really mess it up. Sometimes you forget to menu before, and then it's a little bit scary because he has an attack called Heave, I believe, which is pretty big damage and launches your characters. Yeah, like it says it's charging up his attack. That's what it's charging up too, but you never see it normally. All right. So um, this is actually a nice spot uh, with a lot of downtime. We'll just be running for most of this. So if there's any announcements, this would be a fantastic time. Oh, there has been an outpour of love between when you started and now <laughs> in the donation space. We have 5454 54 from K Fizzle Force <laughs> because I had to for the meme. Thank you. We have $150. $100.54 from Sharky Yo. says, on behalf of the entire Final Fantasy 13 community, we're proud of you, Zero. You're going to have an amazing run. Hashtag 54. <laughs> 54. <laughs> Let's go. Thank you so much, Sharky. We have a $100 donation from Timothy Wilson. Says, this event is my favorite speed running event of the year. I'm so happy to see it back. It cannot be overstated how important mental health is. If I could give 10 times more of my dona donation amount, I would. Thank you so much for putting on this event and the hours of entertainment it will give me. Thank, Thank you, you, Timothy. Timothy. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So we actually haven't used any shrouds yet outside of before Anima, which was a Fortisol. This will be our first usage of a Deceptisol. This is what uh, makes us invisible. Now, you might be thinking, Zero, you only farm three Decepts. Is that enough to get through the run? Or actually, I only farm two Decepts. <laughs> We used to farm free, so I get confused sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a trick to it. So imagine you're fighting a hard boss, and you use your Fortisol, which like, buffs your attacks, and then you lose. You're, the game already knows that you're struggling, right? It doesn't want to take your Fortisol from you. Uh, it's just going to make things harder. So what it does is it gives you back your Shrouds that you used. So when you retry a battle, you get your Shrouds back. Unless it's an Eversol, but that's, just, that's outside of combat, so that's a little different. We can take advantage of that mechanic. So we can use the Decept Assault to get past enemies that are hard to get past, like these Watch Runs right there. And once we get past them, we can re-enter the battle zone and fight them and just retry. And then we are now past those enemies, and we have our Decept Assault still. I still have two Decept Assaults. Now that is called Decept Canceling. We will be using that a lot throughout the run. It helps us get past like, any enemy groups that are otherwise not really possible to get, like, possible to get past. And we are stretching our two Decept Assaults until like, the end of Chapter 12, pretty much. There's also one other shroud that, uh, well, I mentioned Eversoul. Eversoul restores your TP. So you might have noticed in our battle menu, there's another slot called Techniques. Uh, techniques take TP. You have five, and uh, depending on what technique you use, it consumes a certain amount. Um, there's like four techniques we'll ever use in the run. There's Libra, which you can, I've already used once, no, twice on that, has been on all that behemoth. What it does is it gives you information on the, whatever enemy you target. And for us, we're speedrunning. We've run this game a bunch of times. We already know their weaknesses and their HP and stuff. Well, in theory, I don't know their HP values. <laughs> <laughs> we know how many hits it takes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's all that's relevant. But um, what it helps is it helps with our ally characters because they don't know that. They're not speedrunners. Uh, that'll help their AI choose like, the most optimal things. So for example, if they have an element that that enemy is weak to, they don't know that until we either hit them enough and that like, progressively unlocks info or we use Libra or Libra Scope which is just an AOE Libra consumable item. Additionally, there's some funky mechanic like AI where if you don't have Libra info, your commandos will say ruin, attack, attack, instead of doing three attacks. Ruin, we haven't used any yet outside of snow throwing one, but it's like the magic attack in commando. 
it's um, it's targeted, it's one hit per, it's just like a spell essentially, yeah. And we don't want that because we're specking towards physical and physical in this game does more damage overall and it's better for interruption. So that's another reason we potentially use Libra before some fights or during some fights. Also, we've had, there's this guy behind us. We call him the scary guy. <laughs> he is incredibly fast. He's like five times faster than me. And if he goes after you, he'll almost certainly catch you. But he is also proximity based. So as, far, as long as you go far enough left, you're fine. <laughs> Before we knew that, though, we would take like the alternate route to the right. And it was like longer. All right, so this is kind of interesting. I'm going to Q2 funders and instantly cancel them and then do auto chain. The reason we do that is because there's a mechanic called repeat, where if you hold right on abilities, you can repeat your last string like that. And I want two funders there, so I actually queue it ahead of time. Uh, would any of you like to explain the strat here? Oh, you know it well enough? Um, I don't really know it that well. Right. Honestly, I don't do the strat. <laughs> <laughs> That's a fairly new one. We changed our default paradigm here. So... Phase one is just kill as fast as possible, so we're just rushing the stagger. Phase two, he puts up a shield, and we essentially don't do any damage until we knock off that shield. That was weird. I should have had more ATB there. Uh, this is bad. We'll be fine, it's just off script. It's not gonna... It's just slow. <laughs> yeah. Just slow, but we're not in trouble or anything. Oh, Saz got in trouble at a horrible time. Bro, fire? Okay, I'm gonna... I'm improvising this a bit, but we'll make it work. Yeah, we should be fine for me. I'm actually like overchained like crazy. Second phase, it's just a rush of stagger. The way we time our shifts normally is so um, we can't aren't really prone to, or as prone into interruption. Sadly, sometimes it doesn't work out. Happens. Ah, uh, that also happens here for a bit off script. You can get knocked down. Uh, it's okay. Just lost a little bit of time. It's fine. Uh, so well, you might have noticed some the, during some of the fights we've done before, whenever you do your first paradigm shift of a fight, it's a very long paradigm animation. It takes like three seconds. It's extra long compared to the later paradigm shifts. That's negated if you're in the air. If you're in the air, it skips that paradigm shift. Also, if it's like a cinematic action from an enemy where it like changes the camera, that also can uh, skip that. So before we used to have Relentless as default for that first phase, and that let us lead with attacks, which let us jump, so we didn't have that long paradigm shift. And then we changed it to try D, and then we had to change the strike completely because we had to stay on the ground. Anyway, um, I don't like, would anybody like to explain how these work? Oh, um, so this is the very first Eidolon fight in this game. So we have to build up the Gestalt bar, which you can see in purple above the one on the left. Um, in order to get access to the summons in this game. Um, each character has their own. This is Snows. For this fight, we want to build some chain by doing commando, um, uh, attack, ruin, attack, generally build some duration. Then we want to do some frost strikes in Ravager. When they do the ATB charge attack, we want to switch over to Sentinel because that actually builds it up really quickly. Uh, that was a really early one. Yeah, it builds it up really early. Um, quickly when they do the attack that they're charging up. I think you're going to get it on this one. No, I'm not. I'm going to be just short, but I'll finish it right after. All right. Actually, okay. not even, not quite. Wow. I need to do like two here and maybe one is good enough. Oh, okay. That attack was wasted. So here's the like little caveat. If you're at zero chain, your attacks don't build any assault. So that's why I wanted to get that one attack and try to get some duration, but it wasn't enough. Yeah, so story-wise, Eidolons appear when, like, LOC is in trouble, they're feeling desperate. It's kind of either, like, defeat me and continue or die sort of a deal. <laughs> um, and this is when, like, once you defeat them, that's when you get access to summon. Uh, we won't be doing that for quite a while, but summons can be very useful. They have some unique properties to them. It's generally not as optimal to summon because you lose control of your other characters when you summon, but sometimes it's very useful. It's also fairly expensive, it costs free TP. So a lot of our Epersol usage, is, which is what restores TP, will be based around summoning, so we can get more summons out. Not always, though. <laughs> anyway. Pretty typical, though. Yeah. All right, welcome to Chapter 4. This is Wild Peaks. Essentially, after Chapter 3, we got an airship, and then as we were escaping, we got shot down, and this is where we landed. Ooh, bonus ports. Nice. nice. So those three soldiers I fought before the Shiva fight, it doesn't show you any drops or results screen, but it actually does drop things. 
And that fortisol right there is from that. It's an invisible fortisol. You have to check there to see if you got it. Uh, mm. oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. In my notes, I have in big bold letters. Never go middle. <laughs> <laughs> it's always a trap. About to use our second uh, D set to cancel because these enemies are really jerks. Really quick, okay. and they like to. Even with it, they like to block the path. Yeah, right here. Especially this one. Oh, I could have went. Yeah. I could still go. The left, yeah. I think that one's name is Gustav. We affectionately have enemies, <laughs> or like names for a lot of our enemies. The first one we decepted, I call him Stan. Uh, Mr. Stan Dindleway. <laughs> it's a reference to the Suikoden community. And Suikoden 1, we have one guy on a dock that you need to like get past to get to a boat. And sometimes he just blocks it. And we call him Stan. Stan Dindleway. It's really bad there because it completely ruins the RNG manipulation too. So it's just a reset with like modern strats. Yeah, that, that Stan's a rude Stan. Yeah. We don't like that guy. That's why I named that Watcher on Stan, because I don't like it either. Yeah, that, that's how you know it's serious. <laughs> if something gets the Stan designation, it's bad. It, funny enough, it's not even that bad. It's just me being bad, because you can always get past it, but I sometimes have trouble telling. Yeah, super salty is also a good reason. Yeah, that's my <laughs> reason right there. All right, so we're going to set up our paradigms here real quick. We also have, have unlocked some new roles, finally. Uh, now we have access to Saz's Synergists, which is how we buff, and Vanille's uh, Saboteur, which is how we debuff. So we won't be using Synergists too much early. Well, not yet, but we will be using Saboteur in this fight. We want to debuff with D Shell on that pulse work. Current strat I'm doing is very consistent. It doesn't really matter much if uh, it takes her one or two tries, but with some strats, you have to count how many D Shells she does on that robot. And if it's two, you have to adjust. I like this strat, though, because it's always the same, and it's very consistent. You can also potentially miss the kill on this pulse work, like the Watchroom can steal it. And then you don't get the CP for it, and it changes like, your CP routing. You have to back that up. <laughs> that is a thing in this run where enemies can steal your stuff. I actually thought that was about to happen. I didn't know how much yeah. damage that kicked in. <laughs> <laughs> this strat, it doesn't, never happens unless you make a mistake. That's why I like it. The other strat, it's much more likely. All right. This is... Every runner's favorite part of the run right here. It's called RNG Gutter, or RNG Gutter. So these enemies, they're not after you, which seems like it'd be nice, right? It's like, oh, cool, they're not trying to get us for once. But the problem is they're fighting each other, so their movement's completely random. <laughs> Look at them. Yeah, that I wolf, think you'll move. That... Okay. Right, there, there we go. go. <laughs> I wasn't sure what he was going to do, so I wasn't ready for the lunge. But yeah, there's three of these. That was the easy one. <laughs> I uh, should be able to go through. Oh. Okay. <laughs> nice. One more. I think the last one's the worst one, though. Another runner by the name of Kairun, who has the world record on this. Shout out to Kaya. He, um, he'll, me and him have a thing where he always has an easy first one. Yeah, or nice. He always has an easy third one. I always have an easy first one. But today we traded. <laughs> I had easy, a hard first one and an easy third one. So usually at least one of those three is free, but none of them really were this time. Yeah. Oh yeah, you could get stuck for over a minute there, no problem. And you can't decept it because they ignore you anyway. You can't <laughs> use that as a trick. You just have to wait and like time it, find an opportunity. That doesn't always come. No, we're about to kill the second optional fight here to get the chest that you can see in the background. Um, this guy dies pretty quick and that chest is very valuable though, so. The chest itself actually isn't valuable in a way. Like, it's not an I nerd it, it's uh, Hope's default weapon. It's like the one that has nothing on it. But Hope's, like, the weapon that he actually starts with is an air wing, which is, like, a good weapon according to the game. Like, it's not, but the game considers it good and sells for a lot. So we fight this one to get the I nerd it so we can sell his good weapon and give him the bad one. <laughs> <laughs> we don't really use him much either. Yeah. Hope's stats are irrelevant to us. Well, actually, that's not true. We want to keep him intentionally weak. <laughs> <laughs> so he dies fast. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, we will point that out uh, when we get to There's one specific spot where it's really important that we don't give him much stats. All right. So this is the RPG Jerkbird part of the run. This is where we finally meet our Jerkbirds. These guys right here. Come out of nowhere. OK, that looks good. OK, nice. They were tame. <laughs> they were still tame. Good. They behaved. Yeah. So on the first try, well, this one, for some reason, is really hard on the first try, even though you have a lot of space and they come down pretty late. That one is somewhat difficult. But a lot of the later ones, um, well, the problem is when you first try it, they jump up down, jump down from below, so it's easier. 
But once uh, like you fail at once, they don't jump down anymore. They're already on the ground. So you have to deal with three of them at once instantly. And usually that's not really feasible, especially in a marathon setting. So we're just going to have to decept the soul if we get caught by any of these. Yeah. And because we have to keep that decept the soul, we'll have to cancel it afterwards by retrying. And that loses us even more time. Just looking right uh, at you. I don't like that oh, pattern. Yeah. It works in theory, but I just don't like it. Yeah, nice. I prefer the patterns where he doesn't see you. All right, that looks nice. good. First two down. That second one's deceptive. It looks like it's the easier one of the two, but if you ever have a non-standard setup for it, it's actually much more dangerous. The nice thing about the birds is that in theory, they should lunge at you, which is easy to dodge. You can just run the straight line. If they're running at you from behind, they lunge at you, they'll miss. But they don't always lunge at you. Sometimes they just sprint, and they're way faster than you, and they'll like, run into your side, and then you just get caught. All right, I am going to do a menu here. So if there are any more announcements, now's a pretty good time. Oh, do I have announcements? <laughs> we have $25 from Slightly OP, I mean $10 from Slightly OP with no comment, but I also want to thank everybody donating who don't, doesn't provide a comment. All those uh, small donations add up to a big, great cause here. We have $25 from Kaboink. Language Bid War was a bit too rich for my blood, but I'm excited to be here and watch this run for such an amazing Final Fantasy game. I want to thank everybody who has put in all the hard work and traveled to put this event together for the rest of us to enjoy. NAMI is an amazing cause, and I'm happy to support such an important organization. And we have a $100 donation from Renald Marshall. Hey, Zero. Had to donate during your run. May the damage rolls and dodges be ever in your favor. Thank you so much, Renaud, and everybody else that donated as well. Thank you so much. So finally, we get to take out some of our anger on RPG Jerkbirds, and we have to fight three of them here. This is a pretty funny fight, though, because you could die. Uh, oh, Life Siphon, ready animation cancel. That's a rarity. This is a good fight. Yeah, I'm surprised you didn't have to potion. Yeah, normally you would have to potion here. So you can see the Lightning God deprotected there. If you get like a character deprotected and focus down, it can get really sketchy. But that was a really nice fight. So the theme of this chapter, at least for all the stat sections, you get like these little things you have to activate to extend bridges and whatnot. Good. Looks good so far. They didn't even see you. Uh, okay. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> RPG Jerkbirds. <laughs> Right as I said, they didn't even see you. They just catch you. Yeah, oh, that's fine. Though. I was at the battle zone, so it's not too punishing. Uh, once you get that jump animation going, you're already past it. It just some time to retrying. If uh, they caught me before, then then I'd have to retry and actually do the dodge, which meant decept is soloing and then canceling the decept. That's about as that's as unpunishing as it can get. This one's actually been fairly good so far. Pleasantly surprised. I'm sure that won't last too much longer. <laughs> The game heard you. <laughs> it's always listening. <laughs> and this boss is the second boss and the final one that we're going to do the stagger cancel on. Yes. It is the second two-phase fight, but it's the definitely the longer of the two two-phases fights that you've done so far. Yeah, you're welcome to explain the fight. If not, okay. I mean, it's phase one's pretty straightforward. We just chain. We do get. Uh, we do finally do our first buffs here. We buff bravery on lightning, which is more physical attack, more physical damage. Oh, uh, Vanille, you kind of ruining this. <laughs> I have to wait for D shell now. This is weird. Okay. Hey, we got the rare Vanille red animation cancel. <laughs> oh, what is this? I have to double potion here too. <laughs> this is a very unstandard fight. I'm just improvising from here. So if anyone, if you have like 130 or so HP, you're safe. But if he hits you down to like double digits, you have to double potion. Especially with Saz. Vanilla, you can let die. No big deal if she goes down. But Saz has to survive. We haven't, we haven't died yet, luckily, so we haven't seen it. But in this game, you lose your, when your party leader dies. That's what ends the fight. So we got to Even sure if all happens. your other friends are still alive. Yeah. They can be full HP, just like ready to fight for you, but no. game over. You'd have a million Phoenix Downs on you, and they won't use them. <laughs> you need to learn a lesson. 
So for phase two, we're going to try to build up the chain enough to where we can uh, stagger cancel it when it does the big attack called Wrecking Ball. We're going to buff up Saz, Lightning, and Vanille with Bravery uh, and Two Faiths. Lightning gets the Bravery because she does a lot of physical damage. Um, and then we're going to try to get um, D-Protect and D-Shell for the second, for the post stagger to just be able to damage him down. Um, he does do a move that is both of them, and there's the Wrecking Ball, and there's a Stagger Cancel. Nice. So nice. Perfect. We are safe from here. <laughs> um, so after the Stagger goes up, he does a move called Steam Clean, which takes off the D-Shell. So we have to go back into the, uh, the Paradigm that has um, a Saboteur in it Watch to it. get it back up. Yep, fully right there. So you see it goes off. We go into this for just a second. You see D-Shell pop up, and you switch back. And now he's dead, pretty much. Yeah. So I still haven't mentioned, I've mentioned ready animation cancels a few times, but it's a good time to explain it. Essentially, after you do a paradigm shift, your characters like, are ready to do a string. They like to do a cool pose. But cool poses are slow. <laughs> so we don't want to do a cool pose. Uh, the way to avoid that is generally, um, after their animations are done, you do like a paradigm shift with an ATB refresh. Essentially, when you shift, they wanna have the, if they're full ATB, they can continue fighting instead of doing their cool poses. It's not true for all characters. Vanille, for example, it's very situational for her to be able to get a ready animation cancel. Saz is, well, Saz is, a, it's easier. Snow is really good at it. Hope is impractical. <laughs> Thing is impractical. But um, we call those racks. So if I ever say, like, rack during the run, I am referring to a ready animation cancel. I'm going to try to avoid using abbreviations, but it might slip. It Generally, when you do it for like three years at a time, yeah. calling it a rack, it's very <laughs> difficult to break that habit. <laughs> yeah, along with other habits. It's one of the challenges of running in a marathon where I explain a lot more. All right. All right. So that was the end of the SAS section. Now we have the Lightning and Hope section. This fight is actually surprisingly dangerous. These guys can really focus you down. Seems to be going okay so far, though. They look to be disliking Hope more than Lightning. Which is fine. Hope can yeah. die. <laughs> yeah. We don't care about hope. Hopeless <laughs> fights are fine. <laughs> Hopeless just like my runs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're still full HP. Okay. Wow. Yeah, I thought this guy's gotten hit before. All right, hope can finish. Good job, hope. Hey, he nine HP, hope. Eight more <laughs> than he needed. <laughs> See, hope was important after all. Everything is taken back. <laughs> Hope, you're essential. I'm going to let you survive Ushu 1 for one more hit, maybe. <laughs> Throw a potion in there randomly. Give him one HP node. <laughs> he does go to medic. I could just auto heal. <laughs> <laughs> I have actually thought about it before because it would help on Proto, but giving him even 10 more HP, he can not die to two attacks. So I had to math it. Do we have time for a quick donation? Yes, this is a good time. We have a $1,054 donation from Sharky. Yeah. Says, I just realized the marathon isn't at least up to $13,000 during Final Fantasy 13. Let's fix that. Sharky, oh the God. legend. Oh my God, Sharky. Wow. Thank you so much. Discovering the speed, uh, the speed run of this game over 10 years ago is how I met all of you. <laughs> and the RPG Limit Break community is the most welcoming group I've ever met. Please take my energy for Nami's wonderful cause. Also, starting a $5 donation train to hashtag save Yamcha. <laughs> <laughs> There's no saving him. <laughs> he will do that typical Yamcha in Yamcha, Yamcha pose, <laughs> pose in the crater, curled up in fetal position. <laughs> oh, there's the classic lightning turning animation there for specialty. All right. <laughs> That fight went well still, even with yeah, the turn. Yeah, it was still good. Yeah. Um, I'm, this isn't my personal stream, so I'm going to try to avoid it, but I have a tendency to yell at Lightning because she needs to hit something. An enemy will be like two degrees off to where she's facing. And she'll just be like, I don't understand what I'm supposed to do here. And she'll turn for like five seconds to get those two degrees covered, and then she'll finally do something. So for this section, the end reward depends on how many of these uh, robots you actually hit. It's the only real mini game that you do this and I think they just made it and then forgot about it <laughs> but you pretty much need to hit um, on the first and this one at least four of the enemies you already hit five on the first one so just needed three more here but 
Yeah, I think you just want a little bit of a rampage. Yeah. yeah, a little bit of a rampage on them. I got a little bit upset thinking about lightning, so right. I'm thinking I'm angry. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And then the last one, you hit all of them. The third one, you hit all of them just because of how they're uh, positioned. And on this, you get 20 thickened hides, um, which are very useful for upgrading equipment uh, in a little bit. Yeah, so to get 20 thickened hides, you need 25 to 34. If you get less, you get 12 sturdy bones, which we would have to improvise to make that work. And if you get more than 34, you get a lightning ring, I believe, which is a cool accessory, but completely useless for us in the speed run, so we don't want it. We really need those organic components. Uh, this doesn't look right. Mm. Make it? Hey. Oh, oh, I, was that I noticed you. I, I celebrated way too yeah. soon. He came out of nowhere. That's weird. I must have messed up the camera trick position. I haven't, we haven't really mentioned the camera mechanics yet, besides at the very start, but... Not really. That? So enemies, um, uh, their behavior changes based on if you're looking at them or not looking at them. So if you look at them, they continue on their cycles a little bit faster than if you're not looking at them. So looking at them versus not looking at them can make some dodges easier or more difficult. Um, so messing up how you face your camera can just make it a little bit more less uh, consistent. Yeah, you can change it between consistent or like making no difference to being near impossible. It really depends on which one you're doing. All right. But essentially, it's like the game's way of saving computational resources because this was a PS3 and like Xbox game at first. So it's like, if, if the if player can't see them, we don't want to move them around and stuff. We'll just leave them in the background. So some enemies, we want to push our cycles forward. So we'll stare at them, even if it's like through a wall, that still works. And uh, if we don't want them, oh, that's Ooh, unlucky. Real Rude. Yeah. That's a bad one to fail, too, because that puts you way back there. Yeah, it's one of the worst fail dodges outside of the birds. You have to go all the way back. At least there's a nice way to make it more consistent on the retry. You intentionally get spotted by that guy. And now they, they just run all the way to the front. Yeah. Oh, and they Look chase at you through the tube. <laughs> they actually went into a tunnel. <laughs> <laughs> and now we're about to have our second Eidolon fight. This one's for Lightning, and it's our good friend Odin. Um, he, we try to get them to separate um, Lightning and Hope, just because he likes to do a flourish attack that hits both of them if they're too close together. So we do a couple of attacks to make lightning run up to him, and then hopefully he targets nice. Hope and goes away from you. Oh, he's what? targeting Hope, but he's not walking away from you. Oh, this oh, is that's horrible. It was good, and it went really bad. Please, lightning. Uh, this is not going to be a good fight. No. Skyward swing now. Actually goes it looks like she's backing up from him, at least, so maybe eventually... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, she's getting pushed away, so yeah. got that going for us. <laughs> yeah, and right. maybe if he chooses to target Hope um, after this. This is exactly how the strat is not supposed to go. <laughs> really doesn't like lightning. <laughs> no. And it's unusual for him to target lightning, too. Usually he goes after Hope. Yeah, it would have been bad either way, so I'm yeah. not too upset about the targeting. There he goes. He's like, yeah. oh, wait, there's a kid over here. <laughs> <laughs> he looks weak. <laughs> That's actually what summoned uh, Odin. Like, Lightning was upset because she couldn't take care of Hope and, like, keep doing her job, like, trying to fight the army. So she won a little bit of baby rage and... <laughs> <laughs> and he's done. Yeah, that was, like, over a minute, but... Uh, for a bad fight, it was good. <laughs> it was only, like, 15 seconds, <laughs> yeah. ultimately, even though it looked a lot worse than that. That was the worst positioning I've ever seen, honestly. I would just, like, died. sandwich you back <laughs> together. Yeah. <laughs> What the funny thing is, so like the purpose of attacks is to like move you further away. And Lightning's first set of two attacks moved her to the left, so look good. And then her second set of two attacks moved her back in front. <laughs> that was great. So this is the first instance of uh, summoning that we're gonna see, um, it, and it is on the summon tutorial too, yeah. which is nice. Uh, we actually get to listen to the game. Um, first, we're gonna kill all the sur soldiers in the front with a couple of blitzes. They're pretty weak. Um, then we summon Odin, we, and then we uh, try to um, uh, stagger these two um, Yulons? Yeah, they're yeah. Ulons. All right. <laughs> I, was, I wasn't sure on the pronunciation. <laughs> um, once they're staggered, we need to get them at 270, and then Odin's special uh, finisher, uh, Zantansuken, <laughs> will kill them. I think it's pronounced uh, Lan. Oh, Lan? No, okay. I'm, ma I'm making that up. Uh, I, I, I believe like you. It. Yeah, I that's how I'm going to pronounce it from now on. It's, it's, it's an O-Lan. <laughs> that, that is anybody's loss who listens to me. <laughs> <laughs> so, that, well, Odin and Zanatsuken are kind of unique. All the other Eidolons, they are, like, their finishing moves are just straight-up damage. Odin's different. 
he insta kills. But only if you hit the threshold required, which is like a combination of chain and damage. And if you don't get the kill, it does like no damage. So it's really rough cleaning up any fights where Odin's supposed to kill everything, and he doesn't. It can just vary between just pure loss or really slow. Also, enemy enemy that he hits, he provokes. Okay, I actually have to decept up here. Yeah, he's looking right at you. <laughs> yeah. Just like scoot it up. He's like, I dare you. <laughs> <laughs> like, he would have got me too, for sure. Oh yeah, he, he was serious. Ran, he just ran right at you. <laughs> All right, so it's actually fine to decept because these dodges are fairly hard. A lot of the times you have to decept here anyway. But um, the reason I don't like it is because for the next one, the pulse work can block the path, and I don't have very much decept duration here. And if he blocks the path, I just have to cancel early and retry and do it normally. It looks good. It looks okay. Yeah. We have enough space. When you initially use a decept assault, it also makes your hitbox a bit smaller. But that wasn't the case there. It's just, yeah. So if you saw it, my decept started blinking in the top right corner where it shows the shroud you have active, it starts blinking more and more aggressively. And when it runs out, you lose the item. And losing a decept is a humongous issue. That's actually one of the things I'm most afraid of in this run because. The backup is a very bad manual preempt that I have zero confidence in hitting, especially in the marathon setting. <laughs> and it takes, what, 25 seconds to set up? Yeah, 25 seconds minimum. Each if, time you attempt it. Yeah. 25 seconds and 10 seconds per lap if you need to fix positioning. If you have to full retry, then it's 25 seconds again. Yeah. Okay, they're looking good. Yeah. So we're about to see our first uh, upgrade menu in here. We're going to upgrade some accessories. Um, so there's different components that he's gotten and some that he's going to buy here um, that we used to upgrade that power wristband, which will make so we do a lot more damage in one of the two Magician's markets that we had. Also getting some potions just for uh, later. Yeah, <laughs> so we don't die. Yeah, that, generally that's all the healing we get in the beginning of the run. Um, uh, I'll let you do this. Oh, you can keep talking. This isn't too hard. So there is a method to upgrading this game that's like most efficient. There's two types of components. First of all, there's organic and there's mechanical. Organic components tend to give you a little EXP, but what they do is they increase your multiplier, which is like how much your next upgrades will be doubled or whatever. It goes from one to like 1.25, 1.5, 1.75, 2, and then finally three. That's actually the only time we ever use a two multiplier because we can't buy organic components yet. So we're limited in what we have access to. But um, after that, you want to use your mechanical. Mechanical components reduce the multiplier, but they give you more EXP. Right, nice. They behaved, yeah. kind of. <laughs> Good enough. All right, so here is actually a very new and interesting camera manipulation. We're going to lift up the camera here. And all the way in the back left corner, we have to watch that pulse work soldier. Once he starts going a little bit to the left, I'm going to look away from him, which I think he's doing right about now. And the reason we're doing that is because this is the part of the run where we're going to set up a lot of manual preempt. We haven't mentioned preempts yet, but you can sneak up on enemies. And what it does when you do that is you essentially start off a full chain on them. So you can, pre, uh, you can stagger really fast. All right, that was fine. This is one of the fights that can just straight up kill you with no counterplay. If they just both instant self-destruct, then you have a position where you can't dodge it. Depending on position, you can kind of back up by doing status attacks, kind of how it's doing now. But uh, not always. If they kind of like sandwich you, there's nothing you can do. It's just faster to retry. I just really enjoy the way he shoots his guns. <laughs> <laughs> Does like a nice flourish pose every yeah, time. Yeah, that's very uh, enthusiastic. Uh, at least he shoots his guns like a, unlike a certain party member of ours. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he does every once in a while. When you uh, lose time to the backflip. She heard everyone saying that she's like a carbon copy. Of I was Squall. ready. I was. <laughs> I was so ready for that. I saw him running. That got up. so low. <laughs> oh, whatever. Good enough. <laughs> it's dead. Yeah. We need some dramatics every now and then. You're making this look too easy. <laughs> that did not look easy. After that, <laughs> stagger. That looked like it was going to be a yeah. long fight or every. <laughs> oh, I already had a lot of damage, so it wasn't too bad. Oh, I got a bad cycle here again. Yeah, I also want to make it's not too bad. No, yeah. It's close. Well, oh, ish. Yeah. Ish. <laughs> ish. <laughs> while, I, while I manipulated the previous one, I also tried to manipulate this one, push the cycle forward. Actually, I think I forgot to turn right, which is why it's behind. Oh, in the beginning. Yeah, no, when I was like running towards the previous one. Oh, yeah. yeah. So here we want to get duration on. But, oh, he got interrupted. That's unusual. Well, Vanille did her job, at least. Saz didn't, but Vanille did. That's 
usually the opposite of how things go, but here we are. <laughs> Alright. Simple enough. This is where we really start using the power of buffs and debuffs. Like, Saz getting bravery every fight, that gives him a nice damage multiplier. I think it's 1.4 on physical, if I recall correctly. And then D Protect is like 1.79, right? It was either a 7.8. It it's 1.7 something, yeah. high 1.7. It's actually 1.8. Yeah. And if you hit a weakness, that gives you another 2, but we can't really hit weaknesses yet. Let's get this over with. All right. And our last fight of this segment. The reason we're doing all of these instead of just like, you know, dodging them or whatever, you can't, con like, you have to activate those four things to continue the story. So we just, we're forced into it. I don't have a choice. It's not optional. You gotta open that door. Yeah. <laughs> all right, fair enough. Sometimes you just gotta push buttons. <laughs> Eventually it'll work. That tends to be a theme among video games. Yeah. <laughs> Apropos. All right. all right, so here's what we'll, we're gonna do something here. We're gonna actually unequip. Saz and Neil, because the way the chapter structure in this game works, uh, this actually does not work. See you later, Vanille. <laughs> she disagrees. It does not care. Um, okay, can you back Look at her go. Maybe. Nope. No. Uh, it's hard to tell if that, like, done. You should have just done what Vanille did and ran right through them. Yeah, Vanille, please teach me how to dodge. Vanille's a ghost. <laughs> All right, well, we're fine now. Some time loss, but not a big deal. I'm going to come back to the middle because this chest has an ether soul, which we'll need later. Oh, for yeah, it's a fortisol. We'll need later on. <laughs> it's a very uh, free fortisol, and we do need those. Yeah. Uh, okay, I was going <laughs> to. Let's get, get out of that right. menu. <laughs> not happy. Is he going to. Uh, uh, left. Uh, yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I did the it. joke! <laughs> It was all for the suspense. <laughs> Completely calculated. Usually if they're lined up on one side or the other, we'll just deset cancel it because it's free at that point. But when they block the entire uh, hallway like that, it's very <laughs> impossible to get past them with a deset because they don't react to you. Yeah. Yeah. It initially, it looked like a decept. I was like, going to do it. And then they started moving. And then before I could decide, they just saw me. <laughs> and then they red rover walled you. <laughs> yeah. The balls were well behaved, at least. But that pulse work just did not want to move. <laughs> New Gandalf, Gandalf 2. <laughs> Gandalf 2, Electric Boogaloo. Yeah. Classic. All right, so I haven't mentioned this, but Chapter 4 is considered by many runners to be by far the worst chapter of this game in terms of the luck involved. It's described as RNG heck. We got the R in gutter. We had a lot of bad stuff. And we made it through, so we did a good job. <laughs> It's, uh, I actually don't think chapter four is the worst one. I think some of the later chapters are much worse, but it's still nice to get through here relatively unscathed. So we can continue on to the hope section. So hope is a bit unique in his like mechanics. He actually runs a 93% of the speed of every other character in the game. <laughs> so any part where you have hope by default, and you can change your party orders or you change your leader. You want to do it because you run slow. Funnily enough, the next time the game gives you hope lead is that the, literally the biggest running segment of the whole game. <laughs> but it's also where you get the ability to change your battle team. Yeah, you get it a bit before, but yeah. Oh, yeah. I was about to call it the calm lands. <laughs> <laughs> That's you, tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You can, uh, he becomes your lead like once you enter the... Um, once you enter Pulse, essentially, I forgot the actual area. I'm blanking. Mm -hmm. Oh, you don't remember its name. Hmm. But it's like, it's essentially Calm Land. We can call it a Calm is, Land. Is it the Rock of Light step? Yes, yeah. that was it. Okay. All right, so we're going to do some menuing here, get all set up. And we have a lot of just like dodging here, so good time for announcements again, if there are any. We have a few an uh, announcements here and a, and a couple of donations. It uh, looks like that $5 chain is starting to get going. We have $5 from Binu. It says, Yamcha's fate is set. But please, <laughs> keep the train going. We also have $5 from uh, Mizukibra. Mizukabara, sorry. Uh, five buck train, you are on, Sharky. Let's go. Um, and we have a $25 donation from Anonymous and a $10 donation from Anonymous. I uh, want to remind everybody that uh, all those small donations also go towards a great cause, including getting you entered in to win some of our fabulous prizes. 
uh, in between now and until the end of Mario and Luigi Paper Jam. Uh, if you donate a minimum of $5, you're not only entered to end a Final Fantasy 13 Steam Key, you're entered to win a Final Fantasy 13 2 Steam Key, and a Lightning Return Steam Key, and a Yi 7 Steam Key, along with some Lightning and Fang Perlers. So if that, uh, if that donation train's not enough as of, of an incentive for you to donate, maybe some prizes will sweeten the deal for you. All, those, all that stuff for just a $5 donation, that's incredible. <laughs> Thank you so much, everyone that donated. Sorry, I was focused on that dodge. <laughs> so those dogs right there, the green ones, they're called Vextrons. They're kind of funny because they can be dangerous, but the trick to dodging their swipes is you literally just run in a straight line. <laughs> yeah, that sounds easy, but the problem is when they come at you at an angle. If you go a little bit to the right, they can catch you. If you go like straight or to the left when they swipe at you, they'll never get you. It's funny because those dodges a lot of people struggle with at some point, and I just lab that out a bit. It's like, oh, you can literally just run straight, and it works. <laughs> also, we are going to have a little bit of camera manipulation, manipulation here. You can see that Vextron walking over there to the right on that green part. Once it gets to the green part of the road, we're going to camera trick, and I'll make the next dodge really free. He won't see me until the very end. So this is like a nice... Um, example of cycling correctly it's not like just looking away or not looking away it's a combo we look until he gets a certain part where we want him to be at and then we look away so we control their movements really well here this is actually a dodge i filled for the first time practicing before <laughs> rpg with a break you know you can do either. You can camera trick here. You can not camera trick here. I did some combo of both, and I forget what happened. I think one of the dogs just didn't make room on the left. I, I think it like went to the middle, then took a turn right into you as you were passing. It was really, really odd. Yeah. I don't know what happened, but it wasn't my fault. No. <laughs> it never is. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And I have found when you camera trick it, usually they react to you when you've already passed the battle zone. <laughs> yeah. My fear is if you camera trick the whole way, sometimes they don't move fast enough and you can run into like the back of one. I think I've had that happen to you before. And I think once I got caught not camera tricking by one turning around and chasing me and it caught me like right outside the battle zone. <laughs> I think I've totally failed like, I've failed that dodge a total of three times now. All right, so here we got a two bubble fight, which has got to beat up some dogs. We'll be going for those stagger so on skips wherever we can here. Uh, we actually get a cute little mechanic here called the Life Siphon Rack, where I'm going to shift right there. And that actually ate Lightning's ATB because she hadn't fired her shot yet. Um, messed up a little there. I should have done three. That's fine. You can do this. This does look like it gets scary, but assuming you play the fight properly, you should never die. I was really under damage there. That was strange. And at this point in the game, it's blocking you f those little uh, laser bars were blocking you from proceeding until he actually defeated them. Ooh. I didn't see that coming. Neither did Hope. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we have a couple of um, fights that we have to do in order to just proceed uh, through the area. That was the first one. Um, the second one's a behemoth with lightning? Oh, no, you got the four crawlers here. Oh, yeah, the four crawler fight. And then the last one, I think, is the behemoth. Yeah. There's also, like, optional areas of, like, loot that we can... Uh, get by deviating enemies and unlocking the areas, but yeah, we won't be doing We that. don't need any of those chests. Yeah. I don't even know what they have. Same. That's how I know I don't need them. I don't know what they are. <laughs> <laughs> so here, if you get the the preemptive on them, um, you can kill them with just one fire and the two blitzes. But because we didn't stagger them right away, it took two. So just a yeah. little bit slower, but ultimately I'd not worth the retry because of how long the retry would take yeah, anyway. I, I snuck up on them, but you can't preempt an enemy if you're not in their battle zone yet. And technically, I wasn't in their battle zone yet, so okay. that's why I failed. But because of the preempt animation, like Hope goes through hitting everything with his boomerang. It's not even necessarily faster, or it's very slightly faster to get the preempt. So I never worry too much about getting it. It's just if it happens, it happens. All right, so right here, this behemoth's like damage variance can be different. What you need to look for here is Hope's HP. If he gets on 158 or lower, then you have to um, heal. Luckily, we, he rolled low, so we did not have to heal. And I can just keep hitting. We get a slightly faster fight that way. Also looks like you staggered on the second attack, so <laughs> you didn't get it off. Yeah. Uh, it's something you like, don't necessarily want to trust. Right. We, oh, I actually started a fourth attack. I lost some time on that. Oh. Oh. Easy peasy. 
I meant to shift on our bird attack so she would start our next string right away. Because the fourth one is a very long animation where she does like a back flip and a gunshot and she puts distance between herself and the enemy. And not something I want considering all the other hits are with her swords so she wants to be close. But uh, yeah, that's lightning for you. She uses her gun at the worst possible time. <laughs> with the exception of one fight where it's awesome. We will definitely point that out when we get there. Also, this is like the last super dangerous random fight, so like small group enemy. Yeah, they can just do a uh, ton of damage don't like if that. they all like to, yeah. Right, I'll kill you. There's still two of you? And you're healthy? Come on. Alicia Blitz. How are you oh, alive? Now, <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't very fast. No. <laughs> no. Oh, was that for this all? Yes, yeah. it was. Why am I going to use that? Uh, PC one. I can't. Have to oh. <laughs> <laughs> it would be the standard place to use yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> so um, there's like you can get bonus routes throughout the run. We've gotten two so far, two four dissolves, and my second four dissolve that I would no one will use if I got a second bonus at this point would go towards PC1. But that's one of the blindfold incentives that I do not want to do that. <laughs> it'd probably be a lot easier to do it, but it's not something I've practiced at all. So, And it's a lot, since it's easier, it probably wouldn't be as interesting to watch. So we're going to have to find a different use. The traditional one would be bar two, but I don't like that fight personally with four is all. So I'll have to come up with something. Let me think. Mm -hmm. Probably gonna have to be bar two. There's other potential uses like Hecaton, but it's less work. And it also is like a strat that I haven't practiced in a while. So there isn't a Sid for this whole fight, is there? No, it's counterintuitive because sad you want to avoid hitting the damage threshold. All oh, right, right. So like, it sounds like it'd be good, but you'll probably just get Metamorphosis. Okay. All right, so coming up, we have another fight with a Behemoth, but this time we're gonna have Lightning Gleed. This fight's really cool, and it really demonstrates the ability, like the power of having the ability to control your characters. Because the best time for the fight before is like a 30, but generally it's like a 39. This one of Queen Execution and avoiding bad luck is like a 30 with uh, Lightning Weed. But also, if it goes wrong, it can get really dangerous because then we have very little chain duration. So what I want to avoid here is getting interrupted before I get the second Aqua Strike, and I want to avoid Hope's ATB getting frozen, which I don't think it did. It should be fine. It actually did. Maybe Wait. it did, yeah. Oh my god. Okay, I'll do this. Should be fine from here, but that's not how you want it to go. <laughs> the splash sound is so funny. Aqua Strike. <laughs> yeah. Okay, you can buffered that last one and yeah. got the kill. We haven't mentioned combo buffering yet, but we did mention uh, Commando is kind of like the damage ability and Ravager is kind of, or damage roll, and Ravager is like the chaining roll. So we also have weaknesses to consider. Generally speaking, Ravager stuff does half the damage of Commando stuff, but you can have like spells with elements, for example, and uh, having an elemental weakness or hitting elemental weakness does double damage. So already doing Aqua Strikes doing, versus doing attacks there is better because not only are you doing the same damage, essentially, but you're also building chain while you're doing it. But we can take that a step further because the damage isn't tied to the ability, it's tied to the role you're in. So as like an Aqua Strike is coming out, for example, I can shift into Commando, and then you get the Commando damage boost, which is compared to Ravager, a two times boost. So that Aqua Strike, instead of doing the base like physical of one times, it's four times. You get the double from the elemental weakness, and then you get the double from the calm uh, boost. I have more Fortress than these Septisols. <laughs> this is so weird. <laughs> That's not something you ever see or want to see. No. I'd oh. rather see a bonus Decept or Aegisol at this yeah. point, honestly. <laughs> bonus Decept is the most valuable one nowadays because it lets you do a fight with a preempt instead of uh, manually without. It's a much better fight and it's a lot faster. Uh, that's why the 2D Sept route was not something we really ever want to do because that fight stinks without a decept. But the idea behind it is it's you lose time if you don't get a bonus decept assault, but it's not much. And if you do get one, you save a lot. So it's just mathematically kind of worth it if you want to go for it. 
And since it's still possible that with only two, it's marathon safe. Yeah. If you get really unlucky, you can die in that fight. But I mean, if you die, you just retry. It's right. not that in the world. The only thing inherently safer about having more desips is if you had one more, if I accidentally burn one somewhere, I'd still be okay. Right. Uh, but just don't make mistakes. How hard can it be? Just play perfectly. Yeah. So this is a fight where... Did she miss? She, she missed. missed. She eats absolutely whiffed. Oh my god, <laughs> lightning. Okay, whatever. Those aren't even that bad to miss. I think. <laughs> she missed two. I could, I'm worried about duration. Okay, we should be fine now. Routing in real time. Yeah. <laughs> like, you normally have much more stagger duration here. You uh, just need to get to what? 370? I think? No, 421. Or 420, okay. 425 is what I look for. Oh, that's for. the decept one that I usually end up doing. 370 is more, actually. Is it? Yeah, I go for 490 there. The hmm. 370 I'm definitely sure. wouldn't work. I'm, I'm misremembering <laughs> then. <laughs> that's fine. This fight without summon takes like a minute. With summon, it's considerably faster. Adds a lot safer as well. Until next time. The downside of this is I burned my summon here. So unless I use an Aether Soul for the upcoming fight, I can no longer summon there. And I don't want to use an Aether Soul because there's somewhere I can save more time with it. So we will not be doing that. Uh, anybody want to explain our upcoming fight? Oops, uh, wrong one. Anybody want to give us some <laughs> the proto for... Uh, Proto Rundown, the Bulbasaur yeah. Rundown. Oh yeah, Bulbasaur, he's our good friend. Um, so he um, will do a, it's called an exo-proofing, where he will become immune to a specific um, uh, element. He can choose either fire, water, um, a, a lightning, or um, a ice. Ice, yeah, yeah. thank you. <laughs> um, I learned that today. <laughs> <laughs> The four elements. <laughs> um, <laughs> so if you use the opposite, if you use that element, it's not good. If you use the opposite, so for ice, fire, for and so on, uh, water and lightning are opposites. I feel like I'm in FF10 right now. <laughs> um, uh, but if you use the opposite, you'll be able to build chain and do a lot of damage to them, um, potentially. Depending on which exo he chooses, the fight can either be faster or slow, or you have, or really slow. Um, lightning and water are the best because Lightning has the Spark Strike and the Aqua Strike because she doesn't have a Flame Strike or an Ice Strike at this point. Um, the other two, Fire and Ice, are fat if he chooses it. That was scary. My potion was slightly okay. early. Hey, look at uh, Fire. Exo Fire. Yeah, uh, I got the worst one perfect. in the marathon. Who would have guessed? <laughs> so this one is the one that you do not have anything to deal with, really. So you have to shift into a Commando Medic if you're going to... Um, uh, stagger so that way you don't build the chain enough to uh to stagger him in it because he will not change once he's staggered if he chooses the bad one so now we just have to wait it out um and not stagger him and hope that well the next one is going to be better because that's the worst one and he can't use it again i don't think no I um shouldn't be able to yeah so the next one will be better we kind of hope it's going to be ice or uh, not ice um uh, <laughs> water or lightning just so that way we can at least get a slightly faster second half Stop being a jerk yeah he's really bullying uh, i think he's <laughs> oh, committed at this oh, point well there's lightning turning yeah. right there oh and water okay okay this fine. one is perfect yeah um at this point <laughs> if you had done that first it'd been in, uh, quite a bit yeah. better that fire probably lost like 20 25 seconds on the fight yeah. not in the world but not something you like when you're going for pv attempts right of course so now we can stun lock him by attacking between uh, hopes attacks and then um uh, uh atb refreshing after uh his attacks go off and he's gonna it looks like he's going to die like at 25% or 30% stagger at this point. It's, he has yeah. a lot of duration <laughs> because of the fire. Yeah, we already um, had a lot of extra damage from just like stalling and hitting him with attacks. So. Yeah. Also, the reason uh, I'm shifting here constantly, it doesn't actually give me a refresh except with specific ones. But it stops lightning's backflip, and okay. backflips are slow. Just your kill thunder, yep. Okay. All right. So. Yeah. A good fight there is like 144, so we lost like 30 seconds, but... But it was the literal worst thing you could have done. Oh, yeah. it could have been fire ice. Uh, yeah. yeah, you know, yeah. you're right. Yeah. Look at the positives. It could always be worse. <laughs> fire ice, fire ice. <laughs> <laughs> Although I don't think you'd ever make it there. No, he uh, cycles through, so he can't repeat elements. Oh, okay. 
don't think I've ever gotten to the third one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You never I want either, to. I either die. <laughs> yeah, so you either do it right or you don't live to tell the tale. Exactly. On PS3, if you want to route, like, the sa if you want to play the fight safer, but you don't want to use Neeper Soul, you can actually get to the third one because you, Ice Kill on PS3 is really dangerous. And then you can get Ice Fire if you decide to stall Ice. And then you have to stall again. Mm. It loses you, like, almost a minute. Um, the reason, I haven't touched on platform differences all that much because it's not all that relevant, but basically PS3 is the hard mode. Um, it runs at 30 FPS, that changes some things, but the biggest thing is your stagger duration is generally lower. Uh, so that fight becomes a lot tighter. A lot, like that, tight with, that fight with just Exo Ice is pretty close. On PC, you have some cushion. On PS3, you have no cushion. If you mess up, you're not winning anymore without summon, which we do not have if we're saving the Eper Soul. All right, anyway, this is some of the Waterscape. This is the Zasma Neal section. And this is one of the most chill sections of the run. We don't fight anything until the boss. And it's just a lot of dodging with some menuing thrown in between. So, um, good time for announcements. Oh, you're speaking my language, friend. <laughs> <laughs> we have a $5 donation from Anonymous. It says, this time of the year again, take care of each other and don't forget to hydrate. We have a $25 donation from Amadeus1005 with no comment, but thank you very much for that kind donation. And we have a $100 donation from Zatare. It says, I've been supporting RPG Limit Break for many years, and I'm happy to continue supporting this marathon for NAMI. Mental health is such an important thing for all of us to take care of. Please don't hesitate to reach out to someone. You are loved. Thank you so much for your donations. All right, so here we're going to pick up a weapon. It's called the Belladonna Wand. In theory, this weapon's really useful because what it does is it gives Vanille's debuffs a higher chance to land, supposedly. <laughs> and in practice, we're not, that's not necessarily so true, but it's supposed to help with that. But we will not be keeping it, and so we'll be selling it because it gives us like 10,000 leaves or 10,000 gil or something. Great. It's a lot of money. That's generally our use for the weapons we pick up. It's like, ooh, this is a nice weapon. All right, we're selling that. And we're going to go to the left here, a slight little de- Ooh! Ah, I wasn't going to make it. No. So we're going to take a slight little detour after these guys. Uh, we retry them um, to get another Doctor's Code. So we already have one, but we, we want a second one because they, uh, they get dismantled into very useful items that we kind of need um, if you upgrade it to uh, the max level it can get to. You get one elixir, um, an Aegisol and a Fortisol yes. from each of them. And an Aethersol. And an Aethersol? Oh, wow. Okay. That's even better than I thought. <laughs> um, <laughs> so all those um, uh, shrouds are routed into it, and the elixirs are both maybe not 100% required. Do you, do you need one for Bart 2 100% of the time? Or? Bart 2, yes, unless you want to do some completely different strats. Or if you can do elixirless. So, okay. so it just loses you time. It's like it takes over 30 seconds to have an elixir. Right. So it okay. does make the fights a lot Safer, yes, 100%. <laughs> safer and faster. So that slight little detour is a hundred percent worth it to get the second elixir because that's the only two you can get in the game is from. It's uh, worth it for the Fortisol and Aegisol alone, honestly. Yeah. Uh, elixir. Well, I need one elixir minimum. Right. Uh, it's super efficient. Also, Doctor's Code is a very good item even at this point in the game. So um, what the item does is it doubles the effect of your potions. Your potions is actually heal for 150, which doesn't sound like much. But early game when we're at like 250 HP, 300 HP, that's actually a ton. That's like over 50% of our health bar. That's why we haven't really been using Medic at all for so far. But uh, when you pump out Doctor's Code, it's 300. It's like chapter 3, 4, that's like our whole health bar. And later on, it's a good significant portion of it. Uh, yeah, there was oh, no way. They, yeah, they... That they, was a pretty good block. Yeah, they, they gave me no gap there. I shouldn't have even tried. I thought maybe I can squeeze through. You interrupted their dancing. They, right? they they got, yeah, they got really mad at you for... They interrupted my walking. I think they're the villains here. <laughs> These gremlins are deceptive. They seem like they're easy to dodge because they're slow and they look small, but they have a few mungus hitboxes. They're, they're really thick. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure they coordinate with each other where they're going to block you. <laughs> They have a plan of attack when you show up. The dancing was a ruse. They were actually just the life planning. <laughs> that, those, those, well, that gremlin dodge is a camera manipulation. The free before is also camera manipulation. But even with those, sometimes it just doesn't line up well on the six gremlin dodge, like in that instance. All right. 
So I'm about to do a menu here, and we're going to be doing our first weapon upgrade of the run. We're going to upgrade Saz's guns, because now we can actually buy organics, and we can buy decent mechanicals, and we need bigger weapons now. So we're going to do our shop real quick. We're going to sell the Gladius that we got in Chapter 2, and the Belladonna one for 15600 Buy some more polymers, which we used in uh, Chapter 4. And we're going to buy Sturdy Bones, which are like the most efficient upgrade ingredient for organics. All right. And then we're going to do this part of the menu. The reason we're kind of like doing it like this, where we buy and then we set up our characters and then we upgrade, actually makes the prompt to upgrade pop up again instantly. It's a very small time save, but if you can throw in like a menu between your shops and your upgrades, it does save a little bit of time. Uh, here we're just going to get our stats and some important abilities before our next fight. Specifically for Saz, we're going to learn our first end spells, and Water and end Thunder. They are synergist spells, and what they do is they make your attacks hit with a certain element, um, depending on which spell you do. And those are the weaknesses of the enemies coming up, so it's very good. And upgrade. All right, find my wicked things. There they are. Nice. Where are my polymers? There they are. All right, good menu. So that just gave me like 70 more physical attack on Saz. We went from level 1 to 17. They go to star, but right before star is 25. And I think you end up like 110 strength or so more than what you start with. And those are curious through. The 17 is actually a bit of like a newer routing idea. We used to go to 19 and then for snow and lightning later, we're going to go to 18, but we used to go for 2021. 20, what 17 lets us do is it lets us skip like a chest that we is locked behind a fight. It's a pair of speaker defenders. It's a weapon for Saz and it sells for like 8,000 something. But by cutting a few weapon levels off of everyone, we can actually skip that fight and skip that chest, which is nice. It takes like 25 seconds, I believe. It's a fast fight, but it has animation tied to it and travel time. So that's a nice little time save that you kind of bleed a lot of throughout the fights where you have the weaker <laughs> weapons, but I still think it's very much worth it. But the biggest benefit, it makes the setup for Fortless Part 1 really easy, so you can always just skip a fort as well. As well. But we got so many bonuses, that's not relevant today. <laughs> right. I'll explain something about Synergist AI because I will have to focus during the fight. But uh, Synergist AI, when you're not controlling that character, it tends to buff the leader more than anyone else. But there are ways around that. If I make my leader a medic, it will instead of prioritize himself. Oh, that's a bad cycle. That was really close. The back left and back right gremlin were desynced with each other. So we're going to use a paradigm called Symbiosis. It's Synergist Medic, and like I said, Medic doesn't have much use. I will be doing some auto heals, but I can replace some potions, no problem. There's just no reason to burn extra potions if I don't need to. But the reason I'll be in Symbiosis is not because I want the Medic, it's because I want Saz's AI to focus on buffing him and not Vanille. So, yeah. I'll also be using my first Libra Scope here, which is, gives us Libra info on both every enemy we're fighting against. And that'll tell Saz what end spells he needs to do. Oop, my Leaper Scope's on the new slot because I got Phoenix Downs late. Alright, and now it's debuff time. I need to hit Deep Protect on these guys. I'll have six casts for Enki, his easier one. Later for Enno, I'll have three, and if I don't get it, I have to back it up. So that one's a bit worse. Two, three. Potion here. Stagger now. So far, so good. All right, so now we're going to do a full string of poisons here. Poison damage is really nice. It actually does a good amount, but also it hits twice. So we actually stun walk him with that. If he gets to move there, he'll do an attack called Bellow, which gives him a bunch of buffs, removes his debuff. So I'd have to do all my debuffing again. This will get deprotect again. And it's just not something you want to see. His attack timing is unfortunate, but I did get deep protect, so that's nice. All right, hit Saz here. Damn it. Uh, I have to unfreeze my ATB, that's why that's annoying. And I'll potion for safety as well. He'll probably hit me one more time. Oh, ah, I should have done two. I thought I had two queued. All right, well, from here we win. Just a little bit slow. Get the poison lock going again. Seashell for fun. <laughs> 
the other annoying thing that they can do, although it is back upable, is both target the same person from the beginning, which makes you have to throw potions a lot more frequently. Yeah. It's not too common, but it, it can happen. And it's depending on who it targets, it can be fine to very bad. Vanille target is fine because she's tankier and you can control her better than you can control Saz. Since you know, you're controlling her. Right. <laughs> uh, Saz's target is hard because he dies a lot easier and he gets interrupted more. That pattern is incredibly hard to play. And he's the one doing all the damage, so, yeah. you know. <laughs> also, I should point out that we're constantly getting ready animation cancels from Saz there where he'd do three attacks and we'd shift and then he'd do three more attacks instantly. The timing for those can be really tight on PC. And it's really important that we get those. If we miss a refresh, it's especially bad. But even if we don't miss a refresh but miss the ready animation cancel, that would give them an opportunity to like break out of interruption and do bellow, which uh, is a big problem because it removes their debuffs. Uh, luckily, we hit all our refreshes and ready animation cancels, so that was good. Yeah. Besides the little mistake of Vanille at the end, that was a very clean fight. All right, here you guys can see the challenge of cutscene skipping as I fail. <laughs> oh yeah. Every time. All right. So this chapter seven, we are now in Talon Poem. We talked very little about the story in the last like hour, <laughs> but this is where Hope lived or lives. His dad lives here, and we're going to go visit him. Uh, this is kind of like Lightning's way of trying to get him to not kill Snow, because she found out about Hope's, you know, desire of revenge. And his desire for revenge has a name. It's called Operation Nora, which is also the name of his mom. But it's also the name of Snow's, like, little rebel group. Totally unintentional. What a coincidence. All right. All right, here we see our first, well, not our first bike, but uh, bikes are jerks. We'll be decepting these guys a lot. They're very aggressive and they're very fast, except that guy. That guy's fine. I think the only other one we saw was when the Hope and Lightning, the previous section with them. Yeah. Like before we got to the Code yeah. of Flory and the Bulbasaur boss. All the ones we've seen so far we've decepted. There was also one in Chapter 3. Right. Funnily enough, that one you can actually do without the D-sub, but you have to take a slower path, and then you have the pre-watch runs in the tunnel anyway, which you want to D-sub, so there's no reason to do it. But if you were doing Shroudless, the bike dodge is very doable. I don't know if it's 100% consistent, but it's very consistent. It's actually kind of funny, because you give it the lightning treatment, where you keep it, you get it stuck turning. <laughs> <laughs> so you just like run around it, kind of? Yeah. <laughs> You run it around in a certain way, it's like it's hard to explain because I don't even know exactly how it works. <laughs> but you just run around it in a certain way where it's just like it never actually chases you, but it just like tracks you. And because it's stuck turning, it never chases you. All right. So right there, that is actually a false C. That's Carbunco is responsible for, like, I think, the food and water or like the energy of Palm Poem. But Palm C aren't inherently bad. They just have like their purpose. They got to serve. If they need help with that, that's when they make Lussy. Yes. So if they're in danger or if they, essentially, if they can't do their job for whatever reason. Yeah. Their prime directive is to like protect and serve their home. So if, that, if they, they can't ever intentionally hurt people or like hurt their home, that's why they need the Lussy. They're restricted in what they can do because of like the way they're programmed by their maker, who hasn't really been mentioned so far during the run and doesn't even get a name until later in the series. Uh, his name is Benavelza, but he created the Felsi. And a lot of like what happens in the story is because of the Felsi's desire to see their maker again. Like essentially, they miss dad, so they try to kill everyone. <laughs> Logical. It's a good synopsis. <laughs> dad, if you, dad, if you kill everyone, will you come back home? <laughs> you have so a huge sure. sacrifice ready. Yeah. <laughs> sure, son. After I get my milk and cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget the bread. <laughs> Story-wise, there's kind of like a rift between like where the makers are and where you are. And whenever someone dies, they kind of like go through that rift into the afterlife, so to speak. And so essentially, if enough people die at once, the rift will become big enough. And I don't forget if, if the maker's supposed to come back through it or if you're supposed to, if the Belsi want to go through that to see with the Belza, but that's the idea behind it. So... The Cocoon Felsi are trying to destroy Cocoon. So everyone at Cocoon will die at once, the rift will open big, and they can see Dad. 
Uh-oh, they're coming for you. Yeah, that was actually a little <laughs> scary. That one in yeah. the back was two parts of that, right? And those Flan have really long arms when they decide to use them, so they can catch you uh, when it doesn't look like they Yeah, will. it's weird because you can run through the arms a lot of the time, but sometimes they go super far as well. It's inconsistent yeah. with behavior. And ultimately, you have to wait for this elevator to come over to you anyway, so there's no harm in trying to lure them. You don't lose any time, really. Yeah. Technically, if you do a really fast dodge where you go in between, and you can then call the elevator and save like a second or something. It's not worth it. <laughs> I mean, if it was consistent, it would be, but oh, I, don't, yeah. I don't think it is. All right, so this is what we call Shiva Stadium. This is the first fight where you just start in our, like, just salt mode. <laughs> it's also the first fight where we have snowback since uh, Chapter 3. For those of you who have noticed, we haven't been using snow for a while. But uh, these fights, they look cool and all, but they're actually very simple to do. You literally just press buttons in a certain order that you put rattled ahead of time, and you win. Unless Snow Whips, which has happened. I was gonna say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in my last run before RPG Limit Break, he actually completely missed the second attack and I had to retry. And that's the worst one because the chain drops, I guess, the later one. Yeah. You, actually, you, oh, no. you run out of ability points. You have enough for like one spare. So yeah. Not necessarily, but second one is definitely a retry. Yeah. First one you can probably back up. I don't think the first one ever misses. Also, Ice Tracks. Is that kind of some kind of a C power? Iconic line right there from Hope. <laughs> okay, now we get the Snow and Hope section. And you might be thinking, Snow and Hope section? Wasn't Hope trying to kill Snow? Snope. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, terrible. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Feel free to take my headset at any point in time. Uh, okay. Ooh. Yeah. That was different. Well, at least we got past it. it that dodge doesn't seem too bad. Okay. What are they doing? They're being mean. That's what yeah. they're doing. Also, <laughs> there's the chest back there. It has a Fortisol. So if you did like a smaller Fortisol grind, this we used to do this before. We would grind less Fortisols, and then if we didn't get the bonus, we would get that chest. It takes like 35 seconds because you have to decept and cancel it and then. I believe DSEP again. I don't remember anymore. Oh no, you DSEP it once. You just had to cancel it. You had to cancel it on that dodge you just passed. I oh, can't. Okay. That he, was impossible. That was literally he was, impossible. He was on the wall, yeah. so you couldn't hug the wall. And you looked at the scary guy, so he charged right at yeah, you. Yeah, there was no way I could do that with that yeah. pattern. I guess I just had to wait and wait for him to get out of the way. Oh. What? <laughs> Excuse me? So before, when I was practicing, I was having trouble with this dodge, and I realized if I stared at the guy, he'll never catch you in that scenario. Apparently, I was wrong. Got time for some quick donations? <laughs> sure, while well, I figure this out. <laughs> I have a $10.54 donation from Alec47. It says, hello from the tech station. I may not hang out with the Final Fantasy XIII community anymore, really, but I still love the run and appreciate those who um, those who run one of the two most difficult Final Fantasy games to speed run. Is this some kind of Lassie power that allows <laughs> you to be so good at all the manipulations in the fights? Yes, anyway, here in the uh, here in the desert, all this dryness is dry, so I'm going to hydrate and settle back in. Good luck on the rest of the run. Yeah, fun fact, once Zero has done this run, he will turn into a crystal live on stream. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on, man. Don't get people's hopes up. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for the donation. Hello to the tech station. <laughs> Fabulous people at that tech station. Also, guys, welcome to the Feng section of the run. We haven't even talked about who Feng is because this is the first time we get to play against her. She's also LOC. She's friends with Vanille, and they're from the same place. And... That's all I'm going to mention right now, because that is the end of the thing section. <laughs> Sick. <laughs> so funny thing about that dodge I just failed three times in a row. <laughs> I was struggling with that back home. And a while back, I found out that if I'm not looking at that guy, he won't catch you. So I was doing that during my runs, and he started catching me. So I'm like, okay, let's try to find something different. And I tried staring at him, and that worked. So today, during my run, I tried staring at him, and then now it didn't work. So I tried looking away from him, and it worked. <laughs> and now I don't know what to make of life anymore. <laughs> Things were so simple before that dodge. My guess is Square's been patching the game in between my <laughs> runs. <laughs> patching the game. Just that dodge section. I can't, can you guys offer me a different explanation? I got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, that totally checks out. It's Windows. 
<laughs> we'll go with oh, that. Oh, yeah, Linux. <laughs> that was one of my theories. But uh, MMM, a different runner, runs on Windows. And he tried, he had the same issue. He tried the looking at him setup, but it worked for them. Hmm. So uh, I don't know anymore. <laughs> Nothing makes sense. <laughs> This game can be very weird in terms of like version and platform differences, or just even run to run differences, apparently. Maybe it's a resolution difference. That would make no sense, but who knows? CPU difference. Yeah. <laughs> Full screen versus window difference. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Yeah, you never know. Yeah. That would be hilarious, honestly. What if it was full screen window? <laughs> yeah, if it was full screen window, that's the best explanation I got. My PC at home is very similar to the PCs here. A little bit different, but very similar. Right. If you don't do that section properly, it's incredibly hard. Those aerials are fast, and they chase you down. What if you just do a little loop de loop and camera trick? They don't get near you. Right. So this is another just kind of like running section. But uh, essentially, Snow is trying to get Hope home. We got Cell Predator during the whole Shiva Stadium event. Essentially, we got ambushed by soldiers, and Snow told Lightning and uh, Fang to run, and he and Hope kind of like just, you know, took care of it, scooted away on their Shiva motorcycle. <laughs> In case you guys didn't know, the Eidolons, which are like the summons in this game, they're also Transformers. So, if you like Transformers, I can recommend FF13. We've also been picking up quite a few chests as we've been running through here. They're all just like, mostly, ex there's been two accessories, this is some components, and there's going to be a weapon over here. To us, it's all just money. We're not going to be using any of it, we're just going to sell it in the next shop, which is coming very soon. Right after we dodge the motorcycles. Yeah. Sadly, motorcycles are hard to dodge. They're very fast, who would have guessed? They're also, like, they're very aggressive. So we do have to de up twice here. I wish there was a way to not do it twice, but it's just not feasible at all to dodge these guys without uh, de -supping. This is actually one of the most brutal parts of rounding Shroudless, which is a category where you just can't use your shrouds for anything, including selling, which I don't like. Uh, you, these fights are so, or like these dodges are so inconsistent. You can try to dodge them, but a lot of the time you just have to concede and fight them. And it's funny because the difference between getting a bunch of them and not getting them is like at least five minutes. So yeah, chapter seven is a cool chapter in Shroudless. And the one run I finished, I actually did get a lot of the dodges, and that's why it's only one. Run, it's the only run I finished. I didn't want to run against that. <laughs> That part's done, and we're going to do a menu here before we get into our next fight. Going to upgrade some more weapons here. Yeah, we finally upgrade Snow and Lightning. Yeah. Oh, one more accessory to sell. All right, and now we sell all our like random components we picked up throughout the run so far. Well, not all. I'm going to keep that. I'm going to keep that too, actually. Oh, yeah. Get these incentive chips. Oh, I could sell these two since I have a ceramic armor. All right, that's all I have to do here. My money's good. I have 8730 still. All right, so once again, we'll throw in the menu in between to save some frames. Set up our dual castings for the fight coming up and get some Snow Crystarium. He actually gets a good amount of stats off this. And we get Adrenaline. Adrenaline's a very important passive ability, especially when Snow's a commando. If he's in green HP, he'll do 20% more damage now which uh, can add up to quite a lot. And then upgrade our weapons. We'll also be doing our first uh, Doctor's Code upgrade and Dismantle here. We haven't really talked about Dismantling, but uh, essentially you can sacrifice one of your uh, like weapons or accessories and break it up into components. Uh, the components aren't necessarily what you put in, it's just set based off the item and D Sharper explained earlier what we get off the Doctor so for the Soul Angels, Eve, Soul, and Elixir. The reason we do, well, I could have actually skipped this, but I'm used to doing it anyway. Uh, the reason we do this is because we want a Fort Soul for Sky Tank. And assuming we didn't get any bonuses, we wouldn't have one here. I did get some bonuses, but I'm still used to menuing this way, so I'm doing it regardless. It cleans up the menus for later, keep yeah. them consistent. Exactly. 
So this is Ushi 1. It's um, one of the most RNG fights in the run. It shouldn't, unless you're incredibly unlucky, you shouldn't ever die to it. But there is quite a bit of an RNG involved in how the fight goes. So the big first thing is the timing on the Steel Hammer attack. I want to summon through it. Like that. Nice, barely got it. So that was good. And the other thing is how many Shiva sisters he hits here, which is also looking good. I have good positioning, everyone's separated. So this is looking like a very nice fight. Alright, I need him to do overdrive now. It's kind of taking his time. Alright, keep going for the sister. I could do three here probably. Alright, and here, this is kind of cool spells. We can combo for two spells because they're delayed. So, we get double the combo for you get double damage on two spells instead of one, like you would get with physical attacks. That's a big part of why we do spells there. Even though it still has much better physical attack. You get the faster animation, and you get the combo for two instead of one, so you end up with very similar damage either way. Oh, my sister left really early, actually. Maybe the other one got hit by the tail or something. Finish him, Hoop! I don't think he finishes, but one attack should do it. Uh, the reason I was shifting there every string, despite like me not refreshing, when Snow finishes his string, he does a jump back, and the ships were always just to avoid the jump back and cancels it. So, uh, we get to welcome back Feng here. Feng has been present in the story so far. We just haven't gotten to play as her until now. Uh, she's looking for Vanille. That's, like, her goal right now. Her and Vanille are extremely close. They're family, and, like, they're just trying to stick together. We haven't really been told too much about this yet, but they are also pulse spell C. And, like, a lot of the events that, like, happened are kind of triggered by them. They weren't necessarily, like, their fault because it was manipulated by other fell C. But a lot of what happens is uh, tied to their actions. Uh, since their pulse spell seed, their like focus is actually to destroy Cocoon. Which, funnily enough, is the same as our focus as Cocoon fell seed because of the whole maker thing we explained earlier. Yeah. Feng's a cool character. Um, before, I think, 2015, I could be wrong on the timeline. We used to actually use Feng a lot more. Back then, the route, well, you could call it the Feng route. Where she was used a lot through like the early mid game, or I'm sorry, the mid late game. Because she starts off with good stats by default, and she has debuffs, she has a lot of useful stuff going for her, and eventually got transitioned to Snow. Snow's two biggest assets are he has really good animation times, but also um, he has Ravager right away. Things Ravager is unlocked very late, and it's a secondary role. We haven't gotten any of those yet, but uh, secondary roles cost a lot to develop. And that uh, was one of the things that Snow helped a lot with. He gets his Ravager instantly. Also, if anyone's interested, Mr. Zwanzik, another community member, made a fantastic YouTube video. It's like an hour and 20 minutes long about the history of Final Fantasy XIII speedruns, and I highly recommend it. Not just because I'm in the end of it. <laughs> <laughs> Shameless plug. Yeah. But it has been very fantastically done, and it'll explain all the stuff and all the history behind it much better than I ever can, so I highly recommend watching it. It's very good. If you go to 5 minutes and 24 seconds, you'll see a certain streamer. So. No, can't be me. <laughs> I'm in like an hour 10. I'm at the end. So he does know! <laughs> this fight is the one why we didn't want to develop hope, because we want him to die in two attacks versus three. Yeah. I believe the two triggers for that fight are getting the boss in 90%. I could be wrong in percentage, but either way, it's low. Or getting Hope killed. And we're all about getting Hope killed here. <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> <laughs> no Hope allowed. No. Sure. Uh, now it's fine. Welcome back, everybody. Once again, my name is Hebbinks. Thank you all so much for your patience while we work through those situations to bring you the stream back. I am going to go ahead and waste no time. Let's toss this back over to Zero Leap for some more Final Fantasy 13. All right. Welcome back, everyone. Um, we can start. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> Starting the run over. Let's go. <laughs> you guys missed it, but we actually got world record, and this is a new run. <laughs> So before the uh, technical difficulties, um, we had a fight where we had to let Hope die or do 10% of the boss's health. Um, so we just let Hope die because it's much faster than doing the damage with only him. 
Um, and then we had a second phase of the fight where we get access to uh, three more party members, um, Fang, um, uh, well, two more party members plus Hope, Fang and Lightning, and now we're doing a menu to set up for the fights to make it actually possible to do it quickly. Um, we're just doing a bit of a Crystarium, um, so we're uh, upgrading our, our party <laughs> members um, uh, and changing their equipment over to uh, make it so that way this fight is a little bit uh, faster. And by a little bit, I mean a lot of it. Yeah, when you initially get into this fight, you don't have control over what paradigms you have, and you're not set up. So the way you do it is you actually just get into the fight and then retry, and then the game lets you customize your stuff afterwards. So, and then you set up. So this is Ushu 2. You've already fought Ushu 1 and Ushu 1.5. That was the one where Hope died. There will also be Ushu 3 and Ushu 4 and Ushu 5 later. <laughs> <laughs> they have different names then, though. <laughs> That's what I call him, though. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this fight's pretty straightforward. It's very much just like stagger and then, you know, kill him. There's only one debuff we can hit. That was... What? That was not a refresh, apparently. Okay. Well, we'll improvise a bit. That was weird. Now we're trying to kind of juggle the boss with uh, attacks and uh, the... Thunder, Thunder is that uh, lightning got in the previous menu, right? Yeah, we just got those up. Um, uh, we're trying to build a chain up to 999 um, uh, just to do extra damage with the commandos. Um, and then light. we'll switch over lightning to uh, the commando also. I'm not going to lie, I've completely scuffed this. <laughs> Are you going to get the... I think so. Okay. Yeah, hey, you got the... Hey, we did it. All right. If you miss that, you miss like 40,000 damage. Yeah, it's like a full strength warp. So there's an attack we got fairly recently called Smite. And what it does is essentially right before Stagger runs out, if the enemy's launched, you can knock him down to the ground. It does a lot of damage, especially for this part of the game. So uh, we want to time it so Feng doesn't not only does her Smite, but she doesn't whiff it. Because if he's kind of low, she can just miss it completely. All right, nice. Got the ready animation cancel. That's a really easy refresh to miss. So we should be good from here. This part's like fairly scripted. Yeah, he's staggered. He's not going to get any attacks off, really. He shouldn't, at least. Yeah, he shouldn't. <laughs> if he does, something has gone horribly wrong. Usually it's Fang's fault for like missing three launches in a row or something like that. Yeah. Which can happen. Each one's a 50% chance, so 12.5% chance. But even then, you keep interruption pretty well. It generally isn't too much of an issue. We love 12.5% chances. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my damage is a little bit low, but it's okay. You got so much duration, it's definitely going to die. Just Yeah, the question's when. Slower. Oh, come yeah. on. <laughs> right, Yay! right now, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> All right, not bad. 227. Crab thing down. Yeah. That's actually one of the longest fights in the run, by the way. And it's the first two stagger fight also. Yes, it is. Yeah. We tried to kill most things in one stagger, but some fights you just do not have the damage, that being one of them. Luckily, it's pretty lenient because it's two stagger. Even if you miss a smite, for example, in the first phase, it's not too tight. Yeah. Anyway, we finally get to Hope's house. You'd think it'd be a time of peace and relaxation. Finally, we're home. No, this is the worst part of the run. <laughs> <laughs> the reason being is this fight right here. This is called Hope's House 1, and it's horrible, and everybody hates it. So, stri pretty straightforward idea. You summon right away, and you Blitz for Duration. Then we do Thundaras, and we just want to chain these guys up, and then Odin should kill them after some Thunderballs. The problem is, you can get hit, you can get interrupted, you can run out of Duration on, on everything. Odin can do Kiragas, there's just so much can go wrong. Like, that Kiraga right there, not something we want. Alright, I should have Duration on the left three, I might not have du Duration on the far right one. And also, Odin is turning constantly, that does not make things better. So this might be bad. Let's do it. Uh, I probably don't have duration on this guy. Yeah. Nope. Yeah. So yeah, cool fight. That actually would have worked if we didn't get the turn animation. It's not something we have any control over. It's just the game decides that between every thunderfall, even though we're targeting the same enemy every time, apparently he's out of our vision. So we gotta well turn done. left, right, left, right. He's going up, down. We're going left, right. It makes no sense. Mm -hmm. Luckily, only one lived, so the Lightning and Fang will both target yeah. the same person, and it'll die pretty quickly. Yeah, and we're already in aggression, which makes the backup a little bit faster. It's like a 40-second fight. It's 48. Okay, that was pretty slow. 
Just like my last two runs where I did this fight. <laughs> Lovely fight. A good fight there is like 20 seconds for reference. A really good one's like 20, a good one's like 25. Uh, an average one's like 30. So 48's definitely on the lower end. But at least from here it's easier. This fight is pretty straightforward, just blitz to win. Actually, I'm gonna do ruins because my blitzes aren't gonna hit. Not too bad. Also, we're, this is a part of the run where we start looking at drops more. Soldiers can drop, like, money, essentially. You never actually get money in this game. That's not something you mentioned. But, like, nothing drops money directly. Instead, you get stuff that you can sell. Uh, specifically, soldiers, they drop something called incentive chips and credit chips. And those are essentially money. You, they're only used for selling. They don't give you, like, anything for our, towards upgrades. It's just money. And uh, we... We need to get drops here, essentially, so we can afford our later menus. Hopefully we get some more later, because I don't think we got anything there. I might have been too busy complaining to notice. <laughs> I didn't <laughs> see anything. Yeah. Okay, so I, I can blame the game then. It wasn't my <laughs> fault. <laughs> All right. So this is a really cool fight here. We're going to fight a gigantic sky tank. And this is the fight where lightning is useful. She this actually, is it. She actually pulls out the gun blade for the first time. Yeah, we actually use the gun part of the gun blade. And look at that, like, look how fast that is and how much damage it does. It's incredibly good. The funny thing is, if you try to auto battle, it will only give you ruins. The game does not want you to know about the secret technology <laughs> of attacks. All right, that's a bit unlucky. We're getting missile barrage. That is a bad RNG thing to happen in this fight. No. I actually stopped it nice. <laughs> he tried to do three missile barrages. That's kind of a jerk move. All right, that's well, still fine. So you might notice I'm rebuilding ATB as I do my attacks. That's because of an ability we just got in that last Crystal menu called Fight Fault Siphon. What it does is when enemies debuff, you get ATB back when you hit them. And you might not see any debuffs on Sky Tank, but there actually is one. So when Odin hits something, we mentioned it earlier, he provokes it, so only targets Odin. And that's considered a debuff. And that makes Fault Siphon really good in this fight. Alright, nice. We push the damage. Alright, can, you can move away now. Thank you. <laughs> so once we kill all the parts, we're just waiting for this phase. You need to push damage a little bit. But once you get it, you wait until the cannon opens up. And then you do one String Relentless. Stagger, go into Aggression. By the way, it's timed out. He shouldn't launch anyone here. Nice. I do one attack, I think, because I think I need a bit more damage. I like doing that because then thing gets all our ruins out. And should kill him. And we did it. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Good fight. And we didn't even have a good pattern there, so that was pretty impressive. All right. And chapter seven is done. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Only took us, like, what, an hour? <laughs> Longest chapter seven in FF13 history. <laughs> All right, so this is chapter eight. This is when we go to the amusement park. Uh, we're back to Saz and Vanille again. This is where you get a lot more background on why Saz and Vanille are involved in this at all. So a uh, little bit of story background. Saz actually has a son called Dodge, and he was turned into a Lassie by a... Um, by a fallacy somewhere before like the game's prologue, the 13 days leading up to the game. There's a given out. The game essentially gives you piece by piece what happens in the 13 days leading up to where you start. Uh, that part's revealed right about now. And the reason that actually happened was because of Vanille and Feng. Vanille and Feng were attacking that uh, fallacy because of their focus as Pulse fallacy, or Pulse, let's see. This gets confusing after a while, even for me. Yeah. <laughs> And that, that FLC made Dodge, Sad's son, uh, let's see, to help defend it, which he can't do, he's just a kid. But then his focus is actually to find Lassi. So he'll show up here. We won't get to see it because we're skipping cutscenes. And then he'll find Sad's and Vanille, and then he'll turn into Crystal. And it's all very sad. And this is actually a very sad chapter. You do get some really good uh, lines, though, from the characters, like when you're running around. True. There's a good one coming up fairly soon. Oh, yeah. And we got English voices, so we can listen to them. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to do a menu here real quick. Well, real quick is not exactly accurate. 
So we got any announcements? I don't know if we did since we had that long break, but we do. This is a nice time. Oh, there's been a lot of love from the community during right. that uh, unfortunately downtime that we had. We got uh, $10 from JB's, just says, got to go fast. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a $5.46 uh, cent donation from KFizzle4. It says, my OCD from my previous donation was killing me, <laughs> so I had to fix it. <laughs> also, I want to plug the upcoming FFR, uh, FF Relay next month. Oh, yeah. It's one of my favorite things to watch every year, and it never disappoints. Uh, also got a $50 donation from Samwise and Tiberius. No comment, but they put their donation towards Krillin for the heroic sacrifice for the Dragon Ball Z run coming up next, which puts Krillin in the lead. Uh, so if you don't want Krillin to heroically sacrifice himself, uh, go ahead and get your donations in by the end of Final Fantasy XIII. Uh, Krillin is in the lead with $50. We have $20.54 for Chaozu in second, and we have $20 for Yamcha in third. So if uh, you want to crater Yamcha, <laughs> uh, we need about $30.01. Right. Oh, oops. I messed up a bit. It's fine. Probably fine. Maybe fine. We'll see. <laughs> 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 I went a little bit too far and learned in peril, which we don't want because it doesn't do anything in the fight coming up, and we need deep protect. And now because she knows one more debuff, she might do less deprotect. Of course, the solution is just hit the debuffs, and then it's not an issue. But, you know, just get lucky, and then my bad play doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, just play good. <laughs> anyway, thank you everyone that donated. Appreciate that. I actually forgot to plug the FF Freeway. It's a really cool event where essentially there's three teams, and we race through the whole Final Fantasy series. You know, doing, well, not every single game, but essentially 1 through 15, maybe some side stuff along the way. It'll also be held on RPG Limit Break, where you guys are right now. And I think it takes place middle of August. I forget the exact date. So if that's something you guys would like, come watch. It's, it's going to be great. All right. This is the second mini game of the whole game. <laughs> we got to find Saz's little chocobo that hangs out in his hair. Your reward for this will be a star pendant, but there's literally no other options or anything. There's like, you just got to find the Chocobo. It's only ever in one place. There's nothing to it. So I play a separate mini game for me. I my mini game is if I can skip the cutscene before the screen changes, like that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and we get our star pendant here. This gives you resistance to poison, which yeah, we don't care. We just sell it. Common theme. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, this is nice. We're selling it. <laughs> uh, I don't even say things are nice. I just sell it. <laughs> <laughs> We're nope. about to get our first. Uh, Vanille line here. That's that's good. <laughs> yeah, right now it's coming. Also, look how cool this place is. Yes, they will. <laughs> <laughs> I think they announced on live TV that they're gonna. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're literally <laughs> shooting at you. Yeah. yeah, they're like surrender so we can execute yeah. you. Well. Story-wise, Saz decides that he wants to surrender, and he tells like Manil to go. He's gonna turn himself in. And Manil's trying to convince him not to. Yeah. Especially since it's kind of like her fault that Saz is in this mess. Okay. Little cycle dodge there. You want that little droid facing away? And here we got Midway Reaper. It's one of the most RNG fights in the whole run. Because essentially, we just need debuffs. We need deprotect. We can get poison. That's nice. Imperil is useless, sadly. <laughs> so it's a shame that I learned that. But we'll see what we get. It's also like our second use of using end spells, I believe. Or, yeah, the last one was E and E and get end well. Here we're going to use end frost because he has a nice weakness. He's prioritizing in peril, unfortunately. Oh, we got it. Okay. <laughs> why, are you, why are you doing three in perils with Neil? That was completely useless. <laughs> <laughs> we already had it. <laughs> You gave her new skills, she's testing right. them out. Okay, we got deep protect. We're good. Yeah. So, just get lucky is in fact the strats. <laughs> this boss kind of looks like it's made of Shinra soldier helmets. Yeah, yeah. I can see that. <laughs> <laughs> is that the tool that this boss is Yeah, made this of? is the path. I've been saying every boss is made of like creature, vehicle, and power tool of some kind. <laughs> so, yeah, we'll say that's the power tool, the Shinra helmet. <laughs> We can maybe go for our poison cats here just because we have nothing else to do. 
If we can, we do want to try to time our strings after manual spells, because they build chains, so we'll do a bit more damage, but it's not too important. Oh, I should probably do Imperil on Brynhildr as well, but maybe that's good. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Live routing, folks. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no. I could tell you without a shadow of a doubt that early Imperil is not a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you hit it, then maybe it's okay. <laughs> There's a lot of ifs coming out here. It could be good. I mean, everything's good if it works. Yeah, I guess that's true. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so we, there's actually a big mechanic we haven't really talked about, talked about yet called conditional modifiers. So um, essentially, there's like ways to alter the amount of chain things build. One of the biggest ways to do it is to alternate the different types of attacks you're doing. So instead of repeating, like, say, fire, 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 you want to do fire, thunder, fire, thunder, and that would build a lot more chain. Um, also, like, for example, buffing yourself gives you conditionals. Um, debuffing enemies gives you conditionals. All sorts of that, stuff like that. So for this fight, what we're going to be doing is attack blitz. Oh, she got in peril. <laughs> so I don't know if that's good. All right. Okay, sorry, I'm giving you I'm safe. What do you do? Burst, though. Okay, I'm going to heal. Nice. So attack blitz is actually a really big conditional, having a different thing before blitz. Uh, heal me, Vinyl. Heal me, Vinyl. Vinyl. There she goes. Wasn't even close. Not even scared. Yeah. Also, a really funny conditional is to have Saz the only one alive. So it's actually kind of good if Vinyl dies. All right, this is a good fight. Brynn Wait. was really close yeah. there. That's the biggest thing you're looking for in this fight. You want Brynn to be close to you. Sadly, it was only at the end. We had Sniper Brynn before that, but it's still a really good fight. I'm going to credit the Imperil. We'll say that was good. Yeah, yeah we'll say the Imperil worked there. All right, that new route. Chapter eight. <laughs> Guys, new route just dropped. Yeah, this is actually the shortest chapter in the run. Which is nice, because it's actually kind of RNG heavy despite being so short. <laughs> and now we're in chapter 9, which is one of the longer chapters in the run. Yeah, and my least favorite of the run, for sure. This chapter is one of those, like, it seems like... It seems, like, pretty stable and whatnot, but when you really look at the things involved, it's, uh... There's, a, there's no major RNG factors, but there's just so much that can go wrong in, like, small ways that it all really adds up. A lot of dodges that control, some yeah. fights that control. All the fights control, really, in this chapter. Yeah. Every <laughs> single one, I think. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. So right here, I'm going to set up my paradigm. So the best way to deal with these guys is to summon. All right, that's a good start. Looks like you got all of them. Yeah. I don't know if I hit the Dar on everything, but that's fine. That's not so important. Oh, Zagra slow down. All right, Raider A has that much. Also, targeting when you're in assault mode is horrible which is why I now have to do four Thunderfalls instead of three, because I couldn't get to Raider A again. It's like, you can go left, right, L1, R1. And like, normally in battles, you go for a list, but in just salt mode, there's no list. And I'm just like, it's kind of based off camera angle. It's not consistent at all. So it's one of my least favorite things about summon fights in this game. At least the multi enemies one. Until next time. And the best is how the uh, difference between PS3 versus PC chain, like changing targets and just all mode changes too. No, Doesn't I think it? I think it's the same. The big difference for like some fights between PS3 and oops and PC is that PS3 the summon takes like longer to kick in, so the timing is tighter. Don't you. Oh. Well, I have to retry that. I forgot. I have an age assault at the bottom here. Oh. It's a like little trick. If you need to eat for salt before this fight, and if you eat for salt in the battle zone, it's faster because they run at you. But I forgot I have this Aegis Soul here. I blame my practice saves, their old route, and I don't have that Aegis Soul there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so it's like another summon fight. This is actually the reason we didn't use Leaper Soul and Proto, so we can have one for this fight. This fight without a summon is like 45 seconds, and it's fairly inconsistent. There's a lot of interruption. Uh, I wouldn't then hit that one. I have to be fast here. Uh, no, we're good. <laughs> 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 Uh, so the thing you have to look for there is in the back left soldier, he can shoot lightning. And if he shoots you twice, then Odin does Kuraga, and then you just lose duration by default. He can also interrupt you. A good fight like this is like 15 seconds. Now, the animation of the finisher there doesn't count towards the battle time, so it's actually like 30 seconds. But it's still like a 15 second time save compared to that old strat, so it's very good. And much more consistent. Alright. Coming up is one of my favorite dodging segments. Since this is more of a showcase, I will try to do it all d plus if I can. But uh, isn't a lot of dodges here are finicky at best. I believe. Yeah, I still have never done all these d plus in the run, ever. 
Which I believe a little first less, time. but I still believe. <laughs> yeah, it's the first time for everything, yeah. so let's let's get it this time. <laughs> yeah, I also haven't too many attempts. I found like some good visual markers recently to help. So we'll see how it goes. All right, so here we want to counter trick right away. And nice, this aerial almost caught me, but he didn't. <laughs> now, you, Man, what are you? You can uh, react. If he does see you, he'll kind of block you, and you have to go into like the little bridge on the right there, which is outside his battle zone, and wait for him to back up. We just lose some time. All right, this is the harder one. We're going to have to go between these two aerials and kind of like make them so they get stuck turning. Nice. There we go. This one doesn't have any trick to it, but these watch runs are jerks. Ah. Yeah. It's also a really weird camera angle. It's a hard dodge. If I have a pattern I can use, I'll try to do a decept plus. If I fail one more time, I'll just decept. Yeah, this should work. All right. First but, try. Yeah. And this final one is also, it's a bit of a weird setup. We have to stop for like just the right amount and continue and hope the watch runs don't see us. It's a very inconsistent dodge to go for, but the retry is pretty good. And if it saves us a decent cancel, it's like it kind of breaks even. The watch runs did not see us, in fact, so we got it. Nice. 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 Still failed one. <laughs> Funnily enough, the one that you technically don't need a decept for. Traditionally, we would decept the two aerials and the one we just did right there. <laughs> like the decepts are routed for them. But uh, we got the one that never had to be decepted. <laughs> That's the one we failed. <laughs> So this is going to be just like a long dodging segment. We're going to run through all these soldiers. Luckily, they're not too bad to dodge, but every now and then they control you a bit. <laughs> I love that dodge. You just run right past yeah. them. The, the, the battle zone doesn't start until after you're past them. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty funny. They just don't see you. Yeah. I, I just think those are the smarter soldiers. You know, They know you're with see you have magical powers and stuff. They're like, I don't get paid enough for this. <laughs> No, not again. <laughs> so I intentionally went more to the right there, so if he chased me, he would get stuck in a turn animation, which he just like did not care about. But uh, I had to have it in my practice run, I was ready this time. I dodged his swing, which is kind of hard to do. Same here. I, I go to the right like that, so that soldier at the front turns and doesn't insta-run. He tried it again. These guys are mean. They really want me. Right. Here's just more soldiers. So this is like the first chapter in a good while where we actually get access to every single character. We will be using every single character we have in this chapter. For a bit, it alternates a bit. We have this like Lightning Fang Snow Hope section. Well, no snow because Snow got injured in chapter seven. Uh, yeah, we explained that greatly. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> totally chapter covered. seven had a lot of other things going on. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it did. We will not tell you what they are, but a lot of things happen. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, paradigm menu here, we're just gonna get set up. We finally learned haste here, which is a really good synergist skill. And um, it's just like traditional Final Fantasy haste, you rebuild ATB faster. And this is like the first time we could afford it. So we got it. And we get some stats, and we finally get a different Ravager spell for our Saz. At this point, he's only had fire. Now he has arrow and flame strike, which will be useful. We're gonna remove his doctor's code because we will need to give it to lightning later, and we will continue on. Uh, preempt? Nice. He, if, if you don't get this preempt, you just go without it. It's not necessary, but it does save like 15 seconds. You got smacked. Come at me, bro. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so a funny thing about Blitz is it's a bunch of bullets that go out, and the closer they are to you, the more of them hit. So them running up to Saz is really good. Yeah. We haven't really explained Blitz, but Blitz is like the big... Uh, it's not the only reason Saz is our leader, but it's a humongous part of it. So every other character's Blitz is just like one AoE attack, and it does just, you know, AoE damage, generally weaker than just doing multiple attacks. But Saz's Blitz is unique. Instead of just, like, hitting AoE, it fires a certain amount of bullets, and if those bullets happen to hit the same thing, it does more damage. So generally speaking, Blitz will always outdamage his attacks by a good while, and if you have an enemy that's really big or really close, it'll do amazing damage. That's why we, like, as soon as we unlock it, we spam it on almost everything. And when he's not the party leader, unless there's multiple enemies, he doesn't like to use it. Yeah, so, even with multiple enemies, he tends to not do it. So we like to lead with him just yeah. so we can guide him on the right course to how to do damage. Yeah. But you lead him because we want the blitz and because we can tell him what buffs to do. 
So for example, enemies with elemental weaknesses. If Saz doesn't know their weaknesses through Libra info, he will not use like the right end spells, and then his buffing order is often not optimal. Uh, if you control it, you get exactly the buffs you need when you need them in the order that you want them. So it just makes him the natural leader, and he'll be the primary leader for the rest of the run. Past chapter 9. Chapter 9, you're still stuck with lightning. Uh, I can fit here. Yeah. Hey, nice. They barely even saw me. <laughs> they really don't care. <laughs> that dodge is secretly one of the worst dodges in the game. It can go somewhere between like first try easy like that to like fails. Six fails. <laughs> they move really fast. If they yeah. see you early, they just don't let you pass. Not always. They can see. They can all see you and just not move, or they can just instantly react and catch you, and there's nothing you can do. It's. I was very. Uh, I was decepting that dodge for a while. I do like this next dodge. I just hope I do it properly. Yeah. So yeah, there's it looks really cool when you get it. Yeah, <laughs> there's a spermidon here that blocks the path. We're gonna run here and then lure him out. At least that's the idea. <laughs> he didn't turn. He did not. This no. keeps happening recently. Okay, well, the retries easier. He auto turns at the start because of how I enter the battle zone, and now I can see better. The camera's in a better spot. And now he just lets you right past. <laughs> <laughs> at least the retry's really good with the setup. So. The other way, he usually turns to his right and then walks forward a little bit, so it opens up a path if it goes yeah. well the first time. And he can even make him back up by exiting the battle zone. There's a lot of manipulation you can do. Uh, the, the hardest part about like that approach is the camera angle. The camera angle is really bad. It's hard to see what he's doing. Yeah, and if he's doing something bad, you don't see it until it's too late. It's like an imperil, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, is about to go flying. Ah, uh, not fast enough. Oh, I didn't refresh either. Interesting. Hmm. Right, I'm going to actually potion here just for safety. I'll, I'm also down to six potions, so that's cool. And I think I got no drops, uh, which matters for money. Oh, I should have picked up silicone oil. I'm, I'm going to have trouble finishing the menu. All right, go, Vanille. Get your spells out before you get launched. Hey, in peril. <laughs> Hey, yeah. Hey. <laughs> that still does nothing for me, but it's cool. Come on. So you need to wait for him to approach you here. Dude, come on. <laughs> come here. He like went twice and then stopped twice. <laughs> Just tease. All right. And from here we win. Like, once again, it's about how many the Blitz bullets hit, so you want them close to you. If it's far away, your Blitzes are going to do much less damage. All right. Not too bad. That fight can be really bad if the Vespa Soldier at the start does like a Rogue and Cyclone. He'll back up really far so your Blitzes do no damage. And then you get launched, and then uh, you can also get hit by the Wizard, the Firmadon, and get launched again. And it's actually not unlikely to die if you get that pattern. It's very hard to play as well. Alright, luckily Vanille's not in any more fights until she actually learns in peril. Um, what? He saw me. That's why I stopped. So he saw me, I knew he was gonna like run at me like that. And that's like the safest way to play it. Okay. <laughs> that dodge is actually horrific if you fail it. So there's like two aerials that are like off screen there. And before you retry, they just don't do anything. But once you retry, they will chase you like their life depends on it. Even with a D step, that dodge is difficult. Uh, sell these. I'm gonna sell this at this point. I need the money. <laughs> um I forget a weapon? I think I forgot a weapon somewhere. The Pandora and Spear? Spear? No, uh, maybe? Okay, well, I've never had this situation before. This should be fun. <laughs> I can't even buy enough crankshafts. On the fly routing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> How many Phoenix Stones do you have? Not enough? I have one. Oh. I think I just don't do anything here. I do need it. Yeah, this is gonna be fun. I've never had this happen before. This has happened to runners before where you forget a weapon, but I think they've generally gotten good money. I've also gotten terrible money. <laughs> I won't even be able to buy Shaman's Mark, I think, this run. I straight up can't afford it. All right, well, I do need to change my equipment and do my Crystarium. And we're going to have a long menu after the Kevlinka fights, which will now be really slow. Oh. Why didn't you guys tell me? I forgot. I, 
Dude, I, don't I wasn't know. paying attention to what you were picking up. I don't up. know anything. Apparently, I, neither was I. <laughs> I honestly don't know which drops you pick up there, because no. I pick up everything. <laughs> well, I missed the weapon. That was the big one. I don't know what weapon I missed, but I missed something for sure. Oh, well. We'll, we'll figure it out. We're good speed gamers. <laughs> well, I mean, obviously not, but... <laughs> uh, uh. So my Fang has like a hundred less strength than she normally does in upcoming fights. What can go wrong? Because normally that Brawler's Respect, it gives you 60 strength. You upgrade it to Warrior's level 8. And that gives you um, like 156. So she is literally 100 strength down for this. Oh, Clippy boss. Hey, it's Clippy! So uh, for anyone wondering, look at his wings. <laughs> I just learned this recently myself. <laughs> yeah, it was this morning, right? You're yeah. welcome. <laughs> you. I got cursed. Nice. Ah, no point. The paper clips get the honorary power tool pass <laughs> in my boss designation. I agree. I think it's the strongest power tool. <laughs> All right. So this phase won't be a problem. It's the second phase I'm worried about. It'll just be slower. I'll have to like probably do an extra string at least. Oh, why am I shifting? Lightning is right. New strategies. I kind of forgot where I'm at in this. <laughs> All right, we should be fine from here. All right, that wasn't too much slower. Fifty-four. <laughs> 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 That's why we did this. <laughs> it was all planned. Uh, we got hope target too, which is like an annoying pattern. Because you have to heal much more. Oh, and I'm almost out of potions too to add on to the troubles we're going to have here. Oh my god, my money is going to be such an issue. I can't even think of any extra chests to pick up until chapter 12. There is one we can get in, in like the bridges. I forget which one there it was even, but there is one. It's like a pretty good weapon that sells for a large amount of money. But it's a pretty big detour as well. Might be worth it at this point. I'm tilted. Yeah, I'm thinking about it. I'm also tilted, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was going to say I'm thinking about it. All right, let's throw a potion here. We did get Hellstorm Bolt skip right there. So that right attack right there actually just like nuke someone and it goes for the lowest HP character you have. So we intentionally keep hope low, he's a sacrifice. Naturally. Of course, yeah. We got Krillin in the other game, we got hope in this one. Uh, I probably shouldn't be using these potions just because I'm almost out. It's my last one. Okay, I'm keeping that one. Uh, that potion's special to me. <laughs> Oh my god, my stagger is almost out. Maybe. Whoa. I think he got it. Ah, yep. Oh, she did spike. Turns out, missing 100 strength, no big deal. <laughs> Lightning, those are right. new strategies. <laughs> <laughs> Bars are spent, skip one. <laughs> All right, so luckily that I drop some stuff and I can afford to, sell, I can sell it and buy some things. Uh, the thing is, I'm still really short. Like this isn't even enough for the full menu. So uh, we're just gonna skip Shaman's Mark this run. The problem is, I'm not even sure if I can get enough potions. Okay, Five. I can buy enough to last me for a bit and I'll have to buy some more. Oh, it's 50 per. I thought it was 100 per. I was like, oh, five. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I still have to upgrade here, I guess, as well. Gotta love improvisation. Time for some quick donations. Yeah, this is a good menu segment. Go for it. Got a $10 from donation from Sharky. Says, hey, Zero, the Umbra is to the right of Bridge 2. Thank you. Should put you back on money route. Keep <laughs> up the great work. Sharky coming in clutch. Thank you so much. We also have a hundred dollar and fifty four fifty four cent donation. Fifty four says one dollar for every bonus shroud that you definitely got. Wink. Good luck <laughs> to the run, Zero. Thank you so much. And then twenty dollars from Boomhauer says love watching RPG limit break. Seven hour speed runs need love too. True. Yes, they do. 
especially seven hour speed runs, <laughs> which I'm hoping this is not. <laughs> <laughs> All right. No, I think we're fine on the equipment menu. Uh, it's going to be a little weird because I don't Actually, I think I am going to get the Umbra. Uh, oops. All right, let's see this probably. Move. Yeah. Yeah, there's like, that's not supposed to be there. That's supposed to be the Shaman's Mark. Or the Blessed Talisman if I didn't sell it. But since my money is so bad, I have to sell it. And I still can't afford the Shaman's Mark. All right, Ride of Bridge 2. Well, we're, we're going to find some new gear today. <laughs> Welcome to my Let's Play. <laughs> I'm here for it. This is why I hate Chapter 9. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, chapter 9 heard what you said about it. <laughs> no, I think this is completely my fault. This is the one time I can not blame it, but I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> There's always hope. Is there, though? No, like <laughs> blaming hope. True. I will gladly blame Hope anytime. Oh, I prefer blaming Lightning, personally. Hey, why are you not dead, sir? This was a really slow fight. They were really spread out. That, that was 10 seconds slower than it should be. I got two incentive chips. I could probably just sell those. Get back on your route. That's still good. <laughs> yeah. Personally. Well, I like to practice bad money. <laughs> <laughs> Not yeah. the time. <laughs> yeah, fine. I'll take my detour. I'll be the bad guy here. For you. <laughs> Thank you. I'm being forced into this decision. <laughs> right. They dispelled Sans's uh, shell that I'm not even supposed to have. <laughs> New strats. There's been a lot of those today. Yeah. Oh, he went for me right when I summoned, I summoned through his attack. That's kind of funny. All right, so I need to make sure I get just all three here, which is going to be slower because it's like really separate from everyone, so I'm not hitting things. All right. Oh, turning animations. Cool. All right, so coming up is actually one of the, I don't want to call it a glitch. It's more of a mechanic abuse, but we got our only like real quote unquote glitch coming up in the run. It's called bridge despawns, and essentially we could despawn the enemies on the upcoming bridges. I could probably work, make that work, but I'm, I'm being safe. Yeah. I had really high chain. Uh, so the way it works, um, the game wants to preserve resources, so it only loads in and out certain enemies once you pass certain points. So what we're going to do is we're going to go past a certain point to respawn the enemy that we beat before this, and then we're going to backtrack to it, and we're going to enter its battle zone. Okay, I actually don't need to get the oh, chest anymore. Cool white, yeah. <laughs> I've gotten enough money. I think we're fine. Let's see. These up. So yeah, we're going to go to like this part of the bridge right here. And I'll despawn the group, the first group we beat, the soldiers up there. And then once we pass like kind of like the bridge entrance over here, that'll actually despawn the group on the next bridge coming up. That's the loading line for it. We're going to get into this battle, and we're going to retry it. And when we retry it, it will put me further down the bridge than I am right now. And it will get me past the trigger that actually spawns that group. So I despawn it by going past it right now, and then I never have to pass that line again because of the retry. So you can see the next group of enemies coming up there is not there anymore. All right, I'm gonna, there is a safe point for Yeah, there's a safe point for our one. We're going to do the rest of our shop there. And we're going to do that one more time. And I'm going to have to remember to do the menu after the shop, because it's only just a Crystarian menu, but I do need to give Saz the Shaman's Mark. And buy some potions. Yes. <laughs> well, I think we only got 11 from the previous yeah. one. I was ready to do Bart 1 with 11 potions. Would have been enough now? Would I have died? Probably. But I was ready. <laughs> Did I, not desp I didn't despawn him. I think you're going to have to go into the group ahead. To not yeah, I'm going to be safe here. Yeah. Surprised that was more than enough distance, in my opinion. But I guess the game disagrees. That okay. happens a lot. Yeah, <laughs> I was getting that a lot in practice, so I've been like extra careful to go further, and it still happened apparently. <laughs> uh, uh, I could have probably made it, but there's a chance my D step runs out, and then we're in serious trouble. So yeah. better to err on the side of caution. I usually go like the full two sections, just because yeah. you know. So, yeah, I can show you my visual marker. That apparently doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> it's the first uh, yeah. bar coming out, right? It's one yeah. right there, yeah. yeah. Might have been the second one now that I think about it. It's one, it's <laughs> one of the things. 
I, it's hard to tell from the other direction because I never did do it that way. Yeah. All right. So should be good now. That should despawn the next group. Oh, man, this chapter nine was something, all right. It is one of the chapter nines of all time, definitely. <laughs> and once again, I will blame the game and not myself. This is definitely not my fault. True. <laughs> we'll definitely agree with you on that one. I appreciate that. <laughs> Fly to the stream for me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll right. say it's my fault for not reminding you about the spear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to say it's your fault, too. <laughs> All right, we actually have a big boss fight coming up. One of the most complex boss fights in a good while. We finally fight like the main antagonist of the story, uh, Mr. Bark Tandalus. And this fight's fairly complex. He has like four heads that we have to beat beforehand, and they will like take time buffing them. Oh, I still have to sell. Uh, so yeah, three and seven chips. Thank you, game. I got the money eventually. Everything always works out in the end. Yeah. Um, don't let's not speak too soon, yeah. <laughs> I still got some other stuff to get through. All right, chat. Strike that from the records. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that, never, that was never said. All right, so we finished up the last of our Chris. We couldn't do this before because we got the CP for it off the last two fights we took. Then get some HP nodes. Then you'll get some peril. Oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> this is normally where you teach her in peril. And I'm still going to give Saz Shaman's Mark. But we should be back on route more or less from there. I'll probably have to do a improvised shop for uh, Chapter 11 since I'm still pretty well on money. That's fine. I should be able to afford everything I actually need. Not necessarily everything I want, but everything I need I should be able to get. <laughs> At the very least, upgrade the black belt. Yeah. I learned that one the hard way. <laughs> yeah, that is a rough one if you don't have it. All right, and then we still have to get this chest. Let's not forget any more chests this run. No, this is an important one, too. Once again, we can theoretically skip it, but we don't want to. No. Well, you'd oh. be able to get the Sid one anyway if you did forget it. Yeah, but you want that one. I want that one as well. Oh, you do? Okay. Yeah. It makes those final boss fights a lot safer. All right. So, part one, we actually have a portal for this. So, I'll go over the strat more or less. First of all, you target the head. That gives you the best targeting for everyone. So, first thing we're going to do is just go, go target head down, and then go into items. Then we Libra Scoop as soon as Saz casts Vigilance, get interrupted twice, apparently. <laughs> good start, good start. So what we're waiting for here is End Spells. Also, nice Lightning Focus. He does not like Lightning he so far. Not. Still does not like Lightning. She will die four attacks from now if they get him off. Not even close. 96 even more health than she needed. <laughs> 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 oh god, this is going to be really dangerous because I have to do four here. I won't be able to push him for a while. Okay, so he takes, uh, he buffs heads here. He can do two attacks, Mystic Aura or Enchanted Bale. We really want Mystic Aura. That's the one that doesn't give him Protect. If they get Protect, then we just have to adjust our strats to... Um, Snow? Oh, I got the weird bug thing. Oh, well, you're attacking the main body? Like he, targeting it? Yeah, like the targeting didn't switch properly. I was supposed to be targeting this head, but it went to Bart 1 for some reason. Like the main head. So, got a bit delayed. I have extra damage on this head now, but that doesn't really do much good. I need more damage on the other one. Ooh, that's a lot. Okay, can I target switch, please? All right, so there is some tricks we could do here. So, Saz and Lightning, or Snow and Lightning will target different heads when um, you're in Strike Team, but once you have the right head targeted, you can go to Cerberus and then target the same one. So, I can kind of fix it that way. All right, so I was gonna go for a little flying thing here. We Bart smiled at us, and it hurt. He said you'll taste agony. I am tasting agony, indeed. How do you know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure about being ignorant of your face, though. <laughs> That's the best one. You are ignorant of your face. <laughs> Actual line. Okay, no, it's face, but it sounds like face. We, it, it counts. Yeah, he, he says fate, but it really does sound like face. I actually have to like do a weird potion here. I'm too low. Uh, potion again, I guess. All right, so we should be good here. We need to keep him locked here. This is going to be an interruption pattern. From now on, if he ever gets to move, it has gone horribly wrong. Four. All right, there we go. A bit on the safer side. So, at this point, 
uh, Bard is like two big attacks will do. He'll do another smile, which just hurts, but it's not the end of the world. But he also has an attack called Destrudo. And Destrudo is essentially it ends a stagger. And we don't want that because we will be losing about eight. eight we go from like 800% chain to 100% chain. We'll be losing eight times damage. And you'll also like, you kind of start charging up another attack and like start firing it off. Uh, it's not good. You don't want it. So you keep him stun locked, essentially. You build up his chain in Tri-D, and while you're in Tri-D, you can't keep him stun locked effectively, so you just have to adjust the attacks. Once your chain is high enough, you go into Cerberus, and you try to time your attacks and your shifts, so you just keep the stun lock going, which we did successfully. Finally, I did something right. <laughs> <laughs> something has to go right to balance out the bad. It always has to. It makes it more interesting. Is that how it works? Oh, yeah. Now, now he's saying stuff. Definitely. <laughs> Where am I dying in this chapter because of you? <laughs> uh, Baham, it seems most likely. <laughs> that is a good, that is a good choice. All right, uh, I don't have a bonus age at all, so let's do this. All right, so this is the blah menu. In Japanese, a Ravager is called Blaster, and it's abbreviated blah. And all we do in this menu is make Ravagers. So this is the blah 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 menu. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually a cool menu because we only ever make Ravagers here. I like it. It's easy to remember. <laughs> Oh, here we got a fight with two pulse works. Nothing quite to this. The only thing is we need Snow to hit his provokes, and we need to heal so we don't get slapped to death. Thank you. All right, Snow hit his provokes. Nice, good start. So essentially, we just train them up with Andaras, and uh, once we have them staggered, we'll go into Malevolence. And Snow sh or, uh, Sash should buff up with Fire, ideally. If we didn't get enough Libra info, he won't do Fire. he'll do... Uh, bravery, which is still okay, but suboptimal. Oh, he did bravery. bravery. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Thanks, Az. As long as he splits his hip both should be fine. Looks like it was. Yep. I feel like my damage is low there, even with out and fire. But it's fine. I'm like really paranoid now with all my equipment, and he's being a bit off that I'm just like, what if I don't have Warriors Respend on Lightning? But the damage looked fine on Bard. I don't think it's it. Anyway, welcome to Chapter 10. So, um, Chapter 9, Bart's, so basically what we learned in Chapter 9 is that Bart's been behind everything. He's like the head honcho of uh, the Cocoon Falsy. And he's supposed to be like the governor of Cocoon. He's like president, governor, I forget the official title. He's the one that leads the army, but he's been a Falsy all along. And everything that's happened has essentially been orchestrated by him. He, because he misses dad. <laughs> and uh, after our fight with him, like the army chases us. And he has this owl that we never got to see because we skipped all the cutscenes. It's uh, I forget the term for it, but uh, in Chapter 3, the airship that we got there was the Owl. And that's what took us, like, tried to fly us away. And in Chapter 9, the Owl takes us again. And Sass tries to control the airship. It turns into an airship. Sass tries to control the airship, but we lose control. And we fly, like, through a building. And it, I don't know, opens a portal, and we end up in here. We're in a Vestigia vibe. No, this is an arc. I forget which arc. But essentially, it's a sea training ground. He sent us here so we can become better at being with C and become stronger. It's also where the game lets you finally change your leader so we can do someone other than Lightning Lead, but we're still going to keep her a while longer. She's good for these chapters. And this is where we unlock secondary roles. Uh, secondary roles are the same as the roles we've had unlocked, but essentially every character up to this point has only had access to three roles. Those have been their primary roles. Depending on the character, like the roles are different. Now every character has access to every role. But secondary roles are generally very expensive, like much more so than primary roles. So we will do very little secondary role leveling. We just can't afford the CP. It's too much. Uh, specifically, we will be getting Vanille Commando and, and Sass Sentinel. Sass Sentinel, yeah. yeah. Those are the only two we'll be getting. And not even far. We'll be going until Vanille Ruin, 11 nodes total, and Sass until uh, Provoke, which is like six nodes. Enough to set them at the, on the roll. Yeah. I mean, Vanille can go commando with just attack, but yeah, we she don't want magic that. Magic base mostly. Yeah. Her attack animation's awful. Yeah. It's like the one exception to the rule of uh, attack being yeah. faster than Rowan. I'm not going to lie. Thinking about it now, I'm kind of tempted to make like a physical Vanille route where you just get a lot of notes. <laughs> you could save like five node animations. Just get a Warrior's Wristband instead of a Swork Marker. It's like, what's the difference really? Slower attacks, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you get more interruption. But no, I think a big part of why you do magic is because when she's in Ravager, she does only magic. So it's not just for when you're in Commando with her, it's also when you're in Ravager with her. Would be pretty funny, though. 
There has been runners before, probably myself included, I don't remember, that I just forget to give her ruin. So you get to like a big boss fight and you're just smacking over your fishing rod. <laughs> just doing deer <laughs> stuff. <laughs> Alright. There's a funny little thing I'm going to showcase here. Technically losing me some frames, but... We can show you how snow, uh, snow really feels about lightning. Also, there's a lot of elevators in this chapter. So we can just get to wait here. I can look at my shrouds. Hey, look at that one. This fort as well. And that's what's that one here. <laughs> Bart and <Antilio. laughs> <laughs> I love saws. <laughs> <laughs> that just happens if you don't move her from the initial spot. I've never seen that before. Yeah, I have. I was like taking a food break or something. <laughs> <laughs> so, wait, what's going on here? <laughs> Getting my nature value bar. <laughs> Sponsor me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I'm allowed to say that. <laughs> okay, that is actually the incredibly hard dodge I just did. That was the freest it's ever been. Stop it! What is he doing? <laughs> Being mean. He actually do want to spot you because he does weirder stuff if he doesn't see you. But you gotta make sure that he like actually doesn't keep turning once you go. Right. Yeah. Usually when he sees you, he just charges where he saw you, and doesn't matter if you're on the complete opposite side, which is what you were trying yeah. to do initially. But that time is like, you know what? I don't buy it. I don't think she's gonna go that way. Let me turn again. <laughs> once they're behind you, it's generally fine. They'll just swing at you. But uh, sometimes they don't, and you get caught, and it feels extra bad. You know what I think he was doing? His lightning impression. Ah, uh, yes. That was his lightning impression. <laughs> hey, lightning, this is what you look like. See how silly you look? <laughs> All right, so we actually have a pretty cool boss fight coming up. Sid, he has been in the story once again, the cutscenes that we didn't see any of. We I almost got caught by that German. Uh, Sid is uh, like the leader of the Guardian Corps, one of the armies. Uh, and he's actually been helping us. So, like, he helped us attack, like, where Bartle is. That's Bart. That's his nickname. <laughs> <Bartleby>. <laughs> yeah. During chapter 9, he was like in charge of us like getting there and doing all the stuff we did, rescuing Saz and Neil. Uh, but it turns out he was actually able to see all along. A cocoon would see. I think he was made able to see by Bart himself. And his job is to essentially get us ready to destroy Cocoon. It's like training. But he decides to defy his focus and stop us here because he loves Cocoon. Like, he was a human before and he wants to just kill us here. But uh, this fight's really cool. This fight went from being one of the easiest fights in the run to one of the hardest fights in the run. Because before we would just uh, have two Mystic Towers here, and we just have sn Snow tank everything and throw spells. And now we do full interruption strats. If everything goes right, it'll look free, but if things go wrong, it can get really sketchy. Alright, that's good. So that's targets there with magic isn't good. Looking good. So we're just going to keep the interruption going of our strikes. So the thing about Sid, he has these shifts, but before that, I'm going to mention that if he gets past a certain damage, gate he will do a attack called Metamorphosis, and then he'll do a Seraphic Ray. And we have to summon through that, or it'll kill us. So we never want to see that. And we don't want to summon on this fight if we can help it because yeah. of a potential fight after it. That as well. But the big downside to using strikes is um, you do more damage. It doesn't matter if he does this one, defensive stance, but if he did recovery stance, the damage matters. Oh, that's really bad. Uh, that's unfortunate. Uh, I'm going to have to improvise. Leave him alone! <laughs> He's just a boy! <laughs> <laughs> Only lightning's allowed to punch him in the face. <laughs> it, this is still fine. That's what I mean. He kind of like broke out early for no real reason. And then he focused one character down, launched snow. For some reason, lightning didn't keep him interrupted. So it's her fault again. Oh, oops, I didn't want to do four there. Because I do four, she's going to do this backflip animation. So a bit slow, but it's fine, we win. As long as I don't have to summon, I'm happy generally. Nice. And the reason we didn't want to summon is because there is an elevator coming up with a bunch of bombs that like to chase us. And if we get caught, summoning is the fastest and most consistent way of killing them all. Yes. Also, I don't really care about it. Something's just slow. 
<laughs> it adds like 30 seconds to the fight. It's very much a don't die backup. It's not like something you ever want to do. Yeah. All right. Uh, quick menu. Uh, power wrist and warriors. Shield. Soul front. I uh, want another order. And efficient. Okay, good enough. So this is called the bomb elevator. It's an elevator and there'll be bombs on it. So we call it the bomb elevator. Um, so the nice. big, big problem about these elevators, <laughs> the big issue with these elevators is that if you retry, uh, if you get caught and you retry a battle, it puts you at the top of the elevator. So you have to just do all of this again. It takes you like 30 seconds to get down. So it's a humongous time loss. There'll be one more elevator of enemies on it later, but that one we'll just dece up because it's completely impractical to do otherwise. There's birds on it, and we know how we feel about birds. Uh, this one is pretty easy to dodge, but you can get caught sometimes if they give you weird patterns. So if you did have to summon on uh, Sid, and then you get caught here, you can't summon on them anymore. And you have to go into funny backups where you go into aggression with lightning and just like blitz, and hope she doesn't get self-destructed on. <laughs> it's not consistent in the tiniest bit. But, I mean, what can you do? Ooh, I just got an idea. What if I switch to Saz lead? Before the bomb elevator? Yeah, I mean, in that menu. So there is uh, some runners, or one runner in particular, uh, goes by Grudonvert. Uh, actually, hold on. This is awful. I need to see how to back this up. Oh my goodness. Uh, it looked like it was free when you were running down, then yeah. you just moved to the other side. <laughs> uh, also, this jump is incredibly sensitive. Uh, so... Uh, I did not want to jump there. That's like... I didn't want to jump there either. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This is uh, these two dodges here. I call them R and Gutter 4 and 5 because once again, the dodges you can't really control when they block everything. And they're spread out completely now. Uh, that one okay. plan would move. <laughs> no. oh, I went for it. I went for it. <laughs> no, it was the left one that messed it up. <laughs> oh, man. This was actually a pretty good chapter 10 up until this point. Oh, well. I feel like this dodge is always really bad on the retry, too. All right, Pulse Ward, can you? Oh, All right. I was worried he was going to back up. Yeah, me too. <laughs> it looked sketchy. All right. Um, if there's any more announcement, now's a good time. It's just a lot of running around easy dodges for a good while. Or I can continue commentary. That's fine, too. Oh, we've got plenty of announcements okay, here. Fine. Sorry about that. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> we've got a $100 donation from Hellcat Striker. It says, good luck with the run, Zero. Oh. Missed it earlier because of the internet outage, but here's 100 bucks for mental health and looking forward to seeing a 100 heroes run when it comes out. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Thank you so much, Hellcat. And we also have a one, another $100 donation from Kenneth. It says, love for the tech team, and I can echo that. Uh, much shout outs to the uh, tech team folks. Can we get some uh, love for tech? Let's go. Yes. Woo! Here. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, that doesn't lose me time. <laughs> we can never say enough good things about the people behind the scenes of RPG Limit Break. Couldn't do it without them. There's yeah. so much going on back here. All right. So coming up is one of the worst parts of Chapter 10, and really every chapter in the game. It's the Burb Room. <laughs> and very descriptive, it's a room full of birds that yeah. do, do stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> you want to try to take the yellow birds back, but I couldn't even tell which way he was facing because he was behind the behemoth. But yeah, this is a dodge where you ever get a first try or you fail it three times, so this does not bode well for me. <laughs> All right, where is he? He's to the right, it looks like. Oh, what? The, it's the behemoth. <laughs> well then, like I, I said, <laughs> all right, we got to fail it one more time and then we can pass. <laughs> the trick here for like, anyone learning is you, hey, did you stop that? <laughs> this is the bird room, not the behemoth room. <laughs> tired uh, of being shown up by the birds. <laughs> The little trick here for the retry, you want to wait like two seconds, because even though you've retried, they're still kind of aggroed on you. Once you wait like two seconds, they sort of go back to fighting each other, and then it becomes easier again. So after bird room, we have bird elevator. Yes. This one, uh, we don't even try. We just decent. No, this one is not worth it at all. 
if you are actually like so in Shroudless where you can't use up, the strat here is literally just to fight it because it's so unlikely that you get the dodge. And it's funny though, because you preempt this fight and you preempt it by having the birds land on your head. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we had bird room, we have bird elevator, and coming up we have bird bridge. Which, Which <laughs> m much like the other ones, it's pretty self-descriptive. It's <laughs> yeah. a bridge that has a lot of birds on it. Yes, it does. <laughs> and once again, we don't like bridges and we don't like birds, so we will be decepting. Yes. It's a horrible combination. Even with decept, it's a horrible <laughs> combination. Yeah, it's kind of funny because they're not supposed to be able to see you, but you swear that they can. They'll just like when they land, they're supposed to move randomly. They hop towards you yeah. every time, and they go towards <laughs> you always. That's like it's funny because sometimes you try to go around, you see where they're going, it's like okay, I'll go the other way, and it'll turn around and like go after you anyway. I was trying to make a a, a frig brog joke or fridge brog <laughs> joke, but then I realized they both started with a B. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we did, we did. Yeah, so we really we did do it, but at what cost? <laughs> so they actually behaved, which is unusual. I, I got a bad feeling about that. <laughs> I do too. <laughs> <laughs> oh. The game is trying to sell something about Bahamut, I think. <laughs> Let's not talk about Bahamut. So we got no. our next Idolon fight coming up with Fang, and this is considered like the most RNG heavy one. He kind of just does what he wants, and you have to play around it. So uh, a lot of his attacks knock you up, and he hurts a lot. He can just straight up kill people. As long as he doesn't kill Fang, we should be fine. I do have one Phoenix down, luckily, which lets us play the lightning target pattern. Although ideally you have two for that one. It's kind of funny, because the optimal pattern, if you have like, you know, two Phoenix downs, is for him to just focus and kill Lightning instantly. <laughs> you just bring her down, and it's really efficient, because you don't have to go into defensive paradigms. All right, so start off, we go into Ruthless, and we hope to God we hit a slow. Yes. Nice. We hit Aww, two. Aw, but then it's a Whirlwind. That's not good. Not so bad. Nice, and then Lightning didn't get knocked up, so pretty good. All right, now we try to get Curse for a string. If we get it, nice. If not, then we'll just go about it. All right, so what we want to do here is after those swipes, we want to push him through the Whirlwind. And then we can do one Provoke if he does Inferno to prevent the launch there. All right. I don't think that's a refresh. I figured I'd try it. Oh, that's not good. Heal her! And she's dead anyway. Oh, yeah, wrong slot. We should be fine here, but that isn't necessarily fast. I'm out of Phoenix Downs. Let's hope Puddings will go okay. Alright, we should be good from here. Lightning and the new will finish. Nice. Alright, that was like a minute. Not a good fight, but not a horrible one. Alright, that's the end of Chapter 10. And now the hallway ends. Let's go. <laughs> 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 Woohoo! After this slightly, slightly extended hallway. <laughs> this part doesn't count. <laughs> so next we go to the Calm Lands. I mean, um, it's an Arch Light step. Calm Lands are tomorrow. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to call your Calm Lands Arch Light step just to mess with yeah. people. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> so that marks the end of Chapter 10, and now we start Chapter 11, the longest chapter in the run. This run is like over one-fifth of the, this chapter on its own is over one-fifth of the run. <laughs> Fun fact. It, a good run, a good chapter is just like under an hour. All right. So it started off, Hope was gathering supplies, and uh, he got lost, so we got to go find him. And we will have his Eidolon fight. His Eidolon is Alexander. And Alexander is a very interesting fight, because if you play it perfectly, it's essentially completely consistent. But if you make any small mistake, you're probably going to die. Usually in the first 10 seconds. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the trick to it is that Idolon will kill Hope with pretty much anything. And he has AoE on his attacks. So what we're, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to have Fang provoke, so he only moves for Fang. But the other thing is Fang has to be far enough away from Hope that whenever Alex goes for Fang, it doesn't hit Hope. Right. That should be fine. And to do that, we're going to do some very specific shifts at the start that will make Fang run forward, and we're going to shift before she can jump. If she jumps, she'll be too late to do a first provoke, and it's very likely a death. But uh, I've run, done a lot of runs for this. I think I can manage it. Hopefully. 
Also, if the blindfold incentives have been met, we will have our first blindfold incentive in this chapter. It's almost time. Yeah. Double wrap them. <laughs> do, we, do we strap them to the chair with it? Yeah, we actually, <laughs> he has to do it without his hands as well. <laughs> blindfold extra hard mode. <laughs> Feet gamer. <laughs> <laughs> so you just have to listen to your party get killed. <laughs> <pretty much. laughs> All right, time for Alex. Uh, I'm going to focus up for at least a start because the start is by far the most dangerous. All right, good. Oh, never mind. I failed it. I'm just going to really try. I'm a good as she jumps. <laughs> never mind. I guess I haven't run this game enough. <laughs> Looked like one of my fights. If I, <laughs> except for I would have waited until I died. <laughs> I mean, there is a chance he survived there. He could just target her naturally, but from my experience, he never does. So I'm just he, not going to bother. He always goes right at hope. Yeah. <laughs> always. Like, it's survivable, but even if it does survive, it's, the fight's going to be so scuffed at that point, it's not worth it. Yeah. I feel like it just becomes super hard to recover it. There we go. That should be good enough. We shift into protection, then we go into entourage. The reason we do that is because she'll walk back between the thunder, uh, between the, what's it called? Between the provoke and the meta guard. There we go. I know moves. Timing's a bit scuffed, but it should be okay. We should be good from here. We're going to protect on her, and then we're going to protect on hope. Technically, we don't, like, the protect on hope doesn't do anything because he never gets hit, but we just do it to get the conditional modifier boost so he builds more charge assault. Generally, in these Eidolon fights, the character whose Eidolon it is will be the one like responsible for building the assault the most, so it helps. And theoretically, it can help you survive if something goes wrong, but in practice, not so much. I see how she backed up there. That's why I did the double shift for. Uh, my spacing should be good still. So, like, once we get things going, he has a very predictable pattern where we just alternate between like three strings and relentless and one string and relentless going back to entourage in between. When three strings, we will quickly go to delta attack to refresh. And yeah, he'll do lofty challenge now, which is just like him building ATB or like charging up, whatever you want to call it. And we should be done really soon after two strings here. Should be like a 130. He started moving for a moment there and I got nervous. <laughs> <laughs> like, He's not supposed to do that. Yeah, 31. Generally, anything he does kind of just like puts me on edge. Yeah. <laughs> Even if Fang just taunted and I know he's not going to move forward, I'm just like, Some he's going to do something. <laughs> he's standing there so menacingly. Oh, he is. Very menacing. <laughs> he is incredibly menacing. All right, so remember how I mentioned that Hope is the slowest running speed? We're going to change him out right away because <laughs> we're about to do a whole lot of running. Uh, calm, calm All around. the way across to Arcolite Step. You mean the Calm Lands? Nah. Yeah, the Calm Lands. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got our Paradigm set up for a good while. And congratulations, we're about to get our first and only grind fight of the run. It so, takes pretty long, like yeah. 50 seconds. So the grind fight? Oh, yeah. Uh, the walk, yeah, yeah. Who are you congratulating? Well, I guess everyone. Oh, yeah. All right. <laughs> it's like, you know, people would feel bad. It's like, people probably play this game casually, myself included. It's like, you do all the fights, and you're struggling on the bosses. So if a speedrunner just goes and doesn't do any grinding at all and wins, you just, like, you feel bad about yourself. I, I know I would. Could fight one so, of those big guys. <laughs> bad idea. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, we're going to do one grind fight, so it's like, yeah, we have to fight random battles, too. <laughs> it's actually just to, like, we need just a little bit more CP to hit some major thresholds before certain fights. Well, found that we wouldn't be able to get ATV segment for Snow before PC1, and uh, Vanille's ATV segment before Hecaton, which is her idol on fight and the last one in the run. Those are the two big ones. Saz could be short for Cold Blood, but you can... I think there was a way to make it work. I think you do less Commando or something. I remember, like... I remember looking into skipping this before, and that one was actually manageable. But yeah, it's a really cool fight because it's two big enemies, but it's a really fast fight because they're fighting each other, so you can just preempt it. And that makes it a lot easier and faster. It's also a fight that has a new strat now because of some, like, us trying to save three seconds in the Paradigm menu. 
but it's uh, it's a nice upgrade if you get debuffs, and even if you don't get debuffs, it kind of breaks even. So it's a pretty cool routing change. It's coming up right around this curve. It's not, oh. it's not that one. No, oh no, no, it's yeah. down below that save yeah. point. I know you need that. I'm just pointing that out for the audience. Yeah. <laughs> time for some quick donations. Yes. Good time. All righty. Anonymous is uh, shaking the piggy bank and bringing us some more cash. We have a $5 donation from Anonymous, a $50 donation from Anonymous with no comment, and a $25, from, uh, $25 donation from Anonymous that has a heart. And then we have a $20 donation from Snowfire says, I hear that the very best speedrunners of this game take out an Animantoise. We're going to see that, right? Um, okay. That was my suggestion, which uh, was shot down. Yeah. <laughs> You see, that would be I'd do it if I was one of the very best speedrunners, but <laughs> I'm gonna use that as my defense for not doing a turtle fight. <laughs> well, we are gonna be doing one. Uh wait, I actually messed up. Um I think I can still make this work, actually. Thanks. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding! <laughs> Yeah, I messed up. I got distracted. There's like a, I got a Steam Friends thing on screen. That's not supposed to happen. <laughs> yeah, we literally turned yeah, it we off. Disabled yeah, we disabled Yeah. All right. Well, let's do this probably this time. So yeah, I can't even kill these guys. Uh, how am I going to fight this turtle? <laughs> All right. Round two. If any, will get some peril here. We skip the stagger slowdown on that, but ultimately not too important. What we need is debuffs on this guy. Ah, that's... Oh, Snow's doing weird things. <laughs> <laughs> He's punching everything in the air. That's because of the retry, right? He gets... Yeah, no, it's, extra uh, it's not that. I come up for the strike there <laughs> for a bit more damage. All right, well, we made that work. Uh, it's if he gets D-Shell and, like, no D-Protect. Oh, right, that's right. when he starts doing weird stuff. I learned that recently. I thought it was a retry as well, but it's a D-Shell that makes him do that. Uh, I guess it's because you do, I'm doing the Libra earlier and now, and that's what makes it work. Libra information in this game is weird. Don't try to understand it. I know I don't. <laughs> All right. So coming up is one of the worst dodges in this chapter, along with some interesting tech. So there's going to be a group of three droids followed by a group of two droids. The two droids, you have to wait for a cycle, but you can stare at them to speed it up, because if you're not looking at them, they're not moving. But if you're looking at them, they're moving. Now we're just going to stare at the wall. So hopefully like, we'll get them a little bit. And then once we actually get a good opportunity, we're just going to stare at them, try to speed up the cycle as much as possible. But the free droids, there's nothing like that. We just got to hope we get a good pattern. They kind of block the whole hallway. I don't even want to think how many bad things must be waiting for us. Me too, Vanille. Me too. It's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Might be a little hard to see All right. So these, these are the free droids. So I just got to hug the wall here and hope they give us a gap. That'll work. Nice. And two droids over there. I purposely moved my camera to stare at them right away. Pick up a weapon that we can once again sell for money. Uh, I waited way too long there. I don't know why I waited from so far away. I could have gotten much closer than that. <laughs> Alright. So this is, uh, I think, once we enter Mahabara, we finally unlock like another part of Lenore's garage and we get access to superconductors. Which is by far the most efficient like um, mechanical component we can get for upgrading everything. At least until we unlock Ultra Compacts, which never happens 90%. Uh, additionally, we also unlock buying Warrior's Wristbands. We already have one from the upgraded Brawlers, but we can buy more now, along with some other useful accessories. So we're going to have a big shop menu here. I can hopefully afford, but I doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, accessories. Yeah, I already saw the bus, so that menu... That I cannot, but I'm not too far down on money. All right, so I have a solution for this one. This one isn't as big of a deal. We buy 88 superconductors and one of our worries wristbands we just don't upgrade right away, or all the way. I even wasted some money there buying more wicked things. All right, and then BMW, we're gonna buy a black belt. Uh, two worries wristbands. I don't need feeding stamps, it's fine. <laughs> no. True. I was thinking about going to the unicorn mart just to buy one, but. I'm going to go with the just don't die strategy and then slowly die to rust puddings. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter. Too, uh, the only pattern now will matter for for puddings is if they double target snow. That one you can recover if a phoenix down. If they double target Vanille, we just don't care. She could stay dead. 
<laughs> and then Saz, you just die anyway because of the leader, so. It's fine. Technically, I can give Vanille roll level 2 here at Ravager, but I'm just going to be safe on Microstarium. <laughs> So we're going to stop on the train quest 4, and then go to Rav, get some nodes here, and then we're going to go to Sentinel. We're going to get him Challenge and Fringe Ward. Fringe Ward is actually a really cool, useful ability. It's kind of, I don't want to call it hidden, but it's kind of funny because you have to backtrack down here for it. But uh, what Fringe Ward does is, I don't, I forget the exact number, but essentially if Snow is targeted by like an AoE attack, everybody takes 33% less damage. I believe it's 33%. I could be wrong on percentage. But that's going to be incredibly important for surviving some later fights where the boss is really hurt. Fringe Ward saves you. All right, all right, big menu. Black Belt. Warner's uh, Wristband. Tungsten. Doctor's Code. And Shield Talisman. All right, and then we finally upgrade some more weapons to Max here. This is also the first time we sort our accessories just to put things like into nicer slots. We'll be doing two more swords throughout the run to move things around. Anyway, this is my money backup right here. Instead of doing 37 here, I do 31. And we end up with a Warriors who spend level 10, which loses us 8 strength, but that's fine. It's not that much. And it saves us like 5,000. The 20% physical damage reduction versus 10 is worth a lot more. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't call Black Bolt. Black Belt, one of the choices for things to cut there. No. <laughs> that, that is a really important upgrade. Well, the nice thing about Black Belt, I guess you can go to like level 4 or something, use like 5 Super Inductors, because for Black Belt, since it's like easier to upgrade, you don't actually use any organics to get the multiplier on it, you just throw Super Inductors on it. Even if you uh, like increase the multiplier, the amount of organics that you would need to buy to do that kind of offsets it in terms of cost. So it would just be slower with no real benefit. All right. Cross puddings. So this fight is technically dodgeable, theoretically, but apparently it takes like 15 minutes. And uh, yeah, yeah, we're not doing that. <laughs> no. These guys are weak to Thunder, so we're going to uh, buff Snow with a Thunder Bravery. And we're going to do the same for Saz. And we're going to start blitzing these guys. All right, he's right next to me, so we're just going to blitz right away. Snow got stuck turning. He's doing his lightning impression. <laughs> And we went from here. It's because of the end thunder. Oh, that's what it is. It must be. <laughs> Alright, so I finally have some CP to finish some menuing here. I can get this early. And then this is why we, that's what we really need, that ATV segment for Vanille. Because we have an Eidolon fight coming up with her. She's going to be doing all the chain building. And that extra ATV segment makes a humongous difference. I think it's like 30 seconds in the fight, but also makes the fight a lot easier. It just lines everything up really well. Yeah, I imagine the shifts would be really off if you yeah. didn't have that segment. It'd be super awkward. Especially since we have to sit and send all a lot with Fang. So there's nothing to even shift to. And it's not like you can change your paradigms before the fight. Because it's a two-person fight. So there's no way to get that party set up ahead of time. Alright, sir, please turn. Thank you. Whoa, what was that? Looks like it was like, just well, like tear to the right. <laughs> yeah, a little bit of a camera glitch there. Yeah. This is a great port. Oh, yeah. Oh, they make only the best PC ports. It's true. Honestly, compared to like the other games in the trilogy, this port's pretty good. Yeah. There is much more stuff than the other ones. I think 10 2 or 13 2 is the big culprit in terms of PC ports. That game has some really big issues on PC. Yeah. This game, you just get some lag here and there. Yeah. That's Frame good. drops. Yeah. Some funkiness with some mechanics, but nothing too serious. 
All right, so this is Hecaton. He hurts. So we're just going to fang tank everything for me. Like a true friend she is. Okay, I thought she was going to miss everything, but she always landed <laughs> one thing. So better than I expected. So the best way, funnily enough, the best way to build your salt in this fight is to still cast debuffs. Hit or no hit, between like alternating them for conditionals and just like being debuffs, it's the most efficient thing you can do. You also do have access to Vanille Ravager here, but it's just it's not worth it. Unless you have like a shroud. Oh, that's a weird pattern. Okay, should be fine. Two two strings here. So Hecaton's attacks. He has the pattern to mill. Something so he has like two strings of like pummel something something. Pummel something something, and then uh, it's counter or force projection. But he also has Quake, which he could do solo, and he could do like for example, okay, I'm missing inputs. Quake. No, I got that off <laughs> just in time. I'm missing so many inputs right now, what's happening? Uh, the most dangerous string by far is Quake Quake Counter. If all three hits hit you, you're, it's like 100 to 0, you straight up. Alright, I'm going to have to shift a little early here. Probably on like 3. Um, that's not good. I should just go straight into Potion. Okay, I should be safe now, but... Uh... I don't have Phoenix down, so... Get away uh, from a second, Don! <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're okay. fine. Yeah. I think he did counter there. If he did one more attack plus counter, I would have died. <laughs> really close. Uh, no, he, he got one more string. Oh, come on, Vanille. She landed it. Yeah. <laughs> I guess I'm just not good at calculating it. <laughs> All right. Pretty not even time. scared. No, not even close. In words of Vanille, that wasn't scary at all. <laughs> she didn't look down. <laughs> it was flawless. <laughs> all right. We have another really big walking segment here. We're just going to be walking for like 15 minutes. So if there are any announcements, this is a nice time. Oh, of course we got some announcements over here. I have a $25 donation from Zinitario with no comment, but thank you for the kind donation. We have $10 from Seaglance. It's a shout out to my boys, Zero and RJ. Boy. Glad to see <laughs> them getting the opportunity to show off the games they love. Much love to great friends. Thanks so much, Sieg. Thanks, Sieg Lance. And we have $50 from Sanjin that just says, Yeehaw! <laughs> Yeehaw! <laughs> Working hard as ever, <laughs> Casty! <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> You're going to be hearing a lot of that in the two run <laughs> on Sunday. <laughs> oh, man. Thank you so much. This run has been a little bit on Yeehaw, but. <laughs> 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 or uh, I can do. On Yeehaw. <laughs> <laughs> Yeehaw. Yeehaw. <laughs> All right, I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look at that. The balls are so nice. <laughs> Just ran away from me. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, there isn't too much to talk about here. So uh, I could, we can go back to the story for a little bit. Essentially, at the end of chapter 10, we got, got into a big fight, and then we decided we're going to go back to Pulse, which is where Felsi, uh, which is where Fang and Vanu are from. They're from a town called Erba. I tried. <laughs> <laughs> that bomb, like, sprinted right, right when I decided to go. It was too late. <laughs> I had no choice. Uh, so this chapter is all about us getting to Erba in the hopes of finding some way to, like, break our focus and, you know, not destroy Cocoon. Uh, it's just a very long journey there. Uh, their full names, by the way, it's Vanille de Erba and I think Bang Yon Erba. I could be wrong. I read it in the Final Fantasy 13 wiki, like <laughs> today. <laughs> 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 well, the Vanille I knew. I think it's Bang being different. That's the part I didn't know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Erba is also just gorgeous. It's like one of my favorite towns in the whole series. It's got an amazing atmosphere to it, and the music is very good. I'm very much looking forward to that. But uh, to get there, we got to go for this tunnel, ride this giant fan fell sea. That's like a rolling armadillo thing. You see him over there? I forget his name. Then we get to go through Solia Springs, where I'm also a big fan of the music. But there's literally nothing that happens there gameplay-wise. It's like just a few dodges and they're all really easy. 
Then we have to go through the Palisades, which leads us to Tygen's Tower, and no time has ever been lost in Tygen's Tower. <laughs> no, completely free. <laughs> It's a reference to one of Logic Dolphin's run, one of the most OG runners for this game. In fact, he did it in, in 2016 here. Um, one of his runs, he was like, yeah, no time can be lost in Tygen's Tower. He proceeded to lose a lot of time in Tygen's Tower. <laughs> Tygen's Tower will actually be the only, um, act, only missions we'll see in this run. We haven't really talked about that, but once we enter Chapter 11, we unlock missions, which are like these stone. You can talk to these stones. They'll give us like some fight to do, and we go do the fight, and I'll finish the mission. And to progress the story, we have to do missions in Taijin's Tower, where there's no optional missions that we do. But that's kind of like the side content of this game, doing the missions. There's 64 in total. You have to do some more than once to unlock uh, another one, so you have to do probably like 80-something missions total. I still have never done them all casually. I kind of feel bad about that. They I tend to give you some equipment or uh, accessories. Yeah, they give you a reward for the first time, and then there's like a repeat reward that's different than normally worse. Mm -hmm. Missions are really good in rando, though. You can get all sorts of fun stuff. Uh, speaking of rando, this game has a fantastic rando. It actually breaks story progression. You can start in any chapter, go wherever you want. Highly recommend it. It's one of my, my favorite randos I've ever done. I've only done two, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's a really cool shout outs to Bart's for working and making uh, that random. Bartandalus? Yes. Hmm. Bart Bartandalus 24. It's Bart's 24, so Bartandalus 24. <laughs> <laughs> Turns out there's 21 more Bart's. We only fight three in this game. I guess the other is our post, con post game content yeah. or something. <laughs> the Bartandalus gauntlet. I'd actually be kind of cool. Uh, like, you know how some games have like a uh, boss rush, you know, yeah. kind of thing. We just fight part four, part five, part six, part seven, and so <laughs> forth. Also, a really big chest we just passed. It contains one whole Seaf tier. Uh, it's like one of the worst organic components in the game. <laughs> so we get to see that in chapter 11, three hours into the run. It's like, oh, would you, need, would you like some help? Here's the Seaf tier that sells for 10, uh, 10 gil. That's what I was about to ask. I was like, I don't think they're worth much either. Yeah, it's completely pointless. I, I guess they put it there for plot reasons. Yeah, there's been a lot of Seaf crying here. So here's a Seaf tier. Some dog dodges coming up, our yeah. favorites. Uh, I forget these guys' actual name, but um, there is a dog in the hallway coming up. He's named after one of our community members, Mr. Zwanzwing. <laughs> I've been told the backstory behind it. I don't remember it, so I apologize. But uh, he likes to give you hugs. And, you know, it's 2023. COVID happened. So we got to dodge the hugs. <laughs> Sadly, I would love to hug Mr. Zwanzwing, but here we are. All right, so I need to wait for the San Francisco to fly. Wait, he was so late. I think it's because I did my dodges so fast. We're going up there. Right, um, yeah, I'm going to cancel it early. If you get far enough there, you can cancel your Deceptisol after you pass the next dodge, which is two dogs. But uh, it's, it's going to be kind of sketchy if I do that, so I'm going to cancel it early. We're going to do a dodge manually. This dodge is actually pretty rough because they're dogs. Haha, <laughs> get it? <laughs> no, can you please explain? <laughs> <laughs> so you see... Dogs Please in the don't. real world. Please don't. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's legitimately difficult because we have to get into a really thin doorway and then block it. That's the real reason it's rough. All right. uh, the trick is kind of go more to the right, so when they chase you, you can dodge to the left towards the doorway. Makes it a lot easier. I wasn't expecting you to try a Decepticons <laughs> to retry. Honestly. No, I just, I'm more worried about what losing a decept. Better do that at plus than do Penango and Aesop plus. Well, yeah. I think I could have made it, but it's just, it would have been very close. Oh, no, I meant like go through the door with the Aesop, then come back out and cancel it again. Yeah. That's what I was expecting. It, it would have been very close to like me losing that Aesop. It's one of those things where you kind of have to base it off how far you got before the Amphisbana saw you, and I didn't trust it. There's also another trick you can do to like get past that dodge. It's called a battle team swap. Sometimes when you swap your leader, or not necessarily your leader, when you swap like two characters in your battle team, you can just swap their order. The game will like make enemies stop moving. Hmm. But for some reason, for myself and some other runners, all of a sudden it just stopped working. So we don't do it anymore. <laughs> Phantom patch. Yeah. Again. <laughs> Again. They keep patching the game. <laughs> There's no other explanation possible. <laughs> Alright, so...
so we got our first mission coming up. We are going to be fighting a big old Gelatitan. And this is actually an interesting part of the run, because these fights are, I want to call them impossible without preempting. I haven't tried it, so, but very impractical, I think, would cover it pretty well. So we will be doing manual preempts on because we can farm Deceph for all these, and uh, like, that takes time, of course. Um, they all have their unique setups for the most part. Gel Titan's kind of cool because you have to lure him uh, towards you and then uh, back up. And when he starts backing, he'll back up and then turn away. Uh, the one after that is Bellows. We kind of just have to run at his side, of, or at least uh, one of his friends, the uh, Cryptos. Here's Mr. Zwantic right there. And then uh, the final one, Gurringetch, we just got to go for the booty. Pretty nice Mr. Zwantic. Yeah. That's the first time. Yeah, and the second <laughs> time is generally harder. Hey. Give me some space. Back up. Just mind your business. <laughs> at least he didn't extend his arms at you. Yeah. It, it's kind of funny because if he actually swings at you, his arms go way past. <laughs> like, you'll be in the corner and he'll get you. Yeah. You literally cannot create more distance. He'll, he'll catch you. <laughs> he just, like, comes up to you and he's like, okay. And then he just <laughs> walks away. <laughs> also, it's a little bit counterintuitive to know who you have to, like, what buttons you have to press to buff the character you're trying to buff. So there's like, you gotta think of little tricks to remember. My trick here, bottom floor is you press down, top floor is you press up. It's a nice way to remember. Uh, we're gonna do one more string before I shift. Because either way, we're not gonna be able to squeeze in another refresh. And this way I get more chain building. All right, wait for him to launch because if I don't, Snow will definitely launch him out of <laughs> My damage is kind of low again. Oh, it wasn't out. It was, a, it was a snow miss attack. Manuel did an aurora, aurora and snow whiffed his launch. That's what that was. Otherwise, it looked fine. All right. So now we start our second mission. And uh, this will be the first fight where we summon a Vanille. And we can see why the bids went towards the English voices. <laughs> <laughs> I see about two people in the audience know <laughs> what's about to happen. <laughs> All right, ah, wait, oops. I normally swap my battle team first. All right. So Vanille's Idol and Hecaton is actually very good for clearing fights. He does a ton of damage. But uh, the finishing move, wow, that was really hard to dodge. Thanks, Wanzig. Yeah, we did get hugged after all. <laughs> um, the finishing move has some unique sound effects, or sound, voice lines maybe is a better way to describe it. I don't know. Oof, tried it uh, again. That should always work. Okay. In theory. <laughs> okay, that was on me. Uh, for some reason, I've been struggling with this lately. I thought I had it figured out, but I guess not. All right. So the trick is to just dodge. <laughs> as opposed to not dodge. Yeah, to just do it. It's just a timing thing. You kind of, I kind of went a little bit too late there on the second try. The first try was just weird because normally when they run like that, when it's like short distance between you and the dog and start running, they generally don't like lunge at you. They run past you, so you have to dodge it differently. You kind of have to like turn around, like let them run past you, and then go behind them. I thought that's where it was gonna go. Right. So the one thing I'm not hoping for is for Bellows, the one in the middle, to just sprint at me. Don't sprint at me, please. All right, cool. Free fight. If he sprints at you, he can actually hit you and interrupt you. It's still safe, but it gets a little, a little bit sketchier and you need to do more hits. So you can watch the damage. Like, Hecaton actually does a lot. Yeah, hell yeah. That's all I mean damage. It's the Force Blasters. Boom. It's like, what was that? Like, maybe a six for his HP? Luckily, our stagger isn't long enough to just kill him without those, so we have to do our finisher. But that's actually kind of a cool thing, <laughs> for reasons. <laughs> oh, I just realized there was going to be one less Vanille Summon fight, because I'm going to have to do Lightning Bulwarker. So, that's disappointing. You just have to <laughs> enjoy them more. Right? Yeah, you, enjoy, you have to enjoy them while they last. <laughs> I think we only have one more with an angle, and then we're done. Yeah. That sounds right. Yeah, dang it. <laughs> oh no, we still have Banner Statue and Jabberwocky. Oh yeah. So one more in Chapter 13. How could we forget them? I wish I could forget them. 
No, it's actually not that bad of a fight once you understand it. Yeah, there is some luck involved, but you can play around everything for the most part. I don't mind that fight so much. Well, it was fun figuring out old backups for the weird variations. All right, is that enough booty? I think so. Yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, wow. Oh, <laughs> that was that was a jerk move. He started turning at the worst possible time. <laughs> Say what about my booty? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, come on. I wasn't trying to enter the battle zone. It's just like when I turn, you entered. I'm going to have to wait a while here. All right, show me the booty. Show me the booty. I can't even use that. That's your side. Tyngens is going swimmingly. Absolutely no time. Yeah, no time can be lost in Tyngens. <laughs> Alright, this guy's weak to water, so we have to do slightly different spells, but same kind of pattern we've been following. Buffs. Vanille does debuffs. And then we DPS. Got all my debuffs early. Alright, please don't do Aurora. Damn it. I said please and everything. Yeah. Blitz is like kind of whiff. Apparently he attacks too too. Okay. <laughs> I actually don't think I've seen that before. You could say that this has never happened before. <laughs> I'm glad I'm just like ruining my commentator's days with these terrible <laughs> jokes. <laughs> this has made this run so much more enjoyable for me. <laughs> my stomach hurts. <laughs> Mine too. <laughs> I'm definitely getting to a point where I'm like really tired. I know you especially so because you haven't slept in like 24 hours. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> I feel like I'm at my peak. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that means the doubt that the fall down. Is <laughs> yeah, I guess that means it's over. But <laughs> <laughs> it's all downhill from here. All right, this is like a less bad version of like the two dog dodge we did earlier. Because these guys can definitely block the doorway He's like that. Thank you for demonstrating. <laughs> oh. Okay. I actually had that. That was on me. I thought he would be a little bit more to the side. I will say this has not been the best run showcase, but I mean, what can you do? It's not like I can reset. <laughs> do we have time for that? And <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think so. Shame. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> we should still be fine for rest of it, I think. That's it's fairly generous, unless the, we meet the incentives and those fights go really badly. That's when I'll start to get a little bit worrisome. I keep forgetting about them. Yeah. yeah. I Even though I donated to them. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for that, by the way. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I just remember I still have that bonus for, for Bar 2. I have not done Fortis Bar 2 in like a year. <laughs> So I should totally go for it right now. Say, so will the money correct itself by chapter 13, or can you just save it? It's already it fine. It's okay. already fine. <laughs> it's, as long as it's fine at the menu in the shop, we'll be good. Okay. I'm a little bit worried, but I could probably just get away with buying less items, maybe, if it's really tight. Or less wicked things. We'll see. I probably will start off with Lenora's just to be safe instead of going straight to Unicorn Mart in case it is that tight. Because I was short and I had to sell Blessed early, so I can't sell that now. That's 6k difference, but I think we're okay. There's also some items you can pick up here, but I forget where they are, so we're not going to do that. <laughs> I've run with like one Warriors for Spend 10 before, plenty, but I don't think I've ever run with two Warriors for Spend 10s. So I don't want to do that. <laughs> it's probably okay, but... That's not. Also, we have probably the hardest preempt to do manually that we do in this run right here. So we have the Mishusu preempt. It's like a two birds and uh, I don't know what to describe Mishusu as. All the enemies of his type, we just call Mishusus because I don't know any of the other names. <laughs> so it's hard to come up with a name for him. But it's an interesting setup where we lure him to the edge of the battle zone and we go past them on the elevator. So they kind of like turn away and back up. But, uh, sometimes you get trolled here by the birds. They just catch you. Like I thought that guy was about to do. Yes. Oh my god. That was on me again. I wanted him to get a little bit closer, but not that close. <laughs> ah. uh, Alright, well, just do it again. 
Yeah, that's more than far enough. I don't like the bird positions, though. The bird positions are really sketchy. Yeah, that's what I thought. The bird is literally just facing me. It's like the downside of doing this manually. You can get locked like that where there's just nothing you can do. Bird just looks at you. Just sitting there menacingly. <laughs> oh, I don't think that worked. Yeah, I was still at the battle zone. Kind of surprised. I thought that was more than good enough. All right. Well, this is not a good chapter 11. <laughs> I think it's official. That's all right. That just means there's room for better chapters going forward. Yeah, because that's generally how it goes. The end game chapters are the ones that go well. Wait, what? Are you there already? <laughs> Wait, they didn't see me. I did, oh my god. <laughs> what is happening? This is something I probably should have practiced before the run. <laughs> I forgot about this. It's not that hard. I've done that like a hundred times. It's just um, unlucky. There we go. All right. Woo, we did it. And now we die. <laughs> First try. <laughs> this can't kill you. Like they, uh, The birds can deprotect. And then you can die if they target Saz afterwards, or who's target Saz. Well, you also have to protect. All right, that's looking good. Get bravery. Ah, uh, Saz didn't kill his bird, sadly. Or Saz, um, snow. Wasn't me or his attacks weirdly paced there. No problem. Hi. I don't know. <laughs> it looked weird. It was like normally he has like one slow attack at the end of his finisher where he does like the ground pound sort of. But uh, that one's usually slower. But I feel like he did like one, two, three. <laughs> Instead of like usually one, two, three, you know? Yeah. Uh, it's fine. All right. So we got some, we got a lot of downtime here if we have any announcements. We're going to be running around for like five minutes. All righty. We have a $5 donation from Magius. It says, I just got to donate during one of the more underrated Final Fantasy games. We also have a $25 do donation from Sun Diener. It says, props to the production and tech crews for all you do for RPG Limit Break. Thank you so much. And uh, I would love to echo that sentiment as well. Again, uh, without the tech crew, we would not be back up and running uh, with this run here. And lastly, we have a $150 donation from Sweaty. No comment, but thank you so much for that generous donation. Uh, I also want to take a quick moment here and show some love for our community artist, LLK, who, decide, uh, who designed the RPG Limit Break logo, and Mega Weasel, and It's Casa, who are responsible for some of the emotes that you gain access to by subscribing to the channel. All revenue from subs and the ads we run will go to help us run future RPG Limit Break marathons. But fret not, 100% of all donations go straight to Nami. Thank you so much. I think you did tech crew. I can clap right now, so I want. let's do a quick clap <laughs> <laughs> while I'm on the elevator. All right, so here's one of the interesting things about Taijin's. This is the first spot where there's a two viable mission orders. We can either do Penanguin first, I forget, I think that's mission 26, or Vitala first, which is mission 25. And traditionally, until very recently, we would always do Vitala first because the pathing makes more sense. But the big benefit of doing Penanguin first is the reward for the mission is a diamond bangle which gives you 500 more HP, so you're much less likely to die. Also, check out this dodge. Real quick. We did it! <laughs> <laughs> I think a uh, runner by the name of Olsen was just like, he failed that a few times in his run, so he was trying to find a setup for it. And at some point, he just like let go of his controller and it worked. <laughs> so that became the dodge technique for that fight. I love it. But uh, yeah, we did Vitala first for a long time, and we finally switched to Penanguin first because found a way to like consolidate the menus a little bit better before the menuing was significantly worse. And, and then like movement time and everything considered, it's maybe like three seconds slower, but Vitala becomes a lot safer because Vitala is a very dangerous fight. And he like does a lot of big AOE, and without the diamond bangle, then you can just get one shot. Which, uh, yeah, not good because she has to hit debuffs enough. Like, you need to protect and imperil. Or at least deep protect, or at least one of them. <laughs> but ideally, both. You really want both. She's also responsible for keeping you alive with medic. She has a lot of stuff going on. And speaking of, we got to make her leader for the coming fight. So I got to do a menu here. All right, default, rav, rav, and send, and then rav. Make her leader. 
One of the big changes of the route was we also changed up the tall strat. We used to do smart bomb gorilla, and now we do double gorilla. It works better with the stats we have. All right, you got the chest here, right? Yeah. Don't want to forget any more weapons this run. <laughs> All right, so coming up with Fenanguin. So for the more wild runners, you can actually do this without a decept, but it's like a 25 second setup minimum, and it's wildly inconsistent to do the preempt here. So no, no one really goes for this, but technically if you want to cut a decept and you were really good at this or really lucky, I don't know which it really is, <laughs> it is something you can do. Why be good when you can be lucky? Oh, you should be both, ideally. <laughs> <laughs> Nice, no, this looks good. Alright, Snow do some stuff. You can also die here if they just like hard focus her. I've had that happen more than once. Alright. Can you not? Do you guys hear her sucking back to like hot yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Slap, slap, <laughs> slap, <laughs> slap. <laughs> The deaths come when it's like, stop, 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 stop. <laughs> hey, we got two Seep tiers. So we, it's good that we skipped that chest earlier. <laughs> you actually kind of don't want any of the junk that drops here. It's just something you have to sell to clear your inventory. Yeah. Just annoying. I mean, it doesn't sell for much, it's just time wasting time. Yeah, exactly. Ten ten gil isn't gonna make a difference. So a fun little story. Um I originally learned this run on PS3 and at some point I got record, took a little break, and then I figured might as well do some PC runs. So at one point I had a very nice paced run, and I made a Crystarium mistake and I needed to get some more CP. So I fought one of these guys right here. I preempted him, I had I have no idea how to fight these guys. So I took two minutes on that fight. I still be world record by like 15 seconds or something. <laughs> that was hilarious. And then Kaya got record back the next day. <laughs> all right, yeah, sell this, sell this, sell this. And then sell all these random things, but not the particle accelerators. Those are important. We definitely want to keep those. All right, yeah, we're good on money. Oh, we're extra good because I only need to buy 39 here with... Uh, change I'm making. There's no way we need the elixir bar 2, right? What can go wrong? <laughs> well, second elixir to be specific. Let me just finish the menu and I'll explain what I'm talking about. I didn't need that, but... Hey, look at my gill! One, 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 one! Hey. <laughs> that was routed. <laughs> Calculated. Really important I don't go into Commando there. I killed my last practice run like that. The CP for stats from this point on is really precise. You only need to get Ravager. Uh, if you get anything that you're not supposed to get, you're short for Cold Blood before PC1, which is a humongous problem. That skill is vital to a fight. It's one of the most common ways to kill your run, just like get something unintentional with Saz. One of the things, few things that's really difficult to recover. Although you can still do PC1. You would just take like a five, six minute fight instead of a minute and a half fight. And it'd be slightly less impressive blindfolded too. Yes. <laughs> you would just literally sit in tireless charge for five minutes. <laughs> well, I have been, you'll heal you as you DPS. We're also getting into like the late game, Chris, where there's like more nodes around and you can start seeing a little bit of lag here. I don't know if it's visible on stream. It's still fine. It's like nearly 60 FPS. But um, if you lag a lot here, you actually lose time. Like, this is one of the few places where frame drops actually slow you down. All right, Warriors Wristband. No, so front and Warriors Wristband 2. Sword Mark and Diamond Angle. I know how to menu. You lied. All right. Then we're going to upgrade some more Warriors Wristbands, get some more physical strength. Uh, two. And we're going to use the free particle accelerators that we luckily did not sell here. These are really good. They give you a ton of CP. Or a ton of EXP. 
or your gear. But they're not as gear efficient as superconductors. Um, so even if you had a choice between those two, you would go for the superconductors. Right. So here's Vitala. This fight, unless you're very unlucky, should be pretty straightforward now. The old guys leave. So we just like buff people up, wait for Vanille to hit stuff and stagger. Oh, I can delay my renew. Because uh, only Snow got hit. Normally all three get hit there. Nice, I got Imperil. I don't actually have to use my Renew at all. It's kind of weird. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen that. <laughs> it's definitely like an optional thing. No. Wait. What just happened there? Uh, I don't know. I think Vanille finished. Yeah, maybe. I, I think I just ate my Snow's ATV or something. I thought I was uh, ready animation canceling, but I couldn't see him behind Vitala, so I probably just mistimed it. All right. Oh, so uh, this is a good time to ask. Did the donation for Blindfolded the Haka got met, get met? Because that's coming up really soon. So, not only did Blindfolded the Haka get met, but Blindfolded Proud Clyde also got met. So shout out to the chat for making those incentives pop. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm excited for Blindfolded the Haka. Blindfolded the Haka is a cool one. Uh, Blindfolded PC one, I'm kind of terrified by. I was practicing before the run. My success rate's like 10%, so I'm sure we'll hit it. Hey, like two of the successes were today. True, today it's like 66%. Yeah. <laughs> so it's all about what sample size we choose. Let's make it 75. Yeah, let's hope so. Uh, it's a fight, honestly, where even if you play perfectly, you can just still die. So that's uh, another scary thing about it. But it's, it's unusual, and the strat I'll be using is like extra safe in that regard. We spend a lot more time with Neil Medic, so as long as the targeting isn't abysmally unlucky, it should be fine. I'll give you guys a brief rundown of the Haka before we can get there. So the Haka is like this big Felci that's actually been stalking us throughout this tower. That's why we've been doing the missions. These statue guys help us deal with the Haka and like open up the tower so we can get to the top. And I cut off his tail at the end, so he's weaker. But he's like a big Felci, he's a guardian of the tower, he doesn't want us to pass. And casually, this is like the first fight that a lot of people really struggle on. He has some humongous attacks, he can do a lot of damage, he's, he's scary. But the trick is... You just gotta kill him before he kills you. <laughs> <laughs> not, not even kidding, because if you kill him fast enough, he never gets to his big attacks, essentially. Uh, his big attacks are like, do a bunch of debuffs, do a lot of damage. As long as we stagger fast enough and kill him before he can recover, we avoid all of that. It's a little bit more challenging if you're blindfolded, but it's not too bad. It's actually one of the most safe fights in the run, funnily enough. <laughs> It's also a fantastic showcase of how much debuffs, buffs, and like Saz Blitz that just like stack. You'll see me doing from like, it'll be like near full HP and you'll just see me do a ton of damage. I'll go from like 90% to zero in like 20 seconds. Yeah, something <laughs> like that. All right, I'm gonna do a menu here real quick. Oh, I always do that. Uh, rav, Rav, and then. Grab and send. That good. I'm just gonna make sure before I get into this blindfolded. <laughs> Why is it not killing? <laughs> oh, I'm doing. I got the completely wrong setup. That would explain it. Um. Okay. A little. Fortunate. All right, guys, get the blindfold ready. It's time. I think we can start setting up once. No, we're putting it on now. You yeah. said get it ready. <laughs> I said ready. I still got to run for the fight. <laughs> also, for sound guy, if you can mute them for me and uh, up my game volume, that'd be great. We're going to say so many weird things about you. <laughs> <laughs> Just nod. <laughs> yeah, I agree. <laughs> Uh, once I skip the first cutscene, you can probably start putting it on. And wish me luck, guys. This is going to be my first time doing it with the setup. All right. All right, here you go. Let's do it. We're tag teaming this. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. There we go. All right. Time to get serious. Going down, thanks. 
Alright, good. Vanille hit it in peril. Getting his buffs up now. Yeah, and just as a reminder, he can't hear us at all. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is one of the best uh, Saz lines during a battle. Whoa. So he's not specifically weak to thunder, um, to lightning attacks, but it's just the easiest one to choose. Um, so just any end spell will make it so he does more damage. That was really bad, but I actually reacted. I don't know what he reacted to. <laughs> <laughs> he knows the fight better than me, blindfolded. <laughs> so he's staggered now. He has both Imperil and Deep Protect, so... I'm, uh, I think he was going for a debuff. Um, now it's just blitzing and re getting refreshes until he's dead. This is where his health is going to just plummet down. Um, Vanille is building this, the stagger bar up, so it's only doing more damage as the fight goes on, and you can see like 22,000 per uh -huh. blitz. And he's really close, so he's hitting most of the shots. <laughs> this should... Yeah, this is going to kill. The snow right there. There we go. All right. Yeah. Perfect. What happened? What I missed? Uh, I think you know more about the fight than I do, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> All I heard, I've actually never had this in a practice run before. So uh, the Hawk has a move called Foul Utterance, which removes the debuffs of whoever it hits. And that was the latest I've ever like, had it happen. Because I want to make sure Snow is buffed after that attack, or I'll just remove the buffs. That's who it hit, too. Yeah, because he provokes. It only hits Snow. Oh, okay. Yeah. So he's like, the guy knows everything. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I've never had him happen and do that late. I was about to do the buffs, and I heard the start of the sound. So I was like, oh, I can actually react. When you said I reacted to that, I was like, I have no idea what he reacted to. <laughs> <laughs> well, he knows the fight better than I do blindfolded. <laughs> Yeah, it's the first time I've ever heard of that late. That was, um, it's a good thing I have a headset. When I was practicing this, I was practicing it with monitor speakers. Yeah. So that was the gravity room. It was so much nicer with a headset. <laughs> All right, so here's a menu I haven't done in like a year. We're going to do the menu for Fort War II, which is a bit different. We don't have a gorilla. We instead have two smart bombs. And we'll probably leave a relentless and... No, I'm going to do diversity. I don't want to do relentless. And otherwise, it's mostly the same, I think. I have to t I'm telling myself so I can yeah. remember how it goes. <laughs> I think the main difference is just on the paradigm where you would buff, you just have as a Ravager. Yeah. is the main you, difference. Exactly. It's also more, more prone to not getting debuffs. And there's no, like, the renew timing isn't as good. There's a lot of, like, little things I don't like about it. But if it goes well, it is a nice time save compared to no fort. All right. Now let's do that anyway, I guess. Rav. Rav, Sab, I will make you a medic. Just be safe. Uh, med and Rav. Oh, we should note that we're now in Oerba. Ah, uh, yes. Welcome <laughs> to Oerba, guys. One of my probably my favorite place in this game. You get this beautiful song called "Dust to Dust." I I love it. So. We haven't really mentioned it to our man. I think maybe I mentioned it once. But this is Vanille and Fang's hope. Uh, hope. <laughs> hope. <laughs> He's back. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, we were hoping to find like answers to like how we can get away like for our focus of destroying Cocoon. But uh, yeah, it's just ruins. Everyone is gone. Everyone that they knew is dead. A little bit depressing. <laughs> Also, you see all these Seif here? So uh, I mentioned earlier, a Seif is a human that got turned into a Seif and failed their focus. So yeah, this is probably like their friends and family. <laughs> if you wanted it, <laughs> there's a really messed up theory that the smaller Seif are kids. And you got like these crawlers here. <laughs> so these could be uh, failed focus children. Um, it's not confirmed or anything, but that's like a fan theory out there. Pretty dark stuff. <laughs> Those are always accurate, though. Fan theories. Yeah, yeah for sure. They always make complete sense. 
I mean, for the Suikoden people that have to be here, we all know that Nekworth is Hugo's <laughs> father. <laughs> I know a lot of people won't get that reference, but for those of you that do, that's for you. <laughs> Somewhere in the world, Zeglance is trying to refund his donation. <laughs> <laughs> So um, there's like this website like made in the ancient times of the internet called, I think, SuikoX. Mm -hmm. And it had like a lot of funny theories on it, like fan theories. And if you combine two of them together, a lot of them are revolving around who like a uh, character from Freeze, father is. Uh, main, well, one of the main characters, his name's Hugo. And just like all the attributes they assigned to um, his father are something that like a main villain from one and two, who's a vampire <laughs> meat, that Gordon. So we just started joking around that, uh, well, not joking, it's serious. I probably will leave this. Very serious. <laughs> yeah. He's definitely his father. <laughs> oh, this is, uh, so this fly right here is called Seeker Bridge. You got these two Seekers, and they're on the bridge. It's a pretty cool dodge. So you got to wear him out a bit, and then we decept. And we got to wait for this guy to tuck his arm in like that. And that's how you get past it. Nice. Yeah. It's a cute little dodge. It's a really fun setup. They lost you, so the one gives the other one a hug real quick. <laughs> one arm hug. <laughs> <laughs> and this Vitala is conveniently placed where you can just cancel it Yeah, right on the other side. So if I ever mess up my CP, this is actually my backup CP fight. Since we're a good bit stronger since we fought the first Vitala and we can kind of steal the strap from ourselves. <laughs> we have like a pretty good setup for it. Sadly, we don't have Soul Front on Saz anymore, which is like gives us auto shell. So, but we also have more stats than we did before since we got a lot of CP from killing the Haka. So it's generally pretty manageable. The problem is I don't remember what strat I used. <laughs> so if I did have to do that, it would have been scary. Also, this is technically a form of bird bridge as well. But no. Ooh. Oh, at the very end. Since like the path is open, there's like nothing I could do to dodge. Damn. Uh, the way they cycle a lot of the time, they're like kind of off sync with each other. Watch these main pistol now. On the retry, they're more synced up, so the retry should be better. Yeah, they didn't even see me. You. <laughs> yeah. Uh, honestly, I think I played that to best of my abilities. It just was a pattern that was unfortunate. Alright, we gotta use a Fortisol here. I forgot about that. <laughs> And the Nature Soul as well. And there's another E for Soul. Alright, wish me luck. This is a pretty cool but complicated fight, and I haven't done the fourth strat in ages. It's a perfect time. Yeah. Do <laughs> you want to explain some of the stuff here, or should I do it? Um. Slime art. <laughs> 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 this is one of the fights I actually know pretty well. Um, you want Vanille to get some debuffs, uh, particularly Deprotect and uh, Imperil in this uh, phase. Um, typically, nice. you'd want to, you'd then switch and start buffing your party, but since he has a Fortisol, he doesn't have to do that anymore. Is that an early uh, stagger, or is that just because of the stat strat? Uh, it was both, I think. Okay. So now he has all the debuffs that he needs, so he's just going to build some stagger, um, uh, heal up the party, um, and then switch over to uh, Tireless Charge, and yeah, and just trying to get some blitzes off to get his damage down. If you do a, too much damage, you can actually push his health low enough to where he does a move called uh, Thalnos and Laughter, which you saw on the previous smart fight. Oh no, that one was smile. There's a oh, big okay. difference. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, this one does damage to the entire party rather than to one or two mm -hmm. people, and it also does more damage than you have health Although. at this point. So you have to time it with the Renew. I purposely um, went damage push. Um, so he did push the Laughter just so he can summon through it. Yeah, it makes the fight a lot easier, just slower. Yeah. Um, and now he's going to do Apoptosis, which if he didn't have a summon up would reduce, uh, take away all the buffs from your party as well as his own debuffs. It's still going to take away the debuffs, but you keep your buffs so it makes the second phase easier. And by doing the final um, action of the summon, it cancels out the party debuff being removed. Now we're just going to try to get debuffs up again, re-stagger him, and then kill him yeah. in that stagger, which should be, as long as the debuffs go up, it should be fine. Yeah. And he doesn't do any, like, dazes or pains. or yeah. Not too many, at least. We can recover yeah. a lot, but if he just goes nuts on me, it'll yeah. be hard. There's the one D protect. Perfect. Um, just need an imperil from here, and then we can um, uh, stagger him and kill him. We also got lucky in that we didn't lose vigilance at all. He can yes. remove that. And you cannot... 
refresh vigilance since you do not have a synergist in yeah. the party, so that would be rough. Um, we're still oh, waiting on in peril. It is. Okay. Um, oh, one pair of them again. No. Okay. Well, she should throw some now. I should, I should elixir. Oh, yeah. That's uh, part of the fight. <laughs> Not dying is a good yeah. idea. I'm now going into diversity just because Vanille will keep them topped off. And uh, this is a little bit less of a scary window when you got the play after push already because you know he's not going to do that. Um, probably going to die in this tireless charge coming up just based on where his health is at. Um, overall, about as smooth as that fight can go with a four resolve. Yeah, that was good. Yeah. Not fast, but good. <laughs> yeah. Well, purple after push, it's fine. Um, so like without a four to soul, uh, no after push. Good fight is around like two twenty. So okay, so about the same. Then. Yeah, but, but you push left and make yeah. it safe. Exactly. All in all, not bad. I will take that. Yeah. You didn't die, so it was fast. Yeah, but that's actually <laughs> one of the hardest fights to learn when you're still learning. It took me probably ten hours to get a few tries past them. <laughs> so I feel better about myself now. <laughs> yeah. it, it's a really hard fight. It was like three hours. <laughs> I mean, I think yeah, I beat him once point. in three hours, but then I had to, like, yeah. I wanted to learn the fight. I was having fun, so. Yeah. I think it took me 10 hours to kind of, like, learn, through, like, my, what I needed to do if I was at notes, and. Yeah. PC2 is the one that took me and pretty much everyone else the most time, I think. Yeah, that fight <laughs> is so hard to learn. No. Right. Don't. So, welcome to Chapter 12. We are now in Eden, which is, like, the capital cocoon. And we're going to uh, go be the Bartleby. At least that's our plan. <laughs> Kill the FLC, ignore our focus, save Cocoon. Uh, this fight's kind of interesting on PC, because you purposely have to delay some of your Storm Blades, which are Razor Gale. Uh, yeah, I know, my, I know the moves of these things. <laughs> uh, or they'll miss some hits, and you'll have to Zontet, which is slower. It's a 15 second animation. I'm always, these cutscene timings are always awkward. All right. We got a little bit of a cameraman up here we can point out. So at the end of like this little segment, there'll be a bulwarker. And we can set him up to like instantly get him in a good position to cancel our decept by camera tricking. What we do is we camera trick and we just stay camera tricked until we enter the next battle zone. Like our screen will flash red and that's a great visual marker. And we just lift our camera up. You can see he hasn't started moving yet right when we do it. So you can see he was still in like the back there kind of like staring away. And perfect position. All right. Uh, we do have to do D plus full worker. Not this one, but like a different fight. Yeah. I'm a little bit nervous about that, but we'll be fine. Yeah, but nothing ever goes wrong on that fight. Totally consistent. Definitely. Uh, no, wrong one. No, wrong one again. <laughs> <laughs> Don't need to touch you. All right, so you kind of have to be careful, Christy. I have lost some world record base runs by just not paying attention going too far here. We got to make sure we stop in the right spots. Uh, I should have gotten Snow's Calm, actually. Uh, so this menu is normally done earlier if you have a, or later if you have a D-Set, but because we don't have one and we want the stats now, we're going to do it earlier. The problem with that is I don't have enough for this ATV segment node at the very end here. Well, I'll just give myself these four nodes early instead. I have enough for that. You know, calm burst. So this is the first secondary role we can unlock for someone when you get Vanille's Calm. It's partially for the ruins, but we ha there's another aspect of roll bonuses in fights that I haven't really touched upon, which is like they give a party-wide bonus as well. So like the more comms you have, the more damage overall your party does. They give your part. It's a party-wide damage boost. That's another part of why we want Vanille Commando here. And then we're going to finish out Saz's Rab up until the node before Cold Blood. Sadly, that we can't afford as well, so we'll have to re enter once we fight Behemoth King. Yeah, this Chris is a little bit laggy on this PC. Might be the 1080p. All right, so you get Silver Bangle and Shield Talisman, you get Warriors, and then you optimize. And we are good to go. I think. <laughs> uh, this is a menu I haven't gotten to do all that well. So uh, it's a relatively new routing change because the whole 2D sub thing is a relatively new idea. Or at least in terms of how we're executing it now. So not something I've practiced too much. Also, the dodges in this segment are by far some of the worst. Specifically, the four dog dodge we have coming up. 
It's a brutal it's, dodge. It's brutal with a decept. Yeah, it's brutal <laughs> no matter how you look at it. Okay, I was a little whisker there, not gonna lie. It's brutal no matter how you do it. Wait, what? How did I enter your battle zone? Uh, okay, I fit. So the problem is, see this spin pathway here? I need him to make room. Hey, he did, nice. This part also isn't trivial, but it's not too bad. You're gonna turn soon. Ah, uh, your cycles are so weird. I just want to make sure I dodge like the turns because they cycle and turn around, and when they're turning, they can clip you. All right. So sadly, I do can't burn this D sub here. This is like what you would do if you had one more D sub. You would do this fight with the D sub. Well, I'm just gonna have to retry to get it back, and we're gonna have to do it without. Uh, this fight is a little bit dangerous. I did set up lightning a bit. It's not worth it to do Crystallium for her, but I gave her like the best tanky equipment I can give her. So just don't die. Oh, wow, I lost a lot of hits there. I think Manuel got interrupted. And then, yeah, this isn't going well. <laughs> All right, I'll probably do two Thunder Fundaras. Dude, that's very bad. I might actually lose. Problem is, now I'm not building a chain. I need to get just Alt 3 before I go, and he does this attack called Orbital Battery, and that, uh, that makes me lose. Okay. We're fine, luckily. All right, I need to hit this guy more. It's a bit of a slow fight, but uh, as long as everything's staggered, you know, down to level 3, you do win once you do your finisher. And we won't be able to get that. Two more, probably. Yeah, there's the other stagger. If we stagger this guy now, we're good. All right, nice. It's funny because if you don't have the decept, they have to do it without the, uh, the preempt. Lightning's the best character for it, despite us not developing her since uh, Chapter 9 and her having 650 <laughs> HP. Until uh, next time. At least you did a pretty good job, all things considered. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm not going to complain. It was a bit of a rough start, but we won. Oh, yeah, so we did meet the blindfold and sudden here, so I should probably do this menu a bit differently, or should I just do it after? Uh, wait. Rav, Sin, and Rav. All right. I have actually never done this fight with this Paradigm deck, but it makes sense to me, so <laughs> we'll just do it. <laughs> okay. Because this is a Paradigm <laughs> deck that I only have because of the blindfolded incentive. So, except for this fight, we essentially just need to build up Chain. And then get buffs on people, uh, get uh, Vinyl to debuff the Behemoth, and then we go nuts on him. The thing about Behemoths, like later on in the game, is. Um... Oh, that's a little annoying. Now you want for uh, snow there. The thing about them is once you do enough damage to them, they'll stand up and go to like next phase. They lose their debuffs, they get all their HP back, and it's just. It's not really winnable, I'd say. Ah. Uh... This timing is very unfortunate. Also, he is in danger of dying. So if I have a chance, I will heal him with some potions. I will do it now. Um, <laughs> it's, it's a little confused. Don't mind him. Calculated. <laughs> 22 more health than he needed. <laughs> and Manuel still hasn't done anything, so we're just going to stay here for a while longer. Burn all my potions. All right, we got one of them. I still need him peril. That's what I was trying to avoid. <laughs> this is officially the worst Behemoth King fight I've seen so far. Alright, I have everything. I saw that she only went for a D-shell, so we must have everything. And there we go. That's what it's supposed to look like, just a lot faster. <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty anticlimactic yeah. at the end there. <laughs> <laughs> well, you spend 30 seconds to set it up, so we just <laughs> dies. Video whiffing every yeah. move she's ever done. <laughs> That's what the fight comes down to, just like a Vanille can hit her debuffs, and... That yeah. becomes a common theme. Yeah, that's a very common theme in the game chapters. The nice thing about two Proud Cloud fights uh, is that they're actually not Vanille dependent for once. So then we can play other characters instead. Snow, usually. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah we still got Hope, too, even though he's not there. Yeah. Do he's we? good scapegoat. <laughs> I think Hope and Thang are like doing their own thing from this point on. <laughs> We never see him again. <laughs> They're not even oh. here. <laughs> All right. uh, I still do do a little bit of Chris. 
We got this. It's semi important. Yeah, and also this. Also semi important, important too. <laughs> My first like run of a timer, I was like I was doing the run, I thought I was doing well, and I got up to PC one. And for some reason I just could not kill PC one. I tried for like an hour, I think, and then I gave up. I think and right after I gave up I realized I didn't have that ATB segment. <laughs> so yeah, that fight is not good about that ATB segment. Don't do it. I'm like, I'm doing everything right. I don't understand. <laughs> Reminds me of when I forgot to upgrade Snow's weapon before Ushu won. Aww. And then I spent 20 minutes <laughs> trying to kill it. And I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I actually am curious about the strat they used for that back when he had Bang Route because Snow wasn't upgraded. I think maybe they gave him the power wristband or something. I don't know. Before my time. By the way, really important that you have a D-Sub for this section. Like, I don't need this D-Sub to preempt anything, but these dodges are incredibly hard. These are the mega dogs of the game. They are super fast, and they're really hard to avoid. The silly thing is, for some reason, Hopefully does the best job of dodging them, even though it's the slowest. Something about his moves being combined with, like, their swipes makes it easier. Oh, I'm going to make a save here, because if I do fail this a few times, I'm going to continue. We'll do it after the run. All right. Time for the blindfold. I'm not gonna lie, I'm very nervous about this one. Do you want it during the fake cutscene? Yeah, that was a good time. Get him. Good luck. Good luck. Thank you. You can skip it now. See, he cannot hear us. Oh yeah. <laughs> Wait, hold on, something's up. He didn't skip the cutscene. Oh, okay, yeah. that's what it is. There we go. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> <laughs> Can you hear me? That sounds like a no. Okay, so this boss can't be debuffed. That's why we don't have a um, uh, saboteur on Vanille. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to try to build up the chain a little bit while also buffing our party. Um, uh, Saz and Snow are going to get haste and um, uh, bravery. Vanille's going to get haste and, um, uh, and faith, just so she does more magic damage, because she does do um, uh, ruin still while she's in commando. Um, looks like... Okay, yeah, he's at the point where he is buffing Vanille, which is the last buff that you do. Now he's going to go back into one with the medic to just build the chain up. Once the chain is relatively high, like right now... Um, holy water. Okay, um, now he's gonna start using Cold Blood and switch between um, uh, the other Ravager um, uh, decks and switching back and forth to try to um, uh, refresh uh, Cold Blood and get his uh, Stagger Bar up very quickly. Um, gonna switch into Tri Disaster for a little bit just so uh, Vanille will get some Stagger up also. Uh, oh, Saz got hard targeted. Really? I spent so much time in Medic. <laughs> so has got hard dark. Oh, yeah. That is actually impressive. <laughs> <laughs> um, that one isn't his fault, really, because yeah. uh, if, he, if he just attacks a single party member like that, they will die before you get the Renew off, which it looked like he attacked Vanille like once or twice, and then everything else went on Saz. Um, so attempt number two. Again, trying to get the buffs up while keeping the party members uh, as close to full health as possible during this phase since you really don't do any damage. It's just setting up the kill with uh, the buffs. All the buffs look good now. Again, just going to build the chain up a little bit to fight before stagger. Get a cold blood off. That was a little bit low, but that's okay. So going back into uh, getting the cold bloods out, gonna switch back to the medic. Everyone's health looks fine this time. Um, should be able to get back into service and get a renew off to get everyone full. This looks like it's gonna be good. 
<laughs> Immediately goes mm -hmm. right after. Someone. That wasn't right. That was not right. It was supposed to do a um, attack blitz and then double blitz after. Looks like he accidentally went into auto um, uh, chain, which did uh, three attacks instead. Might still be okay. Yeah, obviously he recognized it, so yeah, he he's did. adjusting. Yeah. I doubt the skills ball try. Oh, maybe it's, super close. it's gonna be. Oh, no. it was one hit off. Dang. All right, one more try. If it doesn't work, I will try after the run, but I don't want to be stuck here forever. I know I, like, I lost my cursor when I needed to uh, repeat. To, to your I like, ended up on auto battle. You are walking into a wall. Oh. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> For any doubts about the bite bolt efficiency... <laughs> Where am I now? Okay, we're good. There we go. Okay, good. I thought I lost it. This is looking good. That sounded good. This looks good again. That is not good. That's really okay. not good. All right, one more try. Okay. Where, what happened to my cold blood input? Did I go like... Um, you accidentally didn't repeat and you went into fire. Oh, that's so annoying. Yeah, it dropped. must have dropped your right. Okay. Yeah. I'm in the cutscene, right? Yep. Yes, yeah, right. The, <laughs> fake, the fake one. Yeah. All right, there we go. Everything's lining up now. In the beginning, it was a little bit slower, so it kind of got desynced, but it looks like it's back to where it's supposed to be. There we go. Yep, mine, come on. Luckily, that's the last uh, cold blood you have to do. Yeah. Okay, that's not good. I think I missed the refresh. Probably don't kill here either. I know this again. I know. I'll try this. They just wore off, yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, right. I'll try again after the run, but I've been stuck here long enough. What, did I miss my refresh there? Was that what happened? On the last one, yeah. If you had waited like a quarter or a second more, Probably. the blitz would have went off yeah. even without the refresh, but yeah, it was... Oh, I want to make sure. Yeah, I think my first attempt was yeah. off because of the leaf scope slot too. Normally it's like other oh, slot. Oh, I was wondering why you holy water. <laughs> 
Yeah. I was like, why is he? I was like, I, I like stumbled. I was like, why did he do that? And I didn't even think he can't see. Yeah. <laughs> the levoscope's usually there. Right. On well, the bright side, I could do the real strat now. Yeah. I think it's doing this. Totally going over a bit now, for <laughs> sure, though. It was going to be close before I died four times to BC1. All right. So just open up a blitz instead of attack blitz here. Uh, attack blitz is like a cushion for the blindfold. It doesn't give you more chain, but it's a little slower. All right. So we do our Libra scope really early here, so we preserve ATB. Get Vanilla's five hits out. And then we start buffing. The bravery haste on Saz. Then Bravery Haste on Snow. So the big issue for this strat, Blindfolded, is right here. I don't know how many spells Vanille's going to do, and I can't react uh, with like audio. So she did 5 there, which means I have to wait extra long for her spells here. Which I can't tell with a Blindfold on, which is why this strat's like, unusable. It's like the slow variation, since you have to wait. Uh, these HP values are not it. I have these chain values. All right, then you last spell, we shift. That should be that one. Heal me, Benio, please, for the love of God. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be really embarrassing if I can't even do this fight with my sight. <laughs> All right, I'm healthy enough. We're going to get a renew in a second. As long as it doesn't hard focus that, just from here, we should be fine. Yeah, should be fine. Let's attack, because it should be enough. There we go. Nice. Well, we can pretend I had my eyes closed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give it one more shot if uh, there is time. Or as many times as I can, if there's time uh, after the run. I just want to make sure we don't get stuck. Uh, battle team. Oops. Whatever. <laughs> I forgot how to play with my sight. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so there's actually a lot of viable strats coming up for the fight here. I am doing a riskier one. Uh, we call it light kill it because it's an admin kill it and we kill it with light. Uh, <laughs> uh, so the thing is you can get unlucky here with a stomp patterns. Lightning can only tank two stomps. Actually, can't tank a quake at all. So if he gets a quake off before I have enough chain built up and just all built up, I lose. But he has to do incredibly fast stomps for that. So it's not, it's something that's pretty rare. Uh, Snow handles that a lot better because he's a tanky boy. He can just tank stuff for days. But he also has a slower fight. And since I had to set up Lightning for like the Bulwark stuff earlier anyway, it kind of makes sense to go for this. It saves time. Oh, uh, not good. That's what I don't want to see. All right, we're going to react to the next stomp. I have to just cut it off there because we can do... Yeah, this is bad. This might lose. My chain's bad, too. Damn. Alright. I'm not sure about this, honestly. This is like the very edge of working. Shake the ground. I remember the threshold is, I think if you stagger him at 12 remaining, you're okay. Which I think we barely do. Okay, I don't think this kills, but we'll see. I'll judge it based off the ending. Charge! The it's here. close. It's close. It's really close. I genuinely can't tell. We're just going to go for it and then lose even more time if it fails. <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, next time. And that is why nobody does like killing in serious attempts anymore. <laughs> It's something we've been like reconsidering. The equipment and setup we do helps a lot, but there are just patterns like that where sometimes you just can't win. Unless you gamble somewhere, but you have no way of knowing how it's going to stomp, so it's even hard to gamble. Like, this is fine right here because he didn't hit her yet. This is a win. Stomp now would be nice. Nice. He listened. <laughs> okay, zero. <laughs> Second try, free every time. <laughs> Even did one more for good measure. Oh yeah, this is a comfy one. Yeah. 
I've been toying with like trying to see how much damage I really need here, trying to cut as close as possible. I will not be doing that now. <laughs> we are gonna make damn sure. No, I should, I should have done one more. <laughs> it should be okay. <laughs> it should be okay. <laughs> but yeah, I should have probably done one more. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah nah, you were right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Calculated. <laughs> He was uh, just stringing us along. This is how you make a really easy fight look difficult. <laughs> 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 All right, this is a good time uh, if there's aren't, there are any announcements because we're just going to be running on the freeway for a while. Of course, we have a $10 donation from Drew Feist. It says, good luck, good luck, Zero. Let's go. Hey, thank you, Drew Feist. <laughs> we have $10 from MechaLink with no comment, and we have a $50 donation from Acid Fire Bloom with no comment. Thank you very much for those generous donations. And we have a $75, uh, $75 and a $65 donation from Kazan. It says, Rip, Mighty Blue, and Andy. <laughs> thank you for the donations. Uh, just a heads up, we are definitely going overestimate. Like 100%. There's no way you can make it under at this point. Uh, it should still be not too bad. <laughs> That's what I keep telling myself. I believe. Oh, well, that makes one of us. What about you? Do you believe? I believe that he believes. I'll, I'll believe in the belief. I'll believe in the you that believes in him. <laughs> that's at least 1.5 beliefs. <laughs> well, that's more than I got, so I'll take it. Why did you guys believe? I, <laughs> I didn't even see that bird coming. I wasn't even out the battle zone. What is this? Should be good now. I do try to do like a bit of a camera setup to get this to work. It generally makes that second dodge, which is harder, a lot easier. Makes the first one a little bit worse though, which we saw there. Those birds are uh, can be very difficult to dodge if you get bad patterns. Oh, so coming up, we have a neat trick. So there's this uh, group of two enemies called Vernal Harvester and Tyrant. We call them Beach and T because those are their initials. Um, it's like Bulbasaur and Big Robot Dude, essentially. <laughs> and they block where we need to go. It just completely block it. They fight each other so they don't react to us. So what we're going to do, like we can't run into them, obviously, because we'll get into that battle. But that same is not true about our other party members. So what we're going to try to do is get our other party members to push them out of the way. Uh, hopefully with success. <laughs> There's also another trick I'm going to stack on top of it. It's something relatively new. I've been that like last few years where uh, we found out that if you swap your battle team, your characters kind of move closer towards your leader. And we're going to use that to set up our positioning a little bit better. Hopefully it works out. We will see. Usually we would, uh, when we would do that swap, it would be Saz lead, or Snow Lead, and we'd swap with Saz in the side, but Saz completely out of my party, and we're going to swap to him. So it's a little bit different from what we used to do, but it seems to still work from my experience with it. Uh, have to, right there. That is definitely a jerk bird. Yeah. Oh, oh that was almost the second one. Uh, that was that was totally calculated. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to believe anymore. <laughs> you won't let me. <laughs> and these are our friends, VTE uh, and A, right in front of us, yeah, just H blocking, the, blocking the way. Bulbasaur and his friend right there. He came to get revenge for his fallen brother. <laughs> All right, so battle team here. All right, and then we menu. I forgot the best way to do this. Oh, okay, I remember now. Uh, calm, calm. Rav and Rav. Rav and. No, I want to do calm, calm here. Rav and calm. Rav, and then we swap this with this. I don't have as much practice with that menu because it's like a side effect of doing Lightning Kellid. And that's not something I've ever really considered doing before recently. Ooh, they backed up. Uh, of course. Marathon only. <laughs> All right, we'll try to fix it. There might be a gap in the middle here. No, I definitely need to get you to push him more. There's like nothing I can use here. All right, I'll try to set this up one more time. If not, I'll probably pr purposely run into it and go from there. The problem is that I think they got pushed in more. 
So I'm not even sure I can get them to drag him. By the way, this is legitimately my first fail since I started de-rusting this. <laughs> I have not failed it once since I started de-rusting a few months ago. Yeah, but their positions got really messed up, so we just have to retry and fix it. Like, saw how, see how much further back they were compared to where they are now. Okay, well, guys, don't leave me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that should be good enough. Yay! All right. Yeah. There we go. I don't know why he backed up the first time, though. It was looked like it was good, and then he just... Took I've, like two steps backwards. I might have not waited long enough when I turned around. It's a possibility. Uh, it's one of those things where it's really hard to say because yeah. it's like it's not something you can control. Not much farther. All right, so now we got some more running down the highway. There's gonna be a big robot blocking our way. It can be a little bit of a tricky dodge to read. He's really thick. It's like basically a dreadnought, but like the upgraded version. You know, it's called a juggernaut. You can see him over there. And we can try our best to like read where we can actually go. In worst case, we have to lure him out a bit. I haven't mentioned it much because I don't think we really had to do it all that much. But there are like various dodge techniques that we have names for. The lure is pretty self-explanatory. It's like you just lure them to make a move from where they are. Okay, I should just be able to go behind them here. Yeah, just barely, but that wasn't enough for him. I saw him start turning, and I was like, maybe not. Yeah. <laughs> I had to go for that. Yeah. It's, it looked too good. <laughs> Love the fake cutscenes in this game. <laughs> <laughs> That's two in a row, right? <laughs> No, well, this one you at least can't pause on, so it doesn't extra pull you. True. Or is it when you pause on them and then, like, it's rarely unresponsive <laughs> when you do it? You no, know, I made a mistake, but me out, and the game's just punishing you. <laughs> That's what you get for just matching pause. You deserve this. Here, lose an extra five seconds. But you did this two runs ago. You should know better. Yeah. <laughs> Jokes on the game. Well, I'm one for my mistakes. <laughs> All right, nice. Good pattern on that first soldier dodge. You want to try to make that back one to run into the one I just passed there. I don't think he did, but it didn't matter. These soldiers are actually really fast, a good bit faster than you. And I think even their lunges catch you, or it's a little bit iffy, kind of have to dodge it. So those get really dangerous. The biggest problem is when they don't lunge, though. They kind of just turn into and chase you. And it's really easy to fail. All right, coming up, we have a really big fight. We have another fight with a Proud Clad. This one is called Proud Clad 2 to us. Also known as Ushu 4, with Proud Clad being Ushu 3. <laughs> now we have Ushu 5 in Chapter 13, also known as Tiamat. But uh, this fight is much more complicated than the previous one. Luckily, I will have my eyes open, so that'll help things a bit. Um, so it kind of goes in two phases. I'll explain that a bit more now, because I won't have, it'll be, I'll need to focus more later. Uh, so first phase, the thing to note is that it's immune to debuffs on its own. And we definitely need to debuff him. So first phase will be about just staggering him, keeping him from hitting us, and pushing him past his damage threshold for limiters deactivated. Once he does limiters deactivated, he debuffs himself with D-Protect D-Shell and gives himself like offensive buffs as well, bravery and whatnot. And he'll do some stuff. And the goal there is to once again stagger him, make sure he can't hit us. And we basically 100 to 0 him in that phase of the fight. Because he heals when he does Luminous Deactivate, he heals back to full. So that is what we are going to do. We have to react to what he does, we have to react to what Snow does a lot because we have to keep him launched. And depending on how things line up, I have to be very precise with my ship timings to make sure he actually gets the launches. The thing about Cold Blood is if you're hitting him with Cold Blood, it actually kind of prevents launches. So I can't just, I can't just shift whenever, I have to be precise. And then we were just hoping for good positioning, good damage on our blitzes, and things go smoothly from there, ideally. All right. Why do I keep doing this? We don't need to go to the shop. We just need to do some upgrading here. All right, doctors. Now let's start with this. Uh, whatever. That's not how I want to do that, but almost messed up. Okay, hold on. 
There we go. And then 41. I want to start with Power Glove. Alright, then we're going to dismantle some stuff here. Dismantle that Doctor's Code. Actually, let's do this first, because we also need to dismantle that Ribbon. Dismantle that Doctor's Code. Now we got another Elixir and a Fortisol and Nagisol, which we will be using for this fight. So this is the latest point you can dismantle it. And it's a good spot, because we have to dismantle other stuff, too. And we have to do a little bit more menuing still. Alright, so... Crystallium... Oh, wait. This isn't Chapter 13. Now let's skip the slot one. Get a little bit more stats. Same with snow. Every little bit of stats matters here. This fight is very, a very tight kill. You can back up missing the kill. It's not like PC1 where you just auto lose if he uh, does not stagger, but it's really slow. And it depends how healthy he is, how bad the fight is gone. It can get pretty rough. And then we need to do some equipment. Get you power glove, get you... Oh, I did this a little backwards. Remove that, and then black belt. Let's hope I got set up properly. Oh, I could have gotten Saz one more HP node, I think, because I killed those panfrons in Chapter 3. Eh, it's fine. Doesn't really matter. Alright. So, we're going to open up attack woods, Rav buffered into a uh, Ravager, so we build a ton of chain. Now we're going to Libra, so our characters don't do stupid things like ruin attacks. Now we're just going to Cold Blood. I do even get a... yeah. That's an okay move on timing. I kind of want it so it doesn't interrupt Saz afterwards. That should be fine. So the other thing about uh, PC2 is he once he does seven actions, he goes into his next phase called Aerial Defense Mode. And we see that, we're in trouble. That's, that's like the best way to put it. If he's almost dead, maybe we can win, but if it's early, we just lose. We're just gonna retry. He like hits harder, and it's like I'll have he loses his stagger, so I'd have to like get everything again. And you just don't have time to kill before he kills you. You start charging up big attacks, and he'll finish you. This is looking good so far. I get him down to like 60%. Make sure we can keep our juggle. I can even throw a potion here, have some time. Yeah, it's a pretty good setup going to the next phase. Alright, I have to react to what he does here. Alright, an Eric, so this one we have to renew through like this. Look, he didn't do any damage to us. What a weak attack. <laughs> Do two attacks and then we cold blood again. All right, this shift timing is kind of tricky. In fact, I have to go early, I think. I'm gonna miss out on some launches here. Oh, no. What? That, okay, that's really bad. That is really bad. I'm gonna improvise here, but this is probably gonna be a re stagger. Back into adrenaline at least. Snow that is. Yeah. Well, it's too late to really do enough. Wouldn't extend be good because of not help? worth it, okay. I think. I'm not gonna kill him anyway in it. Thanks, no. Okay, yeah, this is just definitely a restagger. That's too healthy. It's gonna be like another 30 seconds from here. I also have to wait for him to deal with seven moves because before he goes into aerial because he just loses the chain that he has. Oh yeah. Yeah. Up here, we're just gonna alternate between tireless and the mystic. Yeah. For some reason, I thought Snow was supposed to be doing things, but no, he's not right now. <laughs> <laughs> he's just hanging out. That wasn't a refresh. What? Should have been like an extra bonus refresh. <laughs> okay, and then we just blitz from here and we should be able to finish. Alright. Go. Alright. Not good, but we didn't die. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I can tell you guys right now that chapter 13 does not take 9 minutes. No.
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think best case we finish at like 455. All right, so anyway, welcome to chapter 13, the final chapter in the Final Fantasy 13. What? <laughs> so cool thing about chapter 13, we finally unlocking pharmaceuticals, which lets us buy shrouds. Wow. <laughs> so we're going to sell all our stuff that we can. We want to be able to buy two decepts. Oh, I got a scar type drop. I didn't even see that. Oh, I have to sell it. <laughs> right, it's not, I'm not going to go into a menu. Uh, scar type. Oops, not that. Why, why can't I menu? What is wrong with me? It's been a long day. Mm -hmm. Yes, it has. <laughs> so Scarlet Type lets you upgrade the Warrior's Wristband into a Power Glove. So I could have gotten more stats if I saw that earlier. We got that off the turtle. Wait, did I just forget to upgrade the Power Glove now that I think about it? Yes. <laughs> why did you say that? <laughs> I... <laughs> oh, man. So, okay, I'm going to be short stats then. Ah. Uh, I am, like, so lost at this point. I don't know what's happening anymore. <laughs> you got this. Okay. That looks fine. Yeah. I am... <laughs> I just forgot to upgrade my uh, Warrior's Wristband. So I have even less strength. I'm at 50 down. This is, once again, not something I practiced with. For some reason, I just thought I did it. And I thought... So the turtle fight before can drop one. I thought that was a drop that I missed. Uh, nope, that, that was the Dismantle Scarlet Tights. <laughs> that was the one we intentionally get to, you know, um, upgrade the, the Warrior's Wristband. Man, this has been a train wreck. <laughs> 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 Alright, so this is going to be hard. The biggest issue is going to be Bard Free. That fight's going to be very tight now. I'm pretty scared about that. Orphan should be fine. Orphan 2 should be fine. Vlad should be fine. Although, it will hurt not having it for Vlad. Because Snow still has at that point. No, you. There we go. <laughs> hey, we did it! <laughs> <laughs> I have not gotten that so long, so. Bear witness to the amazing flying vanille. <laughs> <laughs> also, look at how the stats get here. Nobody knows. <laughs> <laughs> He's just already here. <laughs> Very excited. So like, if you battle team swap during that jump, sometimes that happens. It's really rare. And it actually saves you time. And it looks super cool. So thank you, vanille. That is the redeeming quality of this run right here. <laughs> and nothing else. I'm so glad we got that. Everything has been worth it just <laughs> for that. I won't say anything about it because like, I didn't think we get it. But, nah, right. I tried. I didn't think it was the that one that caught me, but, yeah. I had really bad positions for those two. We're just going to de up probably, unless I see a really good pattern right now. No, that's not good enough. We're just going to de up. I'm going to play it safe. I'm so not looking forward to Bard Free, guys. <laughs> like, that fight is a really tight kill with proper stats. Oh, you know what? Actually, no, it's not a problem. I know exactly how to fix it. We're going to do something that people really do not like to do PC. We're going to do extra Christ. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. So it says, like, if you play as Crystarian, probably, there's 74 nodes worth of strength we can pick up. But that's exactly the power glove difference, pretty much. So we should be fine for that. So the only really pain point will be Vlad, and team out will be a tiny bit slower, but Saz isn't responsible for well, well, there's a responsible for damage there, but not like a crazy amount. Because the position isn't that good with him, and is chaining a lot of it. All right, I should note my shroud positions here when I dece out. You really don't want to eat for Sol accidentally here. All right, it's my four of soul and angel soul are slot two and four. The reason we want to note this is we could just use him right before we enter the boss fight, but it's faster to do him during the jump since it's just downtime. So, we want to know where those are at. Also, these guys are horrific to dodge without a decept. It's just really, really difficult. These are the scary guys. 
And it, it's something you have to do in Shroudless. The first two aren't too bad, but this one right here, oh, not good. <laughs> <laughs> you kind of have to get him stuck on the sacrifice that's like in front of him to try to pass, along with like a battle team swap, and even then it's very inconsistent. All right, so we got the Revenge of Enki and Unmull, but now they're called Banner Snatch and Jabberwocky. So these guys have some unique properties. Wow, no imperil, thanks, Vinyl. All right, at least I can get knocked down. Could be worse. Right. Nice stomp, come on. I'm waiting for the stomp so I can summon through it. Then we're gonna go like this. And normally that's enough, but because I can get imperil, we have to do a bit of a backup where I build more chain. We should do Breath of the Beast now. I'll get this in if I can. And we have to summon through that Breath of the Beast or it'll kill us. So we should be fine from here. The, like, Imperil no longer matters, but that's a slower phase one to the fight. But yeah, this guy was immune to magic, which is why we use Hecaton here. And that's why Venue Lead is important. Next guy is weak to, or not immune to physical. He's immune to magic, so this one's a lot easier. Uh, Snow and Saz will put him to work. We do have to time our things a certain way, because we don't stagger in time. We... Like, he does Breath of the Beast again. And if I don't send tank it with Snow, we die. That sucks. I get my ATB frozen there. Just get in what I can. Alright, we should be fine from here. So just like NK and Unlo, we're going to keep a Poison Stun Lock. And then combo for to save like a tiny bit. Mm -hmm. All right. Nice. Yep. That fight was not ideal, but we made it work. All right. So this is basically the boss gauntlet. I mean, there's like other stuff around, but in terms of story, where this is like the heart of Eden. This is where we're like looking for Bart. And this is where like we're supposed to go to destroy Cocoon, but we're actually going here to destroy Bart. We wanna save Cocoon. Okay. Of course, we're kind of like playing into his hand by doing this. Yeah. Kind of the story of this game. If I remember correctly, like destroying orphans is what destroys Cocoon. I, I forget. That sounds right. <laughs> right ish, yeah. Yeah. I know when you destroy the second phase of him, the cutscene, Cocoon gets destroyed, so I think the two are linked. Yeah. Pretty safe to say. Something <laughs> like that. This is a little cute decent cancel. It's also a cute little dodge. You can go in between his legs. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's use my shrouds, Aegisol, Aegisol, and Fortisol, and do my menu. All right, so coming up with Vladislaus. Vladislaus is kind of unique and that he has 999% chain to stagger, so we're not staggering him. <laughs> Um, but we can do pretty good damage to regardless so we just get deep protect and an end spell that has weak too, which in this case is end fire. So we're gonna open the Libra so Saz knows what to do. Luckily, since we already have like a Fortisol running, there isn't much ambiguity in what he can do here, so he doesn't do anything weird. He just does the only thing he can do. Nice, got it. And a lot of the RNG in, fight, in this fight is just like whether or not Vanille actually hits her deep protects. I would like to heal a bit here. Also, I'd like to go into Devastation. Uh, uh, he lost then fire also. Not good. Okay. Should be fine from here. Should be a win. Famous last words. <laughs> nice has his ATB there, but I don't think I had a choice. Hey! Did it. Good job, right. Saz. <laughs> Saz tends to miss there. They both kind of do, so it's nice that they actually did their jobs. Alright, coming up is actually my favorite fight, Tiamat. Every runner... I think most runners hate this fight when they're on good pace. It's a fight that can very much troll you, but I love modern strats for this. This fight has evolved a lot. So, um, originally you would do like attack, attack blitz, get a really long first dagger. And then have a shorter second stagger because you can't debuff him until you do one stagger on him. He goes into like a different phase. Uh, then that got changed and um, we would do a really short stagger. 
So you get to the second phase faster, but that was still like, you have to gamble because he had less damage on him and it was less consistent. And then we combine that second stagger with full interruption strats. And now he doesn't get to do much, and I love it. <laughs> Alright, Crist. I have to be careful with Sads here. <laughs> I don't want to get extra stuff. Basically, my favorite fights are uh, when the computer, or like, where the enemies don't get to play the game. <laughs> Those are my favorite. Do I have a run for you then? <laughs> <laughs> At least the first hour and 10 minutes of it. <laughs> oh, tell me more. <laughs> I can show you tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I prefer if you sing it to me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, finish the menu. Sad lead for the rest of this run. And we are good to go for Tiamat. So first thing we're going to do here, we're going to go into Try Disaster. We're going to Cold Blood. And essentially, the only chance he should get to hit me is between my two Cold Bloods, if I do everything right. Now, if he slows someone with his ice grenades or does tail hammer, it, it might get a little bit sketchy, might get more chances. But if I can get through this without him getting an ice grenade off that slows someone or a tail hammer, if I play it properly, it should pretty much be a guaranteed win. Oh no! I have literally never seen this pattern! <laughs> <laughs> and he slowed snow! He actually slowed him! <laughs> Not just removed his face, he actually slowed him. <laughs> oh. What is happening? Dude, stop it! Okay, this is... I can't even do interruption strats off this. Go! I'm improvising this so hard. Get in my sights. I will have vengeance. Wait, that was a refresh? Alright, well, he got my debuffs. You did it, TMS. <laughs> Son of a gun. <laughs> As long as I get poison fairly soon, it should... Dude, stop. It's over. You got my positive buffs. You don't have to keep going. <laughs> Hopefully that was a refresh. Yeah, okay, good. Oh, we maxed out his chain. We got that going for us. <laughs> oh, man. This is actually going to be close in terms of killing. Vanille is ruining the height. Thanks, Vanille. I'm trying not to vanille, but it's been hard, not gonna lie. <laughs> uh, I definitely don't kill here. Well, poison will do a bit more at least, but yeah, this is the kind of fight you dread because it's gonna go and get rid of poison here. This is like going back to the first one where it's immune to debuffs again. And it's not worth staggering, so we're just gonna sit here and tireless and cry. I do still have one more renew, so that helps a little. I haven't had a TMA like this in such a long time. <laughs> oh, he slowed snow again. Well, at least here it's more likely. So it doesn't feel as bad. All right. You've been building up this ATV all this time, so I'm not going to make you lose it by shifting early. You worked hard for that ATV. And Vinil gets slowed right as uh, yeah, snow's I'm... wears off and Saz. Oh, cool. Oh, well, let's do this first. I'm actually going to get some buffs going. I should have done this earlier, probably, but... Oh, man. This is like a three-minute fight or something. If a good fight's like minute 40... Oh, he went back into the other phase. Wait, he healed himself a little bit. I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> and he got the attack. <laughs> this is actually really dangerous. He can kill me here. I need to probably renew just to be safe. Oh, God. Oh, well, good thing I renewed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I had a fight that was like, oh, we're wrecking face on PS3 once. Also, Snow's dead. <laughs> oh, and also, Neo. And Neo. Oh. Go! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. 
<laughs> this is the worst showcase ever. <laughs> the best showcase ever. I'm having a great time. <laughs> I wish I could say the same. <laughs> I mean, this is my favorite fight, but it, it, it's just like it goes bad on good runs. But this, this is the good run, so I thought I was safe. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, what is this game? I've been so mentally destroyed I can't even menu anymore. <laughs> All right, we're you in. Phoenix Downs. Do I really care at this point? <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to do some extra Chris makeup for that missing power glove. Oh, man. Can I finish this? Yeah, I have enough. So that's 74 strength. The power gloves gives us, uh, I believe, 70. So we're back to, like, normal. Oh, so we're back on route. What can go wrong? All right, so this is our final showdown of Bart, where we're like, don't tell us what to do. We're going to kill you. That's actually what he wants. So we're playing into his hands. Uh, but he still doesn't make it easy on us, despite that. <laughs> it's, uh, you might, you might su suspect something if he let you, just lets you kill him. <laughs> this quote after this battle is exactly what I'm going to say after I've done my run. Also, that was a really bad start because my Libra scope was in the difference a lot. I wasn't ready. Uh, oh, I got a... That fixes it, actually, I think. I got a ready animation cancel on Snow that you don't normally get there. All right, good. Got Imperil. Now I just do deep protect. Come on, Vanille, you got this. Hey, she actually got it. Nobody saw that coming. Okay. This looks good. I can even Quake because I use my Ether Soul. Alright, so I should refresh into Tri D. Ah, oh, that timing's. And he high rolled too. I'll probably have to shift on like three snow attacks or something. No, he did like a super fast last strike and that messed up the timing. So I'm gonna be missing like two snow attacks here. Uh, it should still be okay. Exactly like my practice. <laughs> I wasn't having good fights before this. <laughs> Alright, so I do these strategy shifts here, just make sure Snow doesn't like jump and attack him. Because then he gets launched and then I definitely don't kill. Alright, we did it. Alright. Whew, that was a good fight too. I think it was, it was a 123. It was a one. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. So this fight, it's I wouldn't call it scripted. It's definitely not scripted. It's uh got a pretty set pattern to it. Also has some cool text. So at the start we're gonna summon. And then we're going to instantly shift to Malevolence to get rid of our long paradigm shift animation. And we need to be in it anyway. So Merciless Judgment, it does 99% of all your character's HP. And it will never kill, but it does 99%. But we, since we summon, Brynhildr takes it for us. So thanks, Bryn. And now we get to start at full HP, and we start getting our buffs, start building chain, and start getting set up. Every 12 seconds or so, he's going to slap like that. <laughs> and uh, all the slaps we want to in consolidation. That's like our paradigm with two sends and a medic to reduce the damage. So if I ever miss the timing on that, that's going to hurt a lot. Oh, he made that tight. I'm going to have to wait a second here because no one needs to challenge. Right side, my HP is good. Then you'll through after Kiraja. Alright, I'm probably going to have to shift early here. Yeah. I do yeah, I get that whole string out with Saz, but... It um, might change slightly lower, but we're fine. All right, this is the part where Vanille needs to do her job and hit debuffs. So this guy he has like 5 million HP or something. He's incredibly tanky. We will not be able to take out that HP with like normal stats things. So what we need to do is we need to get Poison. We haven't really talked about it too much because it isn't too relevant outside of, say, this fight. But Poison actually does a ton of damage in this game. It does 1% every um, 5 seconds. And so in five minutes of poison, everything in this game will die. Wait. Oh. I thought oh, I... Yeah. yeah. Come on, Vanille. I need this. I'm going to give her two casts. I'm just going to assume she hits it. I believe in you. Good job, Vanille. Well done. <laughs> I'm proud of you. You've never let me down. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that was like his big single target attack. That's why we needed to keep the challenges going. Now, we should be safe from here. I might even be able to get a good damage push. Once we hit about 60% of his HP, <laughs> he's gonna 
Oh, I didn't get good damage, but I thought I could. He does this again, and now we go into the second phase of the fight. This is where we burn our elixir. We're gonna like try to build a little bit of chain, a little bit of damage, and then we will likely summon. So we're gonna do that. Let people finish their strings. All right, good. Not stas target. That's the worst one to start with. Right, there's that. Oh, you're doing DS ray. Oh, progenital actually. Okay, it's on the Neil, that's fine. Nice, and it didn't kill either. That has like a 50% chance to insta-kill whoever targets. Earlier in the fight, he can do that as well. But we play around that because by leaving Vanille on Medic. He always targets the Medic with that. Right. We are safe here for now. It looks scary, but now I summon. So about that orb attack, it'll never do the same target twice if it can. So I saw that Saz got hit by the orb, and then we got hit by the Vial. I knew that uh, I'd die soon if he hits me, but I knew he wouldn't be able to hit me for a bit. There's no refresh here. And he dies to poison. Hey, the first decent fight of the run. <laughs> <laughs> Two in a row. Oh, oh yeah, that's true. Bar three. <laughs> Second decent fight of the run. <laughs> oh, man. I still can't believe TM had that like tail hammer. <laughs> That's something I have not seen in like over a year, probably. Don't think I want to meet your parents. Inputs, please. The thing is because he mentioned it. He was like, I have this ability. That's he, right. <laughs> like normally he tail hammers, he tail hammers like right away or a very small delay. I've never seen him do it that late. That's what ruined it, because I couldn't cold blood to cancel it. Normally what you do there is when you do Libra and he does a tail hammer, you avoid the knockup. But it was so late that it was between the two. Oh, I'm too late. Okay, well, I'm just gonna hold it then. I ended up a little bit delayed because of the opening. I'm actually not gonna cold blood here. It's a little bit too dangerous. So normally I like to cold blood here to build chain, so that way you have better chance of getting debuffs. But it's like scary right now because of the lick. All right, Minio, I just need you to give me a deep attack. There, oh, there it is. All right. All right, so from here, we should be good. Things this are really looking up. Yeah. I'm actually a little bit nervous because we got it pretty late, but I think we're okay. Yeah, we're fine. And then just like a little bit more here. And we got him. Yay. All right, timer stops right about now. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Sub five. <laughs> Thank you. That is not something to be proud of on PC version. This was on PS3. Oh, nice estimate. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that. Um, do I have time to try Bindwold on PC1? I know we're already behind schedule. And then. <laughs> All right, fair enough. All right, apologies to the stream for not completing that blindfolded. I tried, I really did. Yeah. But uh, I hope everybody enjoyed this train wreck of the F15 run. <laughs> yeah, it was great. <laughs> Thank you so much to RJ and D Sharper for coming on and commentating for me. Thank you for everyone, the crew here, for putting on a great show. And thank you for the F15 community and everybody else that's helped support me throughout all this time. And once again, shout out to that really happening about a month from now on the same channel. That's cool. All right. <laughs> Let's hear it one more time for Zero Lee <laughs> in that amazing run of Final Fantasy 13. Well, folks, my time as your host for this event has come to an end. My name is Ben Hebbinks, but I will be handing the mic over and I'll be putting you in good hands. Up next, we have Cartridge Blowers on the mic for hosting. So thank you all so much, and I look forward to seeing you all again next time.
Good evening, and welcome back to RPG Limit Break 2023, coming to you live from Salt Lake City, Utah, and around the world. I'm Cartridge Blowers, aka Cardi B, and I'll be your humble host for this next leg of the marathon. First and foremost, a quick thank you and shout out to Hebinks, who held down the host station just a second ago. Y'all at home and in the chat, y'all can clap for that. Once you're done clapping, of course, I want you to keep those hands close and at the ready, because on deck, we've got Tonkatsu, who will be running Mario and Luigi Paper Jam any percent. It's got double the Mario, double the Luigi, and one times the paper. What can go wrong? Judging from the glitches I've seen, actually everything can possibly go wrong, so you're in for a treat. It's coming up next. In the meantime, we're going to get to your wonderful donations very soon. Get those sent in. First, I want to tell you about why we're doing this and what those donations are going towards. RPG Limit Break 2023 proudly supports the National Alliance on Mental Illness, aka NAMI. To get involved in the fight against mental illness and the stigmas it can bring, reach out to NAMI via their state organizations or on Facebook, where they can be found as NAMI, that's N-A-M-I, on Instagram and Twitter as at NAMI Communicate. Needing help is not a weakness? Please reach out if you think you need help. Now, all your donations, of course, are going directly to NAMI. I want to tell you about another way you can get money over to NAMI right now over at one of our partners at the Yeti.com. They've got some t-shirts. I don't know if you've heard about this. You see, RPG Limit Break is once again partnering with the Yeti to bring you six awesome t-shirts that are now available plus tens. Pins. You can head over to the Yeti.com slash RPG LB to take a look at the designs. Pick the ones you want and know that five bucks from every t-shirt purchase will be donated to NAMI. Now, this is, of course, theyeti.com slash RPGLB. That's T-H-E-Y-E-T-E-E dot com slash RPGLB. And I'm bringing that up because if you go to that website right now, one of our six shirts that we have on deck for this event is called Paper Brothers. And it is the most adorable shirt I've ever seen. It's got Mario, Luigi, Paper Mario, Paper Bowser, Regular Bowser, various Paper Toads. It's it's a great shirt. I think you should pick it up. Uh, Five dollars from every shirt purchase goes towards Nami. I also really like that Mario RPG Q like shirt too, but that's just me. We've got donations coming in uh, on the heels of that excellent Final Fantasy 13 run, uh, which if you miss that, you're going to want to go and catch the VOD. It was uh, just under five hours. Really, really great run. Uh, we've got fifty dollars from Glacier. No comment, but thank you so much for your gener generous donation, Glacier. Really, really appreciate that. And we've got twenty-five dollars from My Hero Zero. My Hero Zero also leaves no comment, but again. Every donation counts and goes directly towards NAMI. So thank you so much once again for your generous donation. Glacier's in the chat saying, I could not think of a witty comment at the time. Glacier, that's okay. I got you. I got you. I can come up with a witty comment. I'll get to it eventually. I promise. It's, it's coming. <laughs> got a $20 donation from Iggy Zig. Oh boy. I think they want me to do the voice here. So I'm going to do it. <clears throat> Mamma mia, it's a Mario and Luigi paper jam. Even though some parts may feel a little two-dimensional and fall flat, it's an endlessly joyful game. And since it's on the DS, it doesn't take up much room. Best of luck to Senkatsu with the run, and lots of love to the amazing folks and dear friends that are putting this week together to benefit Nami. Put this towards singing 1,000 words in FF10 2, less than three. This donation sent from my web browser. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think Glacier uh, Iggy might have had you covered for the uh, the witty comments. Holy moly, that was whew, that was a lot, pal. Thank you so much for your twenty dollars going straight towards Nami. And uh, Iggy mentioned the uh, one thousand words uh, words donation incentive for FF ten two. Let's take a look, see as where that is at right now. We are at three hundred dollars out of a thousand to get them to sing 1,000 words. I, that's a great song, by the way. Um, 
I'd sing it for you now, but it's, it's late in my throat. I, I don't, I just can't. But uh, there's a lot of other great donation incentives coming out before then. For instance, our very next game, Dragon Ball Z Legend of the Super Saiyan. Now, if you know me personally, you know I do love me some Dragon Ball Z. Uh, they've already gotten $500 to fight Vegeta, which is mondo cool. But we've got a donation incentive war for who is going to make a heroic sacrifice here in the end of Dragon Ball Z Legend of the Super Saiyan. Right now, Krillin, who is my second favorite Dragon Ball character, uh, is winning with 50 bucks. Um, my actual favorite Dragon Ball character is Tien, and he's only got four, and I'm okay. I don't want him to die. I think the real winner should be Yamcha. If we are, if we're going with, you know, who, I, I guess Chaozu could blow himself up, but Yamcha has only got 20 bucks. Only 20 bucks at Krillin's 50. I think if you want to see Yamcha end up in that pose on the ground, that iconic pose, and get some great donation money towards Nami, then we can get some of those uh, some donations in right now because we've only got an hour until the end of this run when uh, Dragon Ball Z Legend of the Super Saiyan will be on deck. And then right after Dragon Ball Z, we've got the Final Fantasy Mystic Quest uh, randomizer run, which I'm really excited for because I just am uh, getting into Mystic Quest randomizer and I really want to see some more of it. Um, right now, we've got a donation incentive for the character sprite for Mystic Quest randomizer. Mog is in the lead, a pretty heavy lead with $135 right now. Uh, we've also got naming Benjamin. Um, Mighty B and Marine are in the lead. Mighty B, I think, might be unbeatable with a $1,700 lead. Uh, but hey, listen, anything is possible when we're talking about donating to charity. Uh, and we've already met uh, our donation incentives to save Norma and do shrug percent, uh, which, listen, Benjamin's going to shrug. It's going to happen. So get hype. We've got those runs coming up right after we have a very cozy time hanging out and breaking Mario and Luigi Paper Jam. So sit tight. Those are coming up. Got a couple more donations here for you. We've got a $10 donation from Mega Man X, who uh, leaves no comment, but thank you, Mega Man X. I really like your games. Thank you so much for your donation. I really appreciate it. Uh, they should make it more of those. I don't know if anyone is out there as a big Mega Man X fan. Please, more Mega Man X games. We've also got a $50 donation from Prof NES, who also does not uh, leave any comments. But again, thank you so much. Uh, you don't have to leave a comment to get it read right on the air because I will read your name. I will read your donation. And I will say thank you so much for helping out Nami because that's what we are here to do. Also, you're the professor of the NES, and as an educator myself, I salute you, Prof NES. Thank you so much. It's uh, really a pleasure being a part of RPG Limit Break this year as we are uh, both doing our remote runs and our uh, in-person runs. Um, right now, we have got, uh, got Tenkatsu on deck. Tenkatsu coming to us uh, from Japan, I believe. Um, but runs are coming to you from all around the world. Many of them live right there in Salt Lake City, Utah. If you want to make sure you get an RPG Limit Break, it comes to you live every year in SLC. It's a really cool event. You want to be a part of it, so make sure you're, you know, getting down on the ground floor. Come on out. Come on over to Salt Lake City. We'd love to have you. We'd love to have you. You can uh, help out with a great cause. Uh, you can donate to NAMI. Honestly, you can donate in order to win some of these prizes. That's right, prizes. He said prizes, folks. Uh, prizes that are on deck right now. Until the end of Mario and Luigi Paper Jam, we have a few prizes that are going out of uh, the current prize block. So uh, while none of these are directly related to Mario and Luigi, you can still donate to get Steam keys for Final Fantasy 13, Final Fantasy 13 2 and Final Fantasy 13 Lightning Returns. All three Final Fantasy 13 games you can win a copy of with just a $5 minimum do uh, donation. You are also eligible to get the Lightning and Fang Perlers, which if you haven't seen those come up on the screen at this point, uh, they're, they're pretty cool looking. Uh, they sort of 
you've got like the sort of pixelated ff6 style versions of uh lightning and fang which are really cool um and then of course you can also get a steam key for ease 7 now i know that's not related to final fantasy 13 but i love me some ease all right if anything you should want to make sure you donate so you can possibly get the E7 Steam Key. That is uh, a great series with an even greater soundtrack. So I'm just saying, listen. Uh, we got a lot of people in chat talking about Dragon Ball, which I am here for. <laughs> um, we've been talking about Dragon Ball GT, which that's not canon, folks, but.